Of course, we do not speculate right now. We, of course, are going by whatever details we are getting in. And uh, Amandeep uh, continues to be with us uh, from ground zero. Amandeep, uh, we've heard, of course, our uh, uh, defense experts, they've seen that uh, assault rifle being missing for 48 hours, of course, and a very serious issue raises many concerns there. Uh, also, what is the latest you're learning on the latest developments? We do know that uh, uh, the uh, Radnath Singh, the defense minister, was uh, supposed to chair a, a very high-level meeting. Also, we are expecting a briefing by the Punjab police. Well, absolutely, Rakshita. So far, Punjab police has not got clearance from the Indian Army. Once they will get clearance and all information from Indian Army, once this entire operation will be completed, only then the Punjab police will be allowed to hold the media briefing. And so far, the facts that has been revealed by the Indian Army is that this incident took place at 4.35 p.m. Four Jawans from artillery unit has been killed in a firing incident and one in SAS rifle along with 28 rounds has been missing uh, from two days and cordon and search operation underway. Punjab police is assisting Indian Army and even the families has been asked to remain inside. The entire area has been sanitized and even the outside of the military station Bathinda has been completely cordoned by the Indian Army security. And even the Indian Army and Punjab police are launching the investigation into this entire case. And even undoubtedly they will be nabbed and nailed down the person responsible. And in fact they will reveal all the facts once their operation will be concluded and completed inside the Bathinda military station just because the incident reported inside the jurisdiction of Indian Army. So they are taking care of each and everything. And even the search, cordon and search operation initially launched by the quick, uh, quick reaction teams of Indian Army inside the Bathinda military station as well. Just because this incident reported outside the artillery mess in which four Jawans has lost their life um, uh, in a firing incident. And in fact, the identity is yet to be revealed by the Indi Indian Army as well. But now the Indian Army has taken care of everything. Terror angle has been reduced to the entire incident and everything is under control of Indian Army. Yes, Rakshida. Right. Right, Amandeep. Stay with us. Uh, uh, Major General Sinha wanted to make a point. Please uh, go ahead, sir. Let me mention one thing that uh, one uh, important terms of reference of Court of Inquiry will be that what is the cause of animosity between Army personnel? That's a very important factor. That will give a clue and uh, or lead to many important aspects. Secondly, in the Indian Army, we have a beautiful, foolproof legal system, and nobody can escape the clause of justice. And justice, let me tell you, justice will be delivered, I have no doubt. We have a very, very fine, efficient system. There's no bhai bandh, it's a foolproof system. And the truth will come out as the sun comes out from the clouds. So that's that's for sure. The, the culprit will not go unpunished. But the important thing is that, um, uh, the, the cause of the, why this lapse has occurred, that is the question I'm trying to raise. How is it that 40, 48 hours the weapon is missing and alarm bells, bells don't start ringing? How is that Sudar Major has not been able to feel the pulse of the unit? These are important administrative functioning um, aspects and these need to be inquired into. Of course, the Court of Inquiry will definitely come out with recommendations as to the causes of incident, recommendations and pinpoint and fix the responsibility as to because of whom all these laps has taken place. But it is very sad, and I'm more concerned about the loss of life. You see, we take many, many years to train a Jawan. We, uh, and uh, that uh, the human life is lost. We have lost a Jawan in which so much of money must have been spent in order to train him. And, uh, and that unit gets a blam, blame, bad name. That's another important factor. In Indian Army, we are very, very cautious about our image. And if the unit gets a bad name, you can imagine for uh, years to come, the unit sub will suffer from this trauma. So for the mistake of one individual, look at the way the unit is going to suffer psychologically, emotionally, image-wise. Uh, the unit is going to suffer Absolutely. and people will be on the defensive. Um, their performance will get affected. I think it's very, very, very sad. It is unfortunate, but... Uh, what can I say? It is very, very unfortunate. And then, uh, SP, uh, Sina, as you're pointing out, you know, this, right, this is a concerning incident and we are absolutely sure that the Indian Army will hold a court in, of inquiry and thereafter, the, you know, uh, blame will be affixed. Thank you for the moment for joining us. I'm going to uh, go back across to Major General uh, Bakshi. Major General Bakshi, uh, you know, you were talking earlier about the stressful conditions that our Javans work under and uh, there is no doubt about these. And uh, 
and uh, you know often times of course incidents like this are reported they should not happen but with any professional army in the world the stress does get to people because at the end of the day these jawans are also uh, you know human beings absolutely you see i have served a lot in jnk and uh, some years back this problem used to be far more uh, endemic because the stress levels were pretty high and uh, once in a while some individual does break down it happens like i said it's a very stressful environment it's not an easy job to do and uh, sometimes it does get to an individual uh, like i said i'd rather let the court of inquiry determine what were the uh, the reasons for this boy to uh, run a mock to target his own comrades that's the worst that can uh, really happen and as a result of that unfortunate firing we lost four precious lives and uh, which which pains which pain it pains all of us and yes uh, general sena is right it will uh, have an effect on the unit if uh, the unit gets a bad name um, uh, you know but but i would not uh, be very hasty to condemn the rank and file till such time as the results of the court of inquiry are before us uh, i would once again like to remind people that uh, we lead a very stressful life in the armed forces once in a while one individual for some reason family problems otherwise does uh, break under the stress and uh, uh, run them off or take some action like this uh, like i said uh, what really is behind this because the whole thing is compounded by the loss of the insas rifle and uh, over 20 rounds of ammunition which is not a good thing to have happened um, uh, but like i said let's uh, wait for the fog of war to settle down there are these uh, uh, quick reaction teams trying to nail the individual down he is id we are given to understand i'm sure he will be brought to book he has already caused a lot of damage not just to the four precious lives but also to the units reputation units uh, will come down heavily on this the Absolutely. army will come down heavily on this and i'm sure if there are anything that have to be set right they will be set right we have our drills Absolutely, deal with major. such uh, exigencies Absolutely, as Major General G D Bakshi is pointing out. Obviously, you know, a post mortem will take place later on of what happened. But I'm going to go back across very quickly to Amandeep. Amandeep, we are to understand that this is still an active situation, and the army is still looking for this uh, individual who may be behind this incident. Uh, can you share any updates that we are getting right now? Well, Lupur, without uh, uh, sourcing the information to the sources, we are just believing on the official information re revealed by the Indian Army. And in fact, so far, the cordon and search operation is still underway. And in fact, four from artillery units have uh, lost their life in this firing incident. So far, Punjab Police is also assisting um, the, the Indian Army for this entire investigation in both ways, physically and technically, just because forensic investigation has also been launched inside the Patinda military station as well. But so far, Nupur, we have not received any information that any person has been detained, arrested, or nailed down by Indian Army or Punjab Police inside. So far, we are waiting for that. Also, that who is the responsible person behind this entire incident? And I can show you the visuals behind me that the entire area has been sanitized, and in fact, our entire area has been completely cordoned by the Indian Army since the incident reported. The civilian movement has been prohibited into this entire area, and even every single road leading to India. Uh, military station of Bhatinda has been completely blocked and only army officials or police officials are allowed to go inside and certain security has been deployed at each and every point. This is one point and this is another point which I can show you that how the Indian army is taking care of their military station after the incident. So far, Nupur, the incident is in the jurisdiction of Indian army uh, military station and even the, uh, there is no outsider involved into this entire incident. So th the entire investigation All is right. being launched by the Indian army itself internally and even taking the assistance of Punjab police as well and very soon they will be revealing all the details just because once the entire incident 
entire incident reported to the chief of army staff and raksha mantri and later on details will be revealed among the public that how it happened and who all are responsible behind this and what action has been taken against that person who is responsible for the lives of four artillery jawans who has been who, yes, absolutely. who died in the firing incident inside bathinda military station yes nupur absolutely uh, amandeep as you're pointing out of course this uh, still appears to be an active situation where the indian army's qrts are looking for the person who may have been involved in this uh, we are still getting uh, more information and uh, joining us on the broadcast is colonel shailendra singh we step into a very short break don't go anywhere stay with us as we bring you more Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit. And this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of covid while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency and nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based. Isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can make the transformation even quicker so please join me and join all of us at republic tv as we bring to you the republic summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation see you there She says that uh, आप कंसल्ट नहीं करते like on disinvestment opposition should have been consulted. हमने सोचना बंद नहीं किया करोड़ों की संख्या में रिपब्लिक भारत और रिपब्लिक Firing at Batinda military station, cracked off dawn. Firing claims four lives. Initial probe rules out any terror angle. Seven hours on, research and rescue operations continue. Security beefed up across Batinda. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to uh, chair topmost level meeting. NSA and MHA officials to attend the meeting. Complete chaos in Vadra Congress. Pilot in the national capital to meet Kharge Gehlot to brief the media shortly. After showdown over candidate list, BJP in huddle mode now. Descending Jagdish Shetar, Savadi and Ishwarappa summoned to Delhi. In a fresh attempt at opposition unity, Nitish Kumar set to meet Malikarjun Khadge and other opposition leaders in the national capital. Hello and a very warm welcome. You're watching Republic TV. I'm Raksha Mishra. We are continuing with our top focus at this story that is unfolding at the moment. This regarding the firing at Batinda military station. An incident was reported at the military station early hours this morning, and the search operation is still underway. My colleague Nupur continues to be with us from our Mumbai studios, and also we are joined by a. Uh, Major General G. D. Bakshi and also Colonel Shailendra Singh. Uh, uh, 
thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, I'd like to go to uh, Colonel Shalendra Singh first. Uh, uh, what we have learned that an INSAS, uh, INSAS uh, rifle was uh, went missing, and this for 48 hours. Uh, we were discussing how this is a matter of great concern that an, a rifle, an assault rifle, was missing for past 48 hours, and it was not reported yet. And we see how four fatalities occur. Uh, can you just tell us more about this uh, uh, machine gun that we uh, this this gun incest uh, uh, rifle that uh, assault rifle it is and how uh, dangerous this uh, weapon could be because uh, as is being talked about this could be this is not any terror angle yet the, uh, the what we are learning from army sources that there's no terror angle yet but I'm emphasize this is not a terror attack but right now what we're learning that an incest rifle was missing so uh, in what kind of situations is this uh, rifle mostly used, sir? Uh, if you can allow me, I'll have to take your this terror angle. Uh, Batinda Kent is a very secure cantonment yes, with a fencing all around. Making a possible attack there is as good as impossible because I have operated in this cantonment myself. Now, coming to the second point, the artillery regiment. Uh, luckily, I will call it. I'll still call it with a lot of pride. Luckily, I'm from the same regiment. I'm from the same artillery regiment. And I would request everybody to understand what I'm going to tell you now. This is the same regiment which did exceptionally well in Leh. We must know that Galwan, there was an OP party involved from the same Paltan. So the Paltan, there is nothing wrong. In any Paltan, there is nothing wrong. So let's not uh, you know, point a finger at the Paltan as such. Yes. We need to evaluate the tough conditions under which the troops operate. 365 days, 24 hours. Please realize it. My countrymen, my government, my higher-ups, before blame game, I will not excuse anybody who fires. That's not my character. That is not my soldier. They are not like that. But please imagine the kind of uh, stress he is operating under continuously for hours and hours for days and days and year by year. Yes, I will say it very responsibly. It's the most unfortunate thing to happen. It should have never happened. But when you have lakhs and lakhs of people and you start getting after my that one soldier for whatever he did, it is wrong. There's no question of it being right. But that doesn't mean that it will tarnish the image of Indian Army or for that matter, that regiment. I'm still proud of my regiment. They, are, they have done always exceptionally well. An odd exception has happened on the wrong side. I regret it. I'm sorry for it. But yes, see the, see the army character. We will come out with the correct story. We are not going to hide it. We are going to do a court of inquiry. Justice is done immediately. Please see, in the country, you people are crying that justice is not done for years and years and decades. Here we give you assurance that it will be done instantly. As far as that boy is running away, mm. there, there is, it is very natural human tendency to do that. You will see that he will ultimately surrender and he will be captured and he will be brought to the book. Justice would be done. Most unfortunate for it to happen, but at the same time, see it. It has not escalated into anything wrong. So stop the blame on any regiment on Indian Army as such. It's an odd case which should have never happened. I'm, I'm standing by that. There's nothing right about it. But at the same time, let us continue to have our respect for that regiment and the Indian Army. Right. Right, so of course, uh, here on Republic TV, we're of course uh, sticking to the facts, whatever uh, the, the information that we are getting, we are sticking to the facts, of course, no blame game here. My colleague uh, Shavan Sain is also joining us live uh, on the broadcast. Uh, Shavan, this is a matter of great concern. What more details can you share with us on this? Well, Rakshita, for all our viewers are tuning in right now, let's just quickly take uh, our viewers through what we know so far. Now, as far as the firing is concerned, it happened around 4.35 this morning. If you go by the two statements that have been issued by uh, the Southwestern Command, then essentially they're basically indicating uh, that there is no terror angle to it. In fact, Punjab police has also come on record to say that there is no terror angle to it. Now, where comes in the concern? The concern essentially comes when the INSAS rifle, which has gone missing for two days, and with live ammunition, 
therein lies the concern. And in fact, remember, this is a peace station and uh, the incident actually took place uh, closer to the mess uh, where you would essentially have the family members and also it has its own uh, areas of concern. But remember, this is uh, a matter that the army would be looking into internally, given the fact that if it is one of the soldiers uh, then who was one of the who was the gunner, then it is going to be an internal matter. As of now, even the police haven't been allowed inside the containment. That is essentially because, remember, there are laid down protocols uh, for it. Until the time uh, that internal procedure is not completed, even right now, as we speak, the reports that we are getting from outside the military station is that it's an absolutely no-go area. The entire area has been cordoned off. Uh, in fact, the bare minimum information that has come in from the police is that uh, they are cooperating with the army for any sort of assistance that is required because uh, the, give, the larger concern at this point in time is that they haven't been able to identify uh, who exactly was the gunner uh, and what what is the link that is basically emerging at this point in time. So all of that uh, is, is part of uh, this entire investigation that is going to be uh, carried on. Now, whether at all it's a, it's a fratricidal incident, remember, this is not the first time that has happened, uh, whether it is uh, from the army or for that matter, even if there have been cases of uh, fratricide uh, coming in from uh, the paramilitary. And remember, there have been multiple reports that have been uh, put together for the causes of fratricide uh, those are those are matters that w would be looked into at, at a later stage because as of now, uh, the, this hasn't been confirmed whether this is a case of patricide. And more importantly, if it was someone from within and it was an inter, you know, some sort of a personal issue. I remember there is going to be an inquiry that is going to be carried out by the army. It has happened in the past. Uh, they've come to a conclusion. They've done a thorough investigation. And that is exactly what is uh, what is expected even today. But uh, the identification uh, as to who opened uh, the fire is the, the larger concern right now. Uh, the INSAS rifle essentially going missing. That is the other concern. And uh, the fact that the, uh, that it was with uh, cartridges, uh, that too remains another concern. So all that put together, the focus essentially being that. What we can also tell our viewers right now is that the army chief has already uh, briefed Raksha Mantri with regards to all the measures that have essentially been taken and what has happened uh, so far. We're expecting another sort of uh, statement to come in from the army uh, once there is more clarity. So... Uh, there is a lot of things right now in the realm of speculation. We are only going by what the army has essentially indicated. And also the police, which is uh, which is basically indicated there is absolute there is no uh, there is no terror linked to it. Let me also quickly bring in General GT Bakshi on this broadcast. General Bakshi, not the first time we have seen incidents of patricide. And as far as laid down procedures of such incidents are concerned, if you could just elaborate for all our viewers to understand uh, in a better manner, what essentially happens when such incidents are reported, and that too in a peace station uh, where family members would also be present. Like I said, it is a very unfortunate incident. We've had four precious military lives lost. My heart goes out to the boys, to their families, those who have lost their lives. Uh, but like I said, these things do happen. The armed forces are a very stressful profession and this unit as we've just learned was in Ladakh and uh, they did very well there in that Galwan incident. I understand their men were involved. So uh, I mean I would not be in any hurry to point fingers at the unit per se. It's not correct. It's not correct. Individuals can snap. I have seen it happen far more often Earlier, there, there is a lot less of this now because uh, the armed force. So uh, it, it happens a lot less now than it used to happen in my time when we were operating very majorly in JNK and elsewhere in counter terrorist situations. So on, take it. Right, uh, that was Mayor General Jiri Bakshi, and uh, we continue to uh, track it on Ground Zero, the story, the developments. Amandeep continues to be with us from Ground Zero in Batinda. Uh, Amandeep, we are expecting 
uh, a press briefing by the Punjab police and also uh, there is a top level meeting in Delhi with the Raksha Mantri and the top MHA officials as well. Uh, what is the latest you are learning right now as far as this case is concerned? Well, the latest facts are, Rakshita, still stick to that point, latest uh, uh, statement of Indian Army only, that one INSAS rifle along with 28 rounds remain missing from past two days, and that is the major concern, and that is the reason the cordon and search operation has been still underway inside the Army uh, military, sta in military station Bathinda itself, with the help of the local police. So far, local police have not got any kind of clearance um, uh, from the side of the Indian Army to hold any kind of press briefing, just because initially Indian Army will complete their... Uh, entire operation only then it will be allowed it will be come out with any kind of official statement regarding the entire incident with all kind of details but so far two statements has been revealed by revealed by the indian army and revealing the facts that this incident reported at 4 35 a.m in the morning and in fact four uh, jawans from artillery units has been uh, uh, reportedly dead in this firing incident and in fact one in sars and 28 rounds has been uh, uh, remain missing from past two days and cordon and search operation is underway. Punjab police assistance has been taken. And forensic uh, uh, forensic investigation as well as physical investigation both are underway inside the military station and even the entire area has been cordoned only. also. And if I can, my camera person can give you the sense outside the military station of Batinda that what all is happening. That Indian army is still uh, up with their security and in fact the civilian movement is still prohibited in this area. So that is clear cut indication that cordon and search operation is still underway inside the military station, Indian Army, quick reaction teams as well as Punjab police. Everybody is un inside and in fact they are launching just because the incident reported in 4.30 a.m. in the morning and so far, uh, so far no official statement has come out that either any person has been apprehended, right. nailed down or taken into the custody who is responsible for the incident. We are waiting for the confirmation and in fact the entire incident has been briefed to the Raksha Mantri as well regarding all the details. Yes, Rakshita. Right. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Amandi, for joining us with all those details on that story. We'll keep coming back to you. Also, I uh, thank uh, Gursimran, who had joined us uh, from the Ground Zero, and also Shavan, my colleague, who joined us on this broadcast. Uh, I also appreciate and thank our uh, guests, uh, Colonel Shalendra Singh and also Major General G.D. Bakshi, for joining us uh, uh, live on the broadcast for more. Getting in a big lead on Maharashtra political crisis and this is breaking on Republic TV. Ajit Pawar is all set to Maharashtra, meet Maharashtra Chief Minister Ekna Shinde. Ajit Pawar is going to meet Maharashtra Chief Minister Ekna Shinde at 2 p.m. in Sayadri. And discussions over the unseasonal rain and farmers is expected. This is a significant development. NCP's Ajit Pawar... Karal Pawar's nephew, Ajit Pawar, is all set to meet Maharashtra Chief Minister Ek Nath Shinde. Uh, what we are learning is that this is about unseasonal rain. Uh, that is what we are told that is on the Ozone agenda. But there are lots of speculations over this meeting. My colleague Alisha Naya joins us uh, for more on this. Alisha, a significant and interesting development there. Ajit Pawar meeting Ek Nath Shinde. Uh, well, yes, uh, uh, where uh, Ajit Pawar is going to meet uh, Maharashtra Chief Minister Ekna Chende in uh, Sayadri at around 2 p.m. While the people have been saying that it is discussion over the unseasonal rain and farmers uh, in, in Maharashtra and uh, he is only going to meet uh, uh, over the discussion uh, oh, oh, for the farmers as well as uh, the uh, laws that has been uh, done for these uh, farmers due to this uh, unseasonal uh, rain. But of course, there are many of the speculation which is being going over the statement that is even given by the Bharatiya Janata Party uh, to the public clearly mentioning that uh, there are some activities uh, that has been ongoing in Maharashtra. They won't reveal the name of those leaders who are big. That's with BJP. But yes, uh, it is uh, now we have to see what uh, this uh, meeting comes from because uh, this could be the reason of uh, Ajit Pawar meeting Chief Minister Ekna Chinde at this point of time. But uh, it will be a very significant meeting that is going to happen at uh, 2 p.m. where Ajit Pawar and uh, Chum, Ekna Chinde is going to meet right. in Saya.
All right. Thank you so much, Alisha, for joining us with all those details on that development. Uh, now we are moving on to some more breaking news uh, that is coming in at this point in time. And uh, this uh, from Battleground Karnataka, Re just hours after BJP released its first list, uh, of course, a big election meeting is underway at Amit Shah's residence. Uh, that is the latest we are getting in. Uh, a big uh, meeting is underway. BJP Karnataka election meeting is underway at Amit Shah's uh, residence there and remember the first list has been announced the candidate list uh, as far as BGP uh, for uh, this Karnataka election is concerned was out there was uh, a lot of speculation around it and there were a lot of things that have been uh, derived from it and now we have uh, Arsha joining us live on the broadcast for more on this uh, very significant meeting underway at uh, a Home Minister's meeting at uh, Amit Shah's meeting right now uh, in Delhi, Harsha. What more details can you share with us? Exactly. Now, what we are learning is that the second round of meeting at Amit Shah's residence is already taking place for the second list of Karnataka election. Yesterday, we saw that the BJP released its first list of candidates of Karnataka and there were in total 189 candidates and there were many candidates which were dropped. The uh, the candidates were not repeated itself also. There were, many, there were many fresh faces, younger faces, advocates, doctors, IS, IPS who are given tickets this time by the BJP leadership and also they have stated they, they want to induct fresh and young faces this time into Karnataka election and therefore we are also seeing that there are many several MLCs and MLA are also upset with the party leadership for not giving them ticket. One being the former Chief Minister of Karnataka, Jagdish Shetar, who has already moved to Delhi to meet the High Command and now we are seeing that the meeting at Amit Shah's residence is already underway where Arun Singh, Mansukh Mandavia, B.S. Santosh, J.P. Nadda and all the, uh, all the uh, senior leaders of the BJP who are directly related with the Karnataka to finalize the Karnataka list are all here at the residence of Amish Shah to finalize the remaining number of candidates. There are few candidates who are only left and BJP is soon to release its second list as well. And after this meeting goes on and the, the, and the candidates get final, then the other round of CC will also happen where the second list of BJP will come forward to see that what are the remaining candidates and what they are giving, being given the tickets from. And also we are seeing the leaders, uh, the three, four senior BJP BJP leaders of Karnataka who have been dropped this time by the BJP central leadership are already in Delhi. They have been called by the central leadership of BJP to come and talk with them because BJP this time doesn't want any any leader from Karnataka to be upset just because they have not been given ticket this time. So the damage control is very important which the BJP central leadership has to do because they can't afford to loot, lose any single seat if they want to win Karnataka this time and to get more than 150 seats. So we, the meeting started at Amit Shah residence at around 11 o'clock and we are expecting that the leaders of Karnataka who are, who are upset with BJP central leadership be Jagdish Shetta, be the Lakshman and the other leaders will also arrive in this meeting mm. and the meeting will happen after that with the upset leaders as well because right now it's very important for BJP to get in control all those leaders who will join other party if not controlled right now. So this is what the meeting is uh, being happening at the residence of Amit Shah, all the Karnataka senior leaders, the in charge, the co-in charge, Sangathan Mantri, every one of them are here in the, inside the residence of Amit Shah. Back to you. Absolutely. There has been a showdown over this list uh, uh, right after its announcement. We've seen the various reactions, including doubt, and there has been a discontent over the distribution there. Uh, are you picking up on anything that uh, could that there could be any significant change or uh, any move that could be made here as far as this, uh, you're talking about taking control of the situation is concerned? How can the BJP here, you know, deal with the situation in the run-up to the polls? talk that there was one BJP MLC R Shankar who has resigned from the party after he saw yesterday that he didn't got the, the that, that he didn't get the ticket now he has also announced that either he will fight independent or he will go and switch to some other party and now there are rebellion MLAs and few MLCs who are coming in front after after yesterday's ticket so that's become very much important for BJP to control hmm. them and have a meeting with all those leaders who have not been given ticket because some of them have agreed right. to not Stay fight us, election uh, this time on Hold your thoughts, uh, hold your thoughts, Harsha.
All your thoughts, Arsha, there. Uh, I'm being joined by uh, Prajwal, also live from Bengaluru there. Prajwal, a very important meeting is underway right after the announcement of the first list of candidates. Uh, and there was, of course, a discontent. And there were several uh, reactions which, of course, uh, do not all go well for the BJP in the run-up to the elections now. What are you uh, learning from uh, Karnataka this time? Because uh, there will be some important decisions that could be taken in this uh, uh, meeting that is going on, uh, that is all set to take place at Amit Shah's residence. Uh, you know, Rakshika, now we are getting in information that uh, Jagdish Shekhar, uh, who came to Bengaluru directly, has left from Bengaluru airport uh, towards uh, New Delhi. And after he is uh, left uh, from the airport, he will be reaching the national capital at 2 o'clock. And there will be a meeting at JP Nadda's uh, residence at uh, 3 p.m. today. And ahead of that big meeting with JP Nadda and the BJP leaders from Karnataka now, Amit Shah is being briefed about the ground situation in Karnataka as well because several BJP leaders are rebelling against their own party now because there was a series of meetings which was also held outside, uh, which was also held uh, in BS Yadurappa's residence as well where several leaders came in. Now, uh, Amit Shah is mainly being uh, briefed about a few of the resignations. Now, R. Shankar has gone ahead and tendered his resignation, who is the BJP MLC. Now, Jagdish Shetter has stated that he will take further decisions after he speaks with the BJP High Command in the national capital. Post which now we are also getting to understand that Lakshman Savadi is likely to resign from the party as well because he was the former Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka and he is also stated that he will be speaking to the people in Athani and he will be announcing his final decision in a short time from now as well. And there is also a BJP state level meeting which will be held at 2 o'clock today with the BS Yadurappa addressing the BJP leaders along with Union Minister Shobha Karanlaje too. So we will have to wait and watch out as to who the BJP leaders will be. But K.S. Ishwarappa is still maintaining the fact that he has resigned off his own accord too. And uh, once he's uh, resigned now, he's also seeking a ticket for his son as well. So whether the BJP will go ahead and give a ticket to K.S. Ishwarappa's son is something which has to be seen because K.S. Ishwarappa is not only a prominent leader in Shimoga, but he is also a prominent uh, leader uh, among the Kuruba community as well. So all said and done now. We will have to wait and look at it because the caste split seems like uh, it is definitely going to pose a lot of problems for the BJP in the state right. of Karnataka too. All right, so I'll have, have to cut you there. I have to cut you there, Pajwal. We are getting some uh, developments, some breaking developments there. This regarding Batinda firing that took place today, this morning. And we are getting some breaking news uh, on this. And what we are learning is that uh, Raksha Mantri's high-level meeting, Radna Singh's high-level meeting has concluded. The high-level meeting with the top MHA officials and NSA officials has concluded. Radna Singh's, Singh has left from the Ministry of Defence and Army Chief too was there. He too has uh, left. The high-level meeting has concluded. Remember viewers, the... Uh, there are several causes of concern that uh, regarding this uh, firing at Batinda military station. My colleague Harsha is joining us uh, on the broadcast. Harsha, what are the latest uh, updates that you're getting on this matter? Exactly, Rakshita, right now showing you the visuals from the Ministry of Defence itself, from where I'm reporting right now. The meeting happened at Ministry of Defence, where Rajnath Singh took a full briefing meeting with the Army Chief and IE officials, officials from the Home Ministry. All were present in the meeting. The full briefing was done by M. Rajnath Singh to take the stock of the situation of the Bhatinda, Bhatinda military, uh, uh, the incident which happened at the Bhatinda military station in the artillery mess. And right now showing you the visuals as the meeting is over right now. The Army Chief General Manoj. Pandey has done the briefing and has uh, given the entire uh, situation what exactly right now in the Bhatinda military incident have given the have given the entire report to Defence Minister Rajna Singh but the way when the Bhatinda military incident happened and came into light uh, just after uh, just after an hour of that Defence Minister Rajna Singh uh, called this a uh, huge meeting where NIA officials, Army Chiefs, CDS and MHA officials were present and this meeting was very important and it, and it showcases also so that how much gravity of this meeting is right now what we are learning is that four Javans have lost mm. their lives so this has mm. been reverted to Defence Minister Rajnath Singh so we have to wait and watch because this meeting went on for more than one hour and we have to wait that whether there will be any statement from the side of Defence Ministry or not because till now what the statement has come is from the side of Indian Army that the joint investigation is being carried out search operations are being carried out the entire area has been cordoned off and they have also stated that the 
four jawans have lost their life but this entire uh, but this entire uh, the entire incident have been beef to rajnath singh but now we have to look that there will be any statement from the side of defense ministry or not again showing the visuals as general manoj pandey the army chief the cts and i officials and mh officials have left from defense ministry from where i am reporting right now so the meeting went on for more than one hour rakshita back to you right all right all right thank you so much uh, harsha for joining us with all those details uh, uh, big development there uh, meeting with uh, the top uh, mha and uh, nsa officials uh, with the raksha mantri has concluded and whatever of course the developments uh, we will be tracking on republic tv so stay tuned but right now it's time for some more uh, news uh, that i are creating headlines at this point in time this complete chaos in uh, badra congress pilot in the national capital is all set to meet kharge also ashok gelot will be briefing the media shortly all that and much more on the badra congress chaos on the other side stay tuned to republic tv QSM THE the world's foremost university rankings organizations have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally making it among the very few indian universities to be included in both rankings yet another top ranking for amity university supreme court has given its verdict on the rafael case why are you holding 70 press conferences on rafael jab tak supreme court ka verdict nahi aaya humne sanyam rakha hai hum nahi bole sakte aarop pe aarop lagate hue bhrashtachar ka aarop lagaya pradhan mantri ji par aarop lagaya uski safai bhi nahi de sakte ab zarur janta ke samne jayenge kyunki inhone jhoot bolkar janta ko gumrah karne ka prayas kiya hai unhone sena aur desh ki maafi maangi thi sarkar jo supreme court ka judgment aaya usko janta ke samne rakh rahe hain hamara adhikar hai What do you see our country as in 2030 in diplomatic and political terms? I see more change between now and 2030 than I saw in the last 40 years. you have to undergo face similar circumstances as babita did first of all i'm very lucky to have parents like them started badminton just as fun now people ask me why not volleyball you know your parents being volleyball players didn't they encourage you in volleyball but for me it was just that in whichever sport i was interested in they always supported me and i think they've done a lot of sacrifices for me i'm i'm very thankful to them because i would just say that because of them i'm here today they always taught me like when i used to lose my matches they always they were like you know it's not just over but this is only the starting for you and there's more way to go on and that's how they encouraged me and you know step by step i've been improving and i'm here Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about. Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of covid while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency and nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based. Isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can make the transformation even quicker so please join me and join all of us at republic tv as we bring to you the republic summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation see you there
Hey, good morning to all our viewers. I'm Suesha Savant. As we get to the news, also a quick reminder of India's biggest news event that is back, the third edition of the Republic Summit that will be held in the national capital this month with the biggest of names, the biggest newsmakers and the biggest agents of change and transformation in India who will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So do stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by mile. On that note, let's take a look at the top headlines we're tracking at half past one. Firing at Batinda military station, crack of dawn firing claims four lives. Initial probe rules out terror angle. Seven hours on, search and rescue operations continue, security beefed up across Patinda. <laughs> Defence Minister Rajnath Singh chairs top level meet with NSA and MHA officials on Patinda firing. Complete chaos in Congress, pilot in the national capital to meet Kharge Gehlot to brief the media shortly. After showdown over candidate list, BJP in huddle mode now, dissenting Jagdish Shetar, Savari and Ishwarappa have been summoned to Delhi. In a fresh attempt at opposition unity, Nitish set to meet Kharge and other opposition leaders in the national capital. And the story we're getting you first up is from the national capital where Indian school in Sadiq Nakar received a bomb threat. This was via email. And as a precautionary measure, the school has been vacated. Bomb detection squad uh, has already been informed. As Piyush Shori, my colleague, is tracking all the details on the ground. Uh, Piyush, first up uh, to understand what is the current situation. Is the bomb disposal squad already at the spot? And uh, even otherwise, this email uh, that was received, what time was it? Uh, Anything that the IT team or the police has been able to find out to the original location, the source from which this email was sent and was this just a hoax or is there more to it? Question and I'll just uh, read uh, all the uh, answers or to your questions one by one. First, the email uh, was given to the attendant of Indian school uh, at around uh, 11 a.m. to around 10:40, uh, 10 10:50 uh, a.m. Uh, following which, the school was immediately evacuated and the search operations in the school is going on by the officials of the Delhi Police, uh, namely the officials of Delhi Police at the police station at Defence Colony. There are also uh, of what we've been told, some uh, officials of the bomb disposal squad also which are present to make sure that if uh, there is show that if uh, there is any explosive substances that are found in the school that uh, can be diffused at the earliest. Uh, as of now, uh, the search operations, since I'm speaking to you, is still going on and uh, it has still not been uh, told to us by the officials that whether this message was a hoax or not. The third most important point is that uh, the email of how it was received, what is the source of the email is still being ascertained. So yes, as of now, of what we have been told is that the search operations are going on. Uh, there has been an official uh, clarification that has been already given to us by uh, the DCP South, uh, which is uh, investigating the entire matter. And we hope that in the coming uh, few uh, hours, there will be further more clarity of what actually happened in this entire incident. Back to the studio. All right, Piyush, many thanks for getting us all those details. We'll keep coming back to you for further updates as we understand that the school has completely vacated and uh, parents, of course, uh, are worried. But uh, as and when uh, we know more, we'll come to you for it.
and we are cutting across to more breaking news coming in uh, on the crisis in Rajasthan where uh, yesterday Sachin Pilot had held a day, day long dharna the latest of course being that prime minister modi has hit out at the gehlot government uh, bjp coming out in full swing calling out uh, the crisis in rajasthan and this even as we understand that sachin pilot is in the national capital a day after that dharna uh, sources suggest that he is uh, to meet with the malika arjun kharge and priyanka gandhi wadra and the meeting is set to take place uh, until 1 pm uh, we are yet to understand if the meeting has already started in fact in a parallel development congress in charge sukhjinder randhawa will be in jaipur today and uh, he will also be meeting with gehlot several news briefings that are also lined up but uh, for the moment prime minister narendra modi taking a jibe at uh, the gehlot government over the current crisis that prevails listen in साथियों हमारा देश का दुर्भाग्य रहा कि रेलवे जैसी महत्वपूर्ण व्यवस्था जो सामान्य मानवी के जीवन का इतना बड़ा हिस्सा है उसे भी राजनीति का अखाड़ा बना दिया गया था आजादी के बाद भी भारत को एक बड़ा रेलवे नेटवर्क मिला था लेकिन रेलवे के आधुनिकरण पर हमेशा राजनीतिक स्वार्थ हावी रहा राजनीतिक स्वार्थ को देखकर तब यह तय किया जाता था कि कौन रेल मंत्री बनेगा कौन नहीं बनेगा राजनीतिक स्वार्थ ही तय करता था कि कौन सी ट्रेन किस स्टेशन पर चलेगी राजनीतिक स्वार्थ ने ही बजट में ऐसी ऐसी ट्रेनों की घोषणा करवाई जो कभी चली ही नहीं हालत ये थी कि रेलवे की भर्तियों में राजनीति होती थी बड़े पैमाने पर भ्रष्टाचार होता था हालत ये थी कि गरीब लोगों की जमीन छीनकर उन्हें रेलवे में नौकरी का जांचा दिया गया देश में मौजूद हजारों मानव रहित क्रॉसिंग को भी अपने ही हाल पर छोड़ दिया गया था रेलवे की सुरक्षा रेलवे की स्वच्छता रेलवे प्लेटफॉर्म की स्वच्छता सब कुछ नजरअंदाज कर दिया गया था और मुझे गहलोत जी का विशेष रूप से मैं आभार व्यक्त करता हूं कि इन दिनों वो राजनीतिक आपाधापी में उनका अनेक संकटों से वो गुजर रहे हैं उसके बावजूद भी विकास के काम के लिए समय निकाल करके आए रेलवे कार्यक्रम में हिस्सा लिया ये मैं उनका स्वागत भी करता हूं अभिनंदन भी करता हूं और मैं गहलोत जी को कहना चाहता हूं गहलोत जी आपके तो दो दो हाथ में लड्डू है आपके रेल मंत्री राजस्थान के हैं और रेलवे बोर्ड के चेयरमैन भी राजस्थान के हैं तो आपको तो दो दो हाथ में लड्डू है और दूसरा जो काम आजादी के तुरंत बाद होना चाहिए था अब तक नहीं हो पाया लेकिन आपका मुझ पर इतना भरोसा है इतना भरोसा है आज वो काम भी आपने मेरे सामने रखे हैं आपका ये विश्वास यही मेरी मित्रता की अच्छी ताकत है और एक मित्र के नाते आप जो भरोसा रखते हैं इसके लिए मैं आपका बहुत आभार व्यक्त करता हूं पीयूष ओरी नाउ ज्वाइनिंग अस ऑन द ब्रॉडकास्ट पीयूष एज फर एज अशोक गहलोत इज कंसर्न रियली डबल वैमी इन दैट सेंस नॉट ओनली is it an all out attack uh, by the bjp but uh, also gehlot uh, uh, busy solving the crisis uh, that has been called by sachin pilot who is now in the national capital but uh, this particular reference that the prime minister is making detail that for us so yes you know it's definitely double whammy for ashok gehlot the chief minister of rajasthan indeed 
because not only is he right now facing the political crisis of a silent dissent that has been carried out against him by Sachin Pilot, who is right now at the national capital and is all set to uh, meet some of the top leaders of the Congress party in which he will uh, definitely express his uh, displeasure against the Rajasthan government, but also uh, most probably express his aspirations, taking into consideration of the impending assembly election that is expected to come. But having said that, you also saw that uh, in a true political way, uh, the Prime Minister also made uh, the mention of Ashok Gailot and mentioned in a way that how uh, it was important for him that despite being involved in the political, uh, despite being embroiled in the political crisis in a way, he was uh, also making sure in a way of uh, trying to uh, be progressive. Now, through this, uh, uh, you know, statement, in a way, the Prime Minister uh, has also, in a way, tried to make use of uh, uh, other references. Mind you, uh, he was right. talking about the right. corruption in the railways that used to occur at one point of time. Right. Now, uh, this can also be directly referred to the land for job scam in which the Yadav family, especially Tejasvi Yadav, uh, is uh, being... Uh, Piyush's point really is that... Uh... Uh, we will uh, hear more from Ashok Gehlot in the news briefings that are lined up today and how exactly does he combat uh, uh, both sides politically so as to say uh, would be there for us to watch. Uh, for the moment, thank you uh, Piyush for joining us. So we take a quick check of the other top stories that we are tracking for you in brief this afternoon. Taking forward uh, the efforts to unite the opposition in the run-up to the 2024 Lok Sabha elections, Bihar Chief Minister and JDU Chief Nitish Kumar arrived in the national capital for a three-day visit. He is expected to hold a spree of meetings with opposition leaders including Malikarjun Kharge. Tejas Express train operating between Mumbai and Karmali in Goa will have the second Vista Dome coach which provides a wider and hindrance-free view of the surroundings from the 14th of April. Now, according to Central Railway officials, these coaches have uh, huge windows and transparent roofs that have become popular among passengers of rail sections from Mumbai to Pune and Goa. Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar and his deputy Dushan Chatala on Tuesday welcomed the centre's decision to relax the uniform specifications of wheat during procurement season 2023-24. However, according to a Haryana government statement, the state government uh, has uh, requested the central government to withdraw the value cut. BJP National Spokesperson Sambat Patra walked on burning coal at the ongoing Jammu Jatra in Puri district in Odisha. According to sources, he walked around 10 metres on burning coal on Tuesday. Ahead of multiple G20 meetings in Goa, the coastal state is witnessing fast-paced work on road repairs, infrastructure upgrade Beautification and Waste Management, Goa Chief Minister Pramod Savant reviewed the various aspects pertaining to the preparations, including power infrastructure, aesthetics and lighting of monuments, civil works, food testing, medical cover, transportation among others. The first of the eight scheduled G20 meetings in Goa will be held from the 17th of April. A shocking video of Kala Kurichi district collector ordering his dofidar to carry has uh, gone viral. Now, according to sources, the collector of Kala Kurichi, who went to Kuagam temple asking his assistant to fetch his shoes, has caused a lot of shock. Sources uh, further added that before entering the temple, the collector removed his shoes and ordered uh, his dofidar to pick them up. Coimbatore police arrested Tamil Nadu BJP Industrial Wing Vice President Senthil Kumar. It is said that uh, he has been arrested over a complaint filed by Minister Senthil Balaji and has been booked under IT Act. Notably, Tamil Nadu BJP Chief Anna Malai condemned this act of Tamil Nadu police. 
ईडी रेड्स आतिक फाइनेंस एंड क्लोज एट खालिद जाफर जफर्स हाउस ऑन चलवा ट्रिपल आई टी रोड नाउ अकॉर्डिंग टू सोर्सेज ही हैज बिन अक्यूज ऑफ शेल्टरिंग शायस्त परवीन सोर्सेज फर्दर एड दैट ई डी ड्यूरिंग द रेड्स हैव रिकवर्ड एसेट्स वर्थ मोर देन वन फिफ्टी क्रोर्स करंटली प्रेपरेशन आर बिंग मेड टू कॉन्फिस्केट दैम सोन In another move towards a semi-high speed railway connectivity Prime Minister Modi inaugurated Rajasthan's first Vande Bharat Express train by a video conferencing the inaugural Vande Bharat Express in Rajasthan will ply between Jaipur and Delhi Kant railway station the regular service of this Vande Bharat Express will start from the 13th of April As after BJP denied giving a ticket to former Deputy Chief Minister Lakshman Sawadi, the veteran leader called for a meeting of his supporters on Thursday, that is the 13th of April, to decide his future plans. And well, in a big lead in the Maharashtra political crisis, Sharad Pawar has now admitted that there are some differences. The NCP chief's differences have come after his late-night meeting with Udhav Thakre and Sanjay Rao. It is an open admission made by Sharad Pawar that uh, differences are certainly a part of the Mahavikas Aghari. And this, after a late-night meeting that he had with Udhav Thakre and Sanjay Rao, let's listen into that statement. सहभागीवर <laughs> सहभागीवर <laughs> All right so that's the statement put out by Sharad Pawar where uh, he is admitting to the differences uh, he's had with the Uddhav faction of Shiv Sena remember it is the Congress at one end that is already miffed uh, with Sharad Pawar over the statement that he made on uh, the Adani issue saying that a JPC probe would not be as effective and uh, now Sharad Pawar also admitting of differences that he has uh, with the Uddhav faction uh this once again is very strongly indicating of the cracks in the mahavikas aghadi uh this even as we understand that uh, how ajit pawar on the sidelines is having meetings and uh, let's not forget that statement by nana patole where uh, the maharashtra congress has said that they are ready with a plan b so where exactly is uh, the unity of the mahavikas aghadi headed is this alliance still in place Uh, let's once again listen in to that statement by Sharad Pawar. सहभागीवर <laughs> <laughs> All right so that's the statement coming in from Sharad Pawar we'll try and get uh, more reactions to this and really understand where exactly is the Mahavikas Aghadi headed and if the alliance is still in place but uh, the cracks certainly very very visible and now uh, the strong admission coming in from Sharad Pawar uh, at one end the congress mit- miffed with Sharad Pawar over the statement on the Adani issue and now a late night meeting with uh, Uddhav Thakre and Sanjay Raut where Sharad Pawar says that there are differences
Sandeep is with me on the phone line to give us more details. Uh, Sandeep, what exactly is happening? Because uh, the Mahavikas Aghari certainly seems in doldrums uh, at this point. Uh, the Congress at one end is miffed with Sharad Pawar. Uh, here even uh, Udhav Thakre and Sharad Pawar have differences. And uh, Ajit Pawar is set to meet Eknath Shinde. On the other hand, uh, the Congress uh, in Maharashtra is saying that we have a plan B ready. Uh, what can we expect will happen at 2 p.m.? Uh, see, as far as uh, this uh, meeting is concerned, uh, Ajit Pawar and uh, uh, Eknath Shinde, uh, uh, as far as the uh, official message uh, from uh, NCP is uh, concerned, uh, it mentions that Ajit Pawar will be meeting a Chief Minister of Maharashtra and Deputy Chief Minister of uh, uh, Maharashtra, Ikna Chinde and Devendra Patnavi. So, were unseasonal arrangements. Uh, that is what being said. But uh, yes, uh, these uh, this meeting also has several other. Uh, 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 reasons as well and in fact uh, uh, causes as well. Uh, they are most likely that uh, discussions over upcoming situation in Maharashtra could be discussed and uh, as you remember uh, Sharad Pawar today uh, while speaking to media have clearly mentioned that uh, yesterday's meeting with uh, uh, Uttar Thakre, Sanjay Rao, Supriya Sulen uh, with himself uh, uh, was to clear the differences within the Mahavikas Aghari and in fact he uh, mentioned that we need uh, to, uh, there are several uh, sets of di uh, uh, several sets of different opinion and uh, Mahavikas Aghari needs to work unitedly. So definitely there were several differences within uh, Mahavikas Aghari and in fact uh, uh, Uddhav Thakri uh, party is in fact trying to convince uh, N NCP as this, at this point of time but yes it is uh, 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 these statements cannot uh, uh, be in fact uh, uh, taken uh, so lightly as these uh, meetings are happening at this point of time wherein Sharad Sawar has already backed uh, uh, BJP government uh, uh, over Adani so as well as uh, workers uh, thought. So definitely there could be several uh, 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 political uh, happenings in upcoming days. All right, Sandeep, uh, keeping a very close track of the situation and what really turns out uh, eventually. But uh, for the moment, thank you for joining us. We shift our focus to Karnataka now. And the latest we are hearing that Congress stalwart uh, Kaguro Thimapa's daughter, Dr. Rajanandini, is all set to join the BJP in Bengaluru today. She's upset with Siddharamaya, D.K. Shivakumar and Madhika Arjun Kharge for ignoring her claims to the Sagara Assembly seat earlier held by her father. Meanwhile, in a big setback for the BJP, several BJP leaders from Rajaji Nagar Assembly constituency are set to cross over to the Congress. 400 BJP workers from Rajaji Nagar Assembly constituency, apart from their leaders, are set to join the Congress. Many BJP leaders are miffed with Suresh Kumar against being given the ticket. BJP leaders Padma Raj Mahesh Rao, Umesh Ajit Prasad, Prakash Nagaraj, Anand Gauda are joining the pro party. Carrying across to Niranjan who is joining us on the phone line. Uh, Niranjan, uh, this is really in two parts so we will take it one by one. Firstly, we hear that uh, Dr. Rajanandini is set to join the BJP today as she is miffed over not being given the seat that her father earlier held. Well, uh, you know, a lot of uh, interesting developments, especially uh, in, in, uh, in the last, uh, you know, 24 hours, we've seen a lot of uh, leaders being uh, disgruntled, uh, especially after the ticket, the ticket uh, distribution. Uh, and, uh, you know, some leaders, including uh, Savari, Lakshman Savari, Lakshman Savari, uh, you know, who, Savari, who has decided to you know, sort of profit uh, from the BJP, he was one of the CDMO leaders. A very controversial leader as well. Uh, Lakshman Savadi himself uh, was one of the, the leaders who was originally in the Karnataka Pawn Gate controversy of 2012. So nonetheless, I mean, the controversy apart, uh, what is also uh, interesting is that uh, Gandhi Shetar, another very senior leader, former chief minister, headed to Delhi. He's not happy. And uh, even on the Congress side, and then the Congress sort of had a field day yesterday to take a dig at uh, 
uh, the BJP for uh, for the sort of uh, discontent being seen, and uh, uh, and we're also hearing that as we speak, uh, this particular leader, Kavos Kinnapa, is one of the senior most leaders, uh, has been one of the senior most leaders uh, in in the Congress Party for decades and decades. In fact, uh, he was uh, he's, he's a record holding sort of a uh, politician because. Uh, nobody has contested as many elections as he has. He's filed nominations uh, uh, 13 times, which he's contested 13 times, and uh, retired uh, retired effectively from active politics in the year 2018. And his daughter, uh, who's also uh, a known face in in politics in Karnataka, seems to have uh, met Edward Appa. Uh, it's certainly a uh, uh, how do you put it? It's a perceptional blow for the Congress party. It's a perceptional blow, but not sure. Will translate uh, to uh, uh, you know a major uh, swing for the BJP, but certainly it's a professional blow because a lot of disgruntled leaders are going to switch loyalties, switch sides, and we've seen that. Oh yes, uh, BJP many of them have joined the Congress already. Oh yes. And seeming like that on both sides because uh, 400 BJP workers. Uh, from the rajaji nagar constituency are also set to switch so we are keeping a close watch on uh, what really happens for the moment niranjan many thanks for joining us we have to slip into a very short commercial and a quick check of the big stories we are tracking for you this afternoon defense minister rajnath singh chairs top most uh, level meeting with nsa and mhg officials on bhatinda file And after a showdown over candidate list, BJP is now in huddle mode. Dissenting Jagdish Shetar and uh, Ishwar Appa have been summoned to Delhi. QSNTHE the world's foremost university rankings organizations have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally making it among the very few indian universities to be included in both rankings yet another top ranking for amity university junior world champion rahe hain neera chopra Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of COVID, while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation, of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover, and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency. And nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based. Isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can? make the transformation even quicker so please join me and join all of us at republic tv as we bring to you the republic summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation see you there has given its verdict on the rafael case why are you holding 70 press conferences on rafael jab tak supreme court ka verdict nahi aaya humne sanyam rakha hai hum nahi bole the aarop pe aarop lagate the bhrashtachar ka aarop lagaya pradhan mantri ji par aarop lagaya uski safai bhi nahi de sakte
Very good afternoon. You're watching Republic TV with me, Raksha Mishra. Before we head into the top stories at this hour, let us tell you, ladies and gentlemen, India's biggest news event is back. The third edition of the Republic Summit will be held in the national capital this month. The biggest names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change and transformation in India will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. Firing at Batinda military station, crack of dawn firing claims four lives. Initial probe rules out terror angle. Seven hours on, search and rescue operations continue. Security beefed up across Batinda. Defence Minister Radnath Singh chairs topmost level meeting with NSA and MHA officials on Batinda firing. Complete chaos in Madra Congress. Pilot in the national capital to meet Harge. Hello to brief media. After showdown over candidate list, BJP in huddle mode now. Dissenting Jagdi Shetar and Ishwarappa summoned to Delhi. In a fresh attempt at opposition unity, Nitish Kumar set to meet Malikarjun Kharge and other opposition leaders in the national capital. All right, we are starting with the, the chaos that is unfolding in the Vadra Congress. Vadra Congress chaos continues, viewers. The party is now in a huddle mode. So, Jinder Singh Randhawa has now reached to meet Malika Jun Kharge, and that is the big breaking we are getting at this point in time. Sources suggest that uh, Sukhjinder Singh Randhawa will hand over a complete report on pilots' revolt to Malika Jun Kharge, the Congress president. And it is only after this that Sachin Pilot might be Randhawa, might meet Randhawa and Kharge. All right, we are getting live visuals right now. Nitish Kumar meeting uh, Rahul Gandhi there. Do the uh, uh, live visuals, and as we told you earlier, that uh, Nitish Kumar was uh, slated to meet uh, Congress President Malikarjun Kharge. We are also seeing, uh, apart from Malikarjun Kharge, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi also there, and they just be Yadav right behind uh, Nitish Kumar. So uh, those are latest visuals live from uh, Malikarjun Kharge's residence. That's a photo op. You can see there. Nitish Kumar, Tejasvi Yadav, Rahul Gandhi and uh, to the extreme left you can see Malikarjun Kharge, Nitish Kumar of course in an attempt to weave a new opposition front uh, right ahead of the 2024 general elections there. This uh, meeting on opposition unity, another attempt at opposition unity and as we learned that it was Malikarjun Kharge who had called Nitish Kumar today. Nitish Kumar is now uh, finally, uh, meeting uh, Malikarjun Khadge there and also in attendance are uh, Rahul Gandhi and Tejasvi Yadav, Deputy Chief Minister of Bihar. Tejasvi Yadav there, Nitish Kumar also uh, was earlier uh, meeting Lalu Prasad Yadav. And uh, now we see these are uh, visuals live and breaking on Republic TV. And my colleague Harsha is joining us live on the broadcast for more on this. Harsha, we are uh, seeing this uh, uh, these uh, visuals that are coming in from Malika Arjun Kharge's residence. Uh, uh, big development there. Another attempt to weave opposition unity. Tejasvi Yadav and Rahul Gandhi are also in attendance. Uh, Rakshita, now what we are learning is that the visuals are coming in straight from the Malikarjun Khadge residence because the entire meeting, uh, of, uh, meeting of Nitish Kumar with the Congress leader is on the unity of opposition. Now what were the visuals are from the residence of Malikarjun Khadge where we clearly see that the senior Congress leaders along with Rahul Gandhi are, have already reached the residence of Malikarjun Khadge and this has come days after Malikarjun Khadge called Nitish Kumar and called him to come to Delhi and have a meeting in detail regarding opposition 
conservation unity before 2024 election and rakshita if you look into that last year we saw that nitish kumar was seen projecting himself as the pm candidate now this opposition meeting will also have a discussion that who will be the leader of the entire opposition unity whether it's going to be nitish kumar or some other leader because ksr has also projected himself as the leader of the opposition unity and mamta banerji has also met several opposition parties so what exactly the opposition parties across the country are thinking about the third front who should be the leader and before 2024 what should be what should be the strategy of the opposition party to have a crackdown against bjp so that they could go they could go full flesh on the ground and project that opposition are united and they are strongly carved against the ruling party bjp and right now we are reporting on this entire because nitish kumar was supposed to meet at come at the residence of malikarjun khadge 1 o'clock and exact is the time when he has reached at the residence of malikarjun khadge he is on a 3 days visit to the national capital early in the morning nitish kumar left from his residence and straight went to the residence of the bihar deputy chief minister tejasvi yadav at new friends colony and after meeting tejasvi he has straight come here to the malikarjun khadge residence on a 3 days visit. that he is also supposed to meet other opposition party leaders as well we are also expecting that he on a 3 days visit could could also meet aam aadmi party cm the cm of delhi arvind kejriwal as well but this meeting becomes very much important to carve the strategy against the ruling party bjp and how the allies of congress like ncp who are right now not happy with the ideology of congress and who are siding themselves with the ideology of congress how to bridge a gap between these allies of congress this is it uh, this is the agenda of the meeting when nitish kumar has reached right now at the residence of malikarjun khadge rakshita back to you absolutely of course uh, nitish kumar there hoping to break the ice between congress and the other opposition party but thank you so much for now harsha for joining us with all those details on that story All right, we're getting in some more breaking news in this regarding the chaos in the Vadra Congress, but it still continues. The party is now in a huddle mode. So Jinder Singh Randhawa, who is in charge for Rajasthan Congress, has now reached to meet Mr. Garjan Karge. He has uh, he is there at uh, Karge's residence, and sources say that Randhawa will hand over a complete report on Pilot's revolt that we saw yesterday, an all-out revolt there. Uh, the report has been sought by Mr. Garjan Karge, and so Jinder Singh Randhawa will be. Uh, of course uh, submitting a report on the same uh, malkarjun kharge is taking st stock of the situation and uh, we are also expecting pilot meeting vandhav and kharge my colleague vyush uh, or is joining us for more on this uh, piyush uh, significant development there uh, malkarjun kharge uh, is uh, hosting many leaders today and now this is a very critical situation for uh, uh, congress party and congress in a huddle right after what happened yesterday an all out war against the gelod government the uh, by sachin pilot and now sukhjinder singh randhawa who called it an anti party activity is submitting a report to kharge it is a significant development indeed and now all eyes are at the five canning lane the official residence of sachin pilot where i'm reporting from that what exactly would the next move of sachin pilot be now uh, it may be uh, possible that sachin pilot inside his residence where he is right now would be viewing the entire set of uh, events very closely and he would also be viewing that what actually would be the stand of gandhis of whom he would be having a lot of expectation in the past however we have seen that the gandhis have not stood for him and uh, this time when again the rajasthan congress is at the crossroads it would be interesting to see that now what exactly would the stand of gandhis be i'm right now reporting from the official residence of sachin pilot where all eyes now are that what exactly sachin pilot uh, be doing from here on it is told to us that uh, you know following uh, most probably in the evening he would also be meeting the congress president malik arjun kharge and he would also be telling mm. him about what mm. his uh, grievances are we have seen yesterday that what is the uh, support which uh, sachin pilot has when there were a sea of supporters which had uh, come to him as he had uh, uh, done a 5 hour uh, 
hunger protest against the so called corruption uh, of bjp and the inaction by the gehlot government against the uh, corruption of bjp in rajasthan but we all know on ground for long uh, sachin pilot has had a lot of grievances against ashok gehlot and now with the impending hmm. assembly elections it would be interesting to see that what would be the stand that would be taken by the congress uh, and more importantly what would be the stand that would be taken by sachin pilot back to in the studio right right uh, all right thank you so much uh, keep a track of all the developments we'll keep coming back to you for more on that but right now it's time to listen into what the prime minister had to say on uh, this uh, matter because uh, during a pre uh, video conference uh, and a briefing uh, prime minister modi uh, in fact took a jibe on uh, ashok gehlot amid the revolt by sachin uh, uh, pilot let's take a listen in lad rahe sir aur mujhe gehlot ji ka vishesh roop se main aabhar vyakt karta hu ki in dino wo rajnitik apadhapi mein unka anek sankaton se wo guzar rahe hain उसके बावजूद भी विकास के काम के लिए समय निकाल करके आए रेलवे कार्यक्रम में हिस्सा लिया ये मैं उनका स्वागत भी करता हूं अभिनंदन भी करता हूं और मैं गहलोत जी को कहना चाहता हूं गहलोत जी आपके तो दो दो हाथ में लड्डू है All right, uh, we're getting some uh, breaking developments. There's some visuals uh, of angry passengers in a Go Air flight creating ruckus at the Goa airport. Uh, this regarding no communication from airline with passenger over immediate cancellation of the flight. And uh, viewers, you're getting this first in Republic. Those are the visuals of the ruckus at Goa airport. And this was regarding uh, the uh, no, there was no communication reportedly. Allegedly, there was no communication uh, from the airlines from the airport to the passengers regarding. an immediate cancellation of the flight and my colleague uh, is joining us on the my colleague sandeep is joining us on the phone line for more on this uh, uh, sandeep what is uh, really the matter that we are talking about here uh, see as far as this uh, go air flight is concerned it was uh, scheduled from uh, goa airport to uh, mumbai uh, at around 2 uh, uh, 10 am in the morning uh, but uh, uh, at 1:30 uh, am the passengers were uh, informed that the uh, flight is uh, cancelled the reasons were not disclosed of the cancellation and uh, in fact uh, as uh, they demanded uh, another flight the passengers demanded another flight the uh, uh, go air uh, were unable to in fact schedule an immediate flight and rather uh they were asked to wait uh for uh, till morning at uh, 7 am at uh, 6:30 to 7 am in the morning and this group is uh, broke out at uh, the airport as the passengers uh, uh were informed very late about the cancellation of the flight and in fact uh, as you see the roof is uh, uh, many uh, 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 the employees of go air were also manhandled uh, by the passengers out there but yet uh, uh, after uh, the uh, issue was taken up by go air the go air had arranged a uh, uh, flight at around 6:30 am in the morning and later on uh, uh, they were allowed to go now uh, one of the most important point out here is that there are several passengers that were worried about uh, the connecting flights that they had to catch as they have missed uh, a few international right. flights as they were scheduled on the time so and mm. that was mm. the major concern of the passengers at uh, All right. for the same reason we saw the route to south absolutely of course and above uh, 80 passengers were stuck at the airport big development there but thank you so much uh, for now sandeep for joining us with all those details we're getting some more breaking news at this point in time and uh, this regarding the big story that we have been tracking on republic tv this is about a batinda firing incident that was reported today at the military station in batinda early hours this morning around 4:35 am inside batinda military station and station quick reaction teams were activated area was cordoned off and sealed and search operations remained in progress four fatal casualties have been reported up until now and further details are being ascertained and let's take a listen to some of the reactions that have come in on this the 
जांच के बाद पता लगेगा कि वो क्या मामला था अपेक्षा करते हैं कि वहाँ पर तुरंत जांच होगी और जो भी लोग दोषी हैं उनको पकड़ा जाएगा जांच के बाद पता लगेगा कि वो क्या मामला था अपेक्षा करते हैं कि वहाँ पर तुरंत जांच होगी और जो भी लोग दोषी हैं उनको पकड़ा जाएगा All right, uh, my colleague Amandeep Dixit, who has been tracking this uh, story from Ground Zero, has filed this report. Take a look. So four people have been killed inside the Bithinda cantonment area, and right now we are standing nearby the cant area where I can show you the police vehicles which are about to enter into the cantonment area, which has been completely sealed. And you can see the visuals that we are just reporting outside the Bithinda cantonment where the incident has taken place. And even uh, after that, immediately local police has been local police has been uh, informed accordingly, and the mobile forensic vans has also been pushed into the service. And even, in fact, you can see that uh, you can see that now the police is moving inside the cantonment area. The area has completely cordoned off. Only the police vehicles are allowed to go inside. And here you can see the incident has been reported. Four people have been killed early in the morning, and early in the morning. And after that, immediately Indian Army has released an uh, statement, official statement, in which it has been confirmed that incident took place at 4:30. And after that, and after that. Uh, and and after that bithinda police has also been informed for their further operations as well right so that was uh, the report that was filed is uh, this uh, just as the news broke out in civilian movement remember we was has been completely halted there army officials and police uh, uh, reached the site uh, and this of course uh, broke out at uh, after 4 am in the morning and bithinda military station has been sealed and there was a forensic team a technical team uh, that was there and four casualties have been reported and uh, my colleague Amandeep Dikshir is joining us uh, for more on this. Amandeep, what is the latest that you are picking up on this big story that we have been tracking? Well, Rakshita, we are, what we are picking up is that cordon and search operation is still underway. And the teams of Indian Army, QRT and in fact Punjab Police, they all are inside the cantonment area. And in fact, if I can show you the visuals from this side, that how the entire area has been still sealed and uh, civilian movement is still prohibited. And in fact, uh, so far there is no such uh, uh, factual update from the side of Indian Army and even the security has been deployed nearby the areas. But the fact is that four people has been killed. They are the Jawans from the artillery unit and even this incident took place at artillery uh, mess as well. And even uh, the firing incident reported at 4.35 but after that Punjab police has also pressed into the survey. I request my camera person to kindly give you the sense through the visuals as well that what all ha is happening outside the Bathinda military station. Just because now the Punjab police and Indian army and QRT teams are uh, searching the entire area that who is responsible and what all is happening. So far there is no such official confirmation that any person has been detained or the apprehended for this entire incident but the fact is that one in sars rifle along with 28 live rounds are mi missing since uh, two days and in fact now uh, they are still searching for that weapon also and army is taking care of entire operation then terror angle has been completely ruled out this is the matter of inside the indian army campus as well and the military station of bithinda has been completely uh, sealed from each and every and you can see the visuals you can see the visuals that police officials are coming out from the army area and I can show you that these police teams has went inside along with the forensic team as well but now two of the cops are coming out coming out from the area I request my camera person to kindly follow me so let's see if they are willing to speak on the issue just because parallel investigation is being launched by the Punjab police as well and and even the teams are coming uh, from the inside. Sir, you are coming from the inside? No, 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 no. Are you now in the teams that are still there? No, they are not in the inside. Is there coordination in Indian Army in this situation? Tell us about Punjabi. Sir, you are coordinating with Indian Army. There are four people who are killed in the inside. They are killed in the inside. Is there any coordination in the inside? No, they are not in the inside. There are four gates in the inside. So, you are only in the inside? हाँ जी हाँ जी तो जी अंदर हजी स्पॉट तो नहीं गए आर्मी तो ऑपरेशन नहीं गए अंदर नहीं ऐसे नहीं गए जी नहीं हमारे ऑफिस सर साबियाना है हम नहीं गए नहीं मिली जी नहीं कोई नहीं मिली सर
ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਗੇਟ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਹਰੋਂ ਆਏ ਆ ਸਾਰੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਆਫੀਸਰਸ ਅੰਦਰ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਗੇਟ ਤੋਂ ਕਿ ਅੰਦਰ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਆਫੀਸਰ ਦੀ ਅੰਦਰ ਨੇ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪੂਰੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਆਫੀਸਰ ਆ ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਚ ਗਏ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਗੇਟ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਵਾਪਸ ਆ ਗਏ ਸੋ ਰਕਸ਼ਿਤਾ ਦਾ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਇਜ਼ ਥੈਟ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਆਫੀਸਰਸ ਆਰ ਇਨਸਾਈਡ ਦਾ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਬਠਿੰਡਾ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਫੈਕਟ ਦੇ ਦੇ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਆਸਕਡ ਟੂ ਸਟੇ ਐਟ ਦਾ ਗੇਟ ਆਫ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਨ ਬਠਿੰਡਾ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਫੈਕਟ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੀ ਇਫ ਆਈ ਕੈਨ ਸ਼ੋ ਯੂ ਦਾ ਵਿਜ਼ੂਅਲਸ ਥੈਟ ਹਾਊ ਦਾ ਏਰੀਆ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਲੀ ਸੀਲ ਓਨਲੀ ਟੂ ਕੋਪਸ ਹੈਵ ਕੇਮ ਆਊਟ ਵਿਦ ਸਮ ਫਾਈਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਇਨ ਫੈਕਟ ਦਾ ਟੀਮਸ ਆਰ ਸਟਿਲ ਇਨਸਾਈਡ ਟੈਕਨੀਕਲ ਐਂਡ ਫਿਜ਼ੀਕਲ ਇਨਵੈਸਟੀਗੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਲਾਂਚਡ ਬਾਈ ਬਾਈ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਕਿਉ ਆਰ ਟੀ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਐਸ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਐਂਡ ਸੋ ਫਾਰ देयर इज नो कंफर्मेशन देयर इज नो इंफॉर्मेशन दैट हु इज द पर्सन एंटायरली रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द एंटायर इंसिडेंट व्हिच हैज क्लेम्ड द लाइफ लाइफ ऑफ फोर जवान फ्रॉम द आर्टिलरी यूनिट यस रक्षिता राइट अमनदीप एब्सोल्युटली एंड माय कॉलीग गुरु सिमरन आल्सो कंटीन्यूज टू बी विद अस ऑन द ब्रॉडकास्ट फॉर मोर ऑन दिस गुरु सिमरन वी सॉ हाउ अमनदीप स्पोक टू अ कपल ऑफ पंजाब पुलिस ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम ऑन दैट स्टोरी एंड दे आर सेइंग दैट दे वर आउटसाइड स्टेशनड आउटसाइड द द द लोकेशन एंड द एरिया हैज बीन सील्ड नाउ द मिलिट्री स्टेशन हैज बीन सील्ड नाउ वी आल्सो नो दैट ऑलमोस्ट एन आवर बैक दैट राजनाथ सिंह्स मीटिंग विद एमएचए ऑफिशियल्स हैड एंडेड व्हाट इज द लेटेस्ट दैट यू आर बीइंग पिकिंग अप ऑन दिस डेवलपमेंट station and important to mention that the senior army officials have briefed the union defense minister rajnath singh about the developments that are taking place this area falls under the chetan cop of cops of the indian army this is the important strategic core of the indian army and this is on the barnala bathinda highway where this has taken place and important to mention that the senior officials of the indian army uh, they are also here uh, sarjeevan is trying to show you the visuals i request sarjeevan uh, to keep showing you the visuals uh, uh, there are some hindrances is uh, that are happening i'll request uh, sarjeevan uh, to uh, uh, we are uh, getting some uh, we are getting some uh, hindrances and we'll right. try to resume shortly hmm. right of course uh, security officials of course uh, uh, of course uh, blocking the camera there of course for sir maybe for the security reasons there but uh, uh, thank you so much uh, guru simran and uh, amandeep for joining us with all those details and inputs on that developing story we'll keep coming back to you for more on that story As strikes by Myanmar's the military on Tuesday killed as many as 100 people including many children who were attending a ceremony held by opponents of uh, army rule said a witness a member of a local pro democracy group and independent media The US Department of State spokesperson Vedant Patel took to Twitter to raise concerns over the military strikes in uh, Myanmar The spokesperson said that the situation in Myanmar is uh, deeply concerning President Joe Biden landed in Ireland Tuesday evening uh, embarking on a four-day journey of uh, diplomatic and fa- family celebrations during his visit Biden plans to highlight the US role of 25 years ago in ending deadly bloodshed in Northern Ireland while catching up with distant relatives in the Republic of Ireland it's his first trip back as America's president US Secretary of State Antony Blinken says the president has spoken with the parents of Wall Street Journal reporter Ivan Jakovich the uh, Moscow based journalist detained in Russia and charged with espionage US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin reinforced the strong re- relationship with the Philippines at the State Department in a sign of deepening defense cooperation Blinken and Austin met with their uh, Philippine Foreign and Defense Secretaries to discuss the American military presence and proposed joint naval patrols. A top Cuban diplomat said her government expects a more realistic approach to the embargo against Cuba when officials meet for the third biannual meeting since talks resumed in 2022. The appointments resumed last year after a 6-year hiatus that coincided with a cooling of ties pushed by former President Donald Trump. 
U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris welcomed Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki to uh, Washington for bilateral talks. The two sides are uh, expected to discuss defense issues, including Ukraine and, and NATO security. A delegation of Italian politicians, mostly from uh, Giorgia Meloni's party, was ready to fly to Taipei, but the mission got postponed to an unspecified date amid growing international tensions. The delegation of Italian MPs was about to fly to Taipei for the first time since November 2019. However, their mission was uh, postponed to a later, as of yet, unspecified date. of uh, polling they have given to me. I have conference with the people of Kanakpura. I will go for my nomination and last day I will go for my appeal. Rest my people are there, they will take care of the elections. Sir, as a counter, are you proud of the Democrats' daughters once said to join the uh, BJP? Do you see this as a danger to the Congress party? I could see Edirappa's uh, very close confident men have uh, resigned today in Belgaum. One more MLC who are still five years, I was told that he has resigned. I could see so many other BJP leaders, workers, they are resigning. Are you, are, are you are welcoming Lakshman Savadhi into the party, sir? Still, uh, I don't know what is his uh, cards, how he play cards, is, uh, uh, let us look at it. But now, as on today, I could just get a news that he has submitted uh, for his primary membership of the party. Now there is a big request, okay. but still my party has to take its call. Okay. It is not my call. So you are not ruling out that possibility? It is not my call, it is not uh, Suresh call, it is a party's call. Karnataka cooperative banks have been raided, we hear. Yes, uh, for, I think uh, you could see that the highest number of uh, corruption uh, has been going on in these banks. And uh, Mr. Somshekar had said that he is going to hand over to the CBI. I don't know whether he handed it over or to the CBI. Today also I could see an article that about more than 5,000 crores has been resisted. I don't know much details on it. We will have a detailed uh, press conference on this issue later. Thank you. So you please have this voter list once again you can have and you will have a look at it. How many booths, what has been done, I think you will get, including every booth, uh, there is a, on the village of the booth, whatever is there, I think you can take the uh, photograph on it. Yes. Hey, the display matter, you just display it and show it to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. With that, we slip into a short commercial break. On the other side, we get you details as uh, Volodymyr Zelensky has written to PM Modi seeking additional humanitarian aid, including medical equipment from India. Junior World Champion, Neera Chopra. Why you say that elections don't matter? Because you cannot win elections. There is one of the fundamental fallacies of humanity is to think that electoral victories validate everything. I certainly don't intend to compare governments and individuals. Errors are errors whether they are made by majority governments or not majority governments. आज देश अपनी आंखों के सामने देख रहा है और कभी-कभी लोग कह भी रहे हैं कि हमने सोचा नहीं था कि हम जीते जी ये देख पाएंगे ऐसा कई लोग कहते हैं और इसके दो प्रमुख कारण हैं पहला भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों का आत्मविश्वास जो कहता है यस इट इज 
इंडियाज मोमेंट और दूसरा भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों की सोच जो कहती है नेशन फर्स्ट जूनियर वर्ल्ड चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Good afternoon, I'm Suesha Samant and once again a quick reminder for our viewers of India's biggest news event that is back, the third edition of the Republic Summit that will be held in the national capital this month with the biggest of names, the biggest newsmakers, the biggest agents of change and transformation in India who will be at the Republic Summit once again this year. So do stand by for what will be by far India's biggest news event by miles. On that note, let's begin with the headlines we're tracking at the sub. Firing at Batinda military station, crack of dawn firing claims four lives, initial probe rules out terror angle. Seven hours on, search and rescue operations continue, security, security beefed up across Batinda. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh chairs topmost level meeting with NSA and MHA officials on Patinda firing. There is complete chaos in Vadra Congress. Pilot is in the national capital to meet with Kharge. Gehlot is set to brief the media shortly. After showdown over candidate list, BJP in huddle mode now, dissenting Jagdish Shatar and Ishwarappa summoned to Delhi. In a fresh attempt at opposition unity, Nitish meets Kharge and Rahul in the national capital. And on to the top story we are tracking at this hour of the firing incident that was reported at uh, Bhatinda military station in the early hours of this morning. It happened exactly at 4.35 uh, a.m. This happened inside the Bhatinda military station where uh, station quick reaction teams were activated. The area has been completely cordoned off and uh, no civil movement is allowed. Search operations are in progress for Fatal casualties that have uh, been reported and uh, details that are still being ascertained of what exactly happened at the Bhatinda military station. My colleagues Amandeep and Gursimran joining us uh, on the broadcast. Uh, Gursimran, if I could come to you first. Uh, we know that how uh, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh just concluded that meeting a short while ago and he has been briefed uh, on how it happened but uh, any more details that is being put out uh, in public domain at this point an official statement indicating to uh, what had happened this morning See, it was at around 4.35 uh, that uh, uh, all of a sudden gunshots were heard here at the Batinda military station. Right now, we are outside the Batinda military station. This is the Rainadwar of the Batinda military station. This is the headquarters of the Chetak Corps of the Indian Army, which is the 10th Corps of the Indian Army that looks after the western borders. And this comes under the southwest command of the Indian Army. Important to mention that at around 4.35, uh, all of a sudden loud banks were heard. There was firing and within three minutes uh, of the incident, the QRTs that 
that were already on standby. This is a part of the SOP of the Indian Army that the uh, uh, these QRTs, the quick reaction teams of the Indian Army are always on standby. They reached the spot and entire area was cordoned in. All the entry and the exit points uh, of the uh, this uh, military station were barred. You can imagine to this extent that there are some people even waiting. Even the military vehicles have been barred from entering the military station because uh, there was a complete, complete alert that was sounded and no one was allowed to go in or outside the military station and some of the military vehicles can be seen parked outside the military station here at the Rana Dwar of uh, the uh, Bathinda military station. This is being done so as to ensure that no one goes in, no one comes out uh, till the uh, shooter who was involved in the firing incident is apprehended. Now what we are getting to know from the sources within the Punjab police that the yes. manhunt is on and the shooter yes. uh, uh, which they believe could be one or two were in the civils and they are now trying to nab them out. Yes. In fact, uh, Gursimran, we are putting out those details uh, sources in the army are uh, also telling Republic that uh, the Patinda shooter has now been arrested and uh, he is also being questioned is what we are hearing. He's been nabbed after nine hours. The shooter who's an army jawan has been nabbed after nine hours and he is now being questioned by officials. As we are understanding that uh, it is a matter of an internal fight that was also indicated earlier on and now the shooter has been nabbed. Uh, continue talking to us Gur Simran, what more are you picking up on this? See, this is what the sources in the Indian Army are indicating that the person who was involved in the uh, firing incident has been apprehended and the interrogation is going on. See, there are many more things to it that will come out at a later stage. Uh, right now, we are reporting from outside the Bhatinda military station. This is the uh, uh, outside the Bhatinda military station, the Chetak core of the Indian Army where the incident has been reported today morning at around 4.35. It was the exact time when this incident was reported. And now we are getting to know from the sources within the Indian Army that the shooter has been apprehended by the Indian Army and the investigation is going on. See, uh, this will take time because there are many more things that will come into fore during investigation. What has transpired? Uh, see, the INSAS rifle along with the 28 cartridges that were, went missing two days back and now the incident taking place. Uh, whether th uh, these two incidents are interconnected, these are the things that has to be uh, looked into by the authorities uh, that are investigating inside the military station here in the Batinda. And very important to mention that uh, since this was uh, one of the uh, uh, strategically important areas, uh, this kind of incident is being taken seriously very seriously by the top brass of the Indian Army Indian Army chief is kept into loop the, by the commanders are regularly briefing him about the developments that are taking place uh, good uh, good stay on with us uh, Amandeep is also with us on the broadcast and Amandeep how initial reports suggested that uh, there was an internal issue uh, a rifle with ammunition had been missing since the last two days also, there is thick plantation in some of the areas uh, inside the military station. So, that is also now being searched uh, as it is a joint operation being carried out uh, by the Punjab police and the Indian Army. Of course, uh, no civilian movement that is allowed throughout this stretch. Uh, uh, detail that for us, please. Well, absolutely, Swesha. No civilian movement has been allowed nearby the uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, military station of Bathinda. And in fact, you can see they are, the barricades and the security is still put in place. Since uh, 4.30 a.m. in the morning till now, it has been completely cordoned. And in fact, so far, there is no official information that anybody has been detained. And even there is no official confirmation from the Punjab police or Indian Army to us so far that anybody has detained or questioned. But yes, the uh, cordon and search operation is still underway. The teams of Punjab police are inside uh, the Bathinda military station and in fact the in fact the forensic teams are still inside just because the entire incident has been briefed to Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh with all the details and later a detailed statement will also be released and you, you can see the, uh, where the incident has taken place the police car is coming out the police vehicle is coming out which has went earlier inside to, uh, inside the military station and you can see that only police vehicles are allowed the movement of police vehicles 
vehicles and army vehicles are allowed at this area and you can see the visuals that now they are coming out after uh, uh, after hours of the investigation inside the military police station and the uh, hey you can see only two cops along with the, uh, along with the one person in a civil dress they have just came out from inside earlier at around 10 o'clock they have went inside along with the forensic teams for the technical investigation as well just because now punjab police is equally providing the assistance to indian army regarding the investigation cordon and search operation underway one in sas rifle along with 28 rounds are still missing and in fact there is no official confirmation that either anybody has been detained taken into custody or the in sas has been recovered or the live rounds has been recovered the of the missing uh, of the missing ammunition there is no official confirmation but yes the fact is that incident reported at 4:35 am in the morning and uh, uh, death of four uh, jawans from artillery unit at artillery mess as well the uh, terror angle has been completely ruled out one in sas 28 live rounds has been missing into the incident and even cordon and search operation is still underway punjab police is assisting indian army into this entire operation the parallel investigation is being launched indian army has uh, taken over the entire situation qrt teams are on their job since morning so these are the facts that has that has to be revealed and in fact that It has to be reported so far, and even cutting down to the terror angle is a but one of the major thing. Now everything is under the control of Indian Army, and investigation has been launched by them also. Yes, Swisha. Ah, uh, right. Amandeep, stay on with us. Shivangi is also joining us from the newsroom with more details because uh, Shivangi, uh, now uh, uh, a very detailed investigation will be carried out uh, into who was responsible. and uh, most importantly who is to be held accountable when it comes to that uh, missing rifle with ammunition and uh, uh, why it was not reported uh, who is responsible for this lapse so all this now will be looked at in great detail until a report uh, is also so, uh, sought right and uh, the the big the big update coming in this is this is source based information in fact uh, uh, you know the we were just waiting for a confirmation on this even though we received information a, sh a long time back that th this uh, jawan this attacker has has been uh, was cornered in the officers mess and he is right now in custody so that is a big uh, breaking that we have गुरदीप जी क्या जानकारी अभी क्या शाम जी हाँ 
रिसीव हुई है सर डेड बॉडीज के अंदर ही अभी उनका पोस्टमार्टम करवाने के लिए आप लेके आए उनका पोस्टमार्टम होगा मैं पूछ रहा हूं एसबीआर एसपी साहब आ रहे हैं दस मिनट एसपी साहब आ रहे हैं आ रहे 15 मिनट जा रहे हैं यू कैन लिसन इधर आओ इधर आओ इधर आओ इधर आओ इधर आओ सर वी आर साइड that now punjab police have no such information to reveal uh, in this entire incident and in fact the spd rank officer will brief what all is happening inside they no person has been detained so far this is the confirmation from the sho of kent police station that no uh, rifle has been recovered which is missing since two days but yes the police have the information regarding the missing rifle but so far it has not been uh, recovered and even there is no such detention or any arrest by the punjab police or the indian army into this entire operation this confirmation has given by the sho uh, of kent police station which is this is briefing and even the senior police officials are reaching on the ground and even the, so far they have not any lodged any fir that means that cordon and search operation is still underway in, inside the military station and even the police officials are still inside indian army qr teams are still inside they are still working on the leads and in fact they are trying to conclude this entire operation yes All right, uh, Amandeep. Let me also bring in Gursimran because uh, Gursimran, uh, for clear reasons, uh, uh, the investigating team is being extremely tight-lipped. Uh, this is uh, uh, very, very secret information that will obviously be put out after a lot of sanitization uh, and uh, uh, correctly ascertaining all the details. Uh, so, as of now, we can safely understand that the entire area has been cordoned off. Uh, investigation is underway to what had happened but uh, no confirmation really on whether anyone has been nabbed or the uh, sequence of events of what had happened at 4:30 this morning uh, so still a while until we receive an official statement on that and uh, then know for a fact to how it happened see yes so the indian army will it will be only the indian army that will be coming out with the statement uh, as and when they will be revealing that the shooter has been apprehended and the further details that following the case right now we are outside the uh, bathinda military station this is uh, the other side this is the bathinda military station is the headquarter of the chita core of the indian army and we are at the raina dwar where you will find that all the entry and the exit points have been barred no one is allowed to move in or outside the military station this has been done after the incident that has been reported today morning at around 435 when the shooting incident was reported uh, a repeated uh, sound of uh, uh, firing was heard after which uh, within 3 minutes the qrt of the indian army they reached the, that very spot where the incident has taken place uh, and soon after uh, that the entire area was cordoned in if sir jivan can show you on that side you will find that the civilians uh, those who have some work uh, those who are working inside they have been halted all the schools and the offices that are inside the bathinda military station they to have been the work has been suspended for today even some of the vehicles of the indian army that were said to go inside uh, that were carrying carrying some of the loads of the indian army they too have been halted outside the military station uh, you will find that the uh, there are a series of uh, almost 5 to 6 vehicles of the indian army that have been parked here because there is no permission for these vehicles as well to go inside see uh, uh, this uh, entire area has been sealed no one is allowed to enter no one is allowed to move outside except few officers see senior officers of the indian army as well as the officers from the punjab police who are part of the investigation team and also the forensic experts that is all they are allowing to go inside even this gate from this gate there has not been a single entry since morning we are told and uh, those who are coming here how are being clearly told that uh, due to some incident that has taken place no one will be allowed to enter except those having the special permissions from inside from the top brass who are here inside the chetak core of the indian army all right uh, absolutely but uh, uh, one thing that the punjab police is confirming gursimran that uh, the rifle was missing uh, for the last two days so clearly we understand that there will be a detailed investigation into this uh, rifle along with the ammunition that was missing uh, due process uh, that was not followed and uh, on whose part uh, was this lapse uh, uh, a detailed report will be submitted clearly
with that, we shift our focus as uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be flagging off Ajmer Delhi Kant Bande Bharat Express, which is the world's first semi-high speed passenger train on high-rise overhead electric territory via video conferencing. This will happen today. Take a look at the details. In a big boost towards connectivity, Rajasthan got its first Vande Bharat Express. The inaugural train will run between Joypur and Delhi Kant railway stations. The regular service of this Vande Bharat Express will start from April 13th and will operate between Ajmer and Delhi Kant with stops at Jaipur, Alwar and Gurgaon. While flagging of the train, Prime Minister Modi said that Vande Bharat Express enriches the spirit of India first, always first. माँ भारती की वंदना करने वाली राजस्थान की धरती को आज पहली वंदे भारत ट्रेन मिल रही है दिल्ली कैंट अजमेर वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस से जयपुर दिल्ली आना जाना और आसान हो जाएगा ये ट्रेन राजस्थान की टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री को भी बहुत मदद करेगी तीर्थराज पुष्कर हो या फिर अजमेर शरीफ आस्था के ऐसे महत्वपूर्ण स्थलों तक पहुंचने में भी अब श्रद्धालुओं को ज्यादा आसानी होगी वंदे भारत एक्सप्रेस विल कवर द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दिल्ली कैंट एंड अजमेर इन फाइव आवर्स एंड फिफ्टीन मिनट the present fastest train on the same route shatabdi express takes 6 hours 15 minutes the launch came a week after prime minister modi flagged off a one day bharat express on the bhopal new delhi route the train is equipped with state of the art passenger amenities providing a faster more comfortable and more convenient travel experience Bureau Report, Republic TV. And we cut across to more breaking news coming in. BJP Karnataka election meeting that was underway at uh, Amit Shah's residence. It has just concluded. Those are the details we are picking up. Now, according to sources, the meeting that took place against the backdrop of displeasure by several Karnataka leaders after the first list of BJP candidates was out. The meeting was underway at Amit Shah's residence. It has just concluded. Also, a part of that meeting were BJP National President J.P. Nadda, B.L. Santosh, Karnataka in charge Arun Singh and Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan. Harsha is joining us live on the broadcast to give us more details. Uh, Harsha, what more are you picking up uh, from uh, what has been decided in this meeting? Because we do understand that several leaders are unhappy after the first list was out and uh, the top leadership now deciding on what the next course of action will be. Another meeting that is expected at 4 p.m. Give us further details. Exactly, Swesha. Now we are learning is that the uh, meeting uh, which went on at the residence of Amish Shah, Home Minister of Karnataka. Uh, the, the, regarding the Karnataka elections, the, the meeting has ended. The meeting got over. These are the visuals from outside the residence of Home Minister Amish Shah. As you see, the leaders who are related with the Karnataka election, the senior BJP leaders like Mansukh Mandavia, Dharmendra Pradhan, Arun Singh, B.L. Santosh, J.P. Nadda, all has all have left from the residence of Amish Shah. Today, back to back, there are two meetings regarding Karnataka. Karnataka elections in the national capital. One has just ended here at Amit Shah's residence, and another one will be at the residence of J.P. Nadda at around 4 o'clock, where the upset and the leader Jagdish Shetar, who is the former CM of Karnataka, and he is very upset with the party for asking him to step down. And this time, the party not giving ticket to Jagdish Shetar. Jagdish Shetar was summoned to the national capital, and today, the today party president J.P. Nadda is going to meet Jagdish Shetar, Lakshman Sevar. 
Modi and Ishwara Padis. All three leaders have been summoned to national capital and have been asked to meet the central leadership in the national com in the, uh, in the uh, national capital. And around 4 to 4:30 p.m. in the evening, the meeting of Jagdish Shetty will take place with J.P. Nadda because yesterday what we saw that the candidates, the list of 1.189 candidate candidates was released from the BJP party. The remaining candidates, who will be the remaining candidates, is what the discussion has taken place at the residence of Amit Shah. And what has been told, uh, what our sources are, are telling through the co-in-charge, the Karnataka right, right, co-in-charge, right. what he has told us is that in a coming, uh, in coming two to three days, the second list of BJP will also come. So the remaining candidates, who will be the remaining yes, candidates? Yes, absolutely. And on that three... note, Harsha, I also want to bring in Prajwal quickly because uh, Prajwal, clearly the decisions made in New Delhi will have uh, a huge bearing on what happens in Karnataka and uh, which is why we see back-to-back -back meetings that are happening because uh, the decisions have to be made very carefully, especially after the outcome of uh, the first list that is out. Two to three days, Harsha is also saying that the next list will be out. But uh, what's exactly happening on the ground? Uh, you know, now, uh, Suyesha, we also get to understand that apart from Jagdish Shetter, two other leaders, KS Ishwarapa as well as Lakshman Savadi were summoned. But then in a huge setback for the BJP, uh, Lakshman Savadi, who is uh, the Lingayat uh, strongman from Athani, has already announced uh, his decision that uh, he will be resigning from the BJP party as well and he will think about his next course of action and he will announce as to which other party that uh, he will be joining and contesting from as well. So in all likely possibilities, uh, Lakshman Savadi is hinting that he will be joining the Congress now, even though there has been no sort of official confirmation from him. But uh, he's uh, exactly gone ahead and confirmed, stating that he will be resigning from the BJP party and the party will have to forgive him and mainly it is BS Yadurapa too. So Lakshman Savadi coming to the national capital and meeting the BJP national president JP Nadda has uh, now completely been ruled out. But on the other hand now, what will be KS Ishwarapa's next move is also something that is eagerly being watched uh, by his opponents uh, and uh, also by the BJP party themselves because somewhere now KS Ishwarappa is stating that uh, his son should be getting a ticket from uh, Shimoga as well and he already placed this demand so with uh, the BJP high command as well and also the state leadership too but will he be given a ticket is something which needs to be pointed out because now the opposition is also slamming the BJP party stating that uh, even though the fathers have retired the sons have been called into the party as well so therefore the BJP party is under tremendous pressure too and uh, mainly in Hubali Central we are also also seeing a lot of protests which had broken out since uh, last afternoon and it has continued and it has been over 24 hours now. So all eyes on those crucial meeting with uh, Jagdish Shetter and JP Nadda as to what might happen and pertaining to the second list of uh, the remaining 35 candidates which will have to be announced in all likelihood. Uh, Chief Minister Basraj Bomai earlier while right. speaking this morning has hinted out that uh, the right. next list, uh, the second list uh, will be out tomorrow as well. So we'll have to keep a close eye on that as well, Suyesha. All right. Oh yes, absolutely. And keeping a very close watch on it uh, for the moment, Prajbal and Harsha, thank you for joining us. We'll keep coming back to you for further updates. But uh, for now, we have to slip into a short commercial break and a quick check of the big stories we're tracking for you this afternoon as amidst the ongoing crisis in Rajasthan, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has hid out at the Gehlot government. Also, NCP leader Ajit Pawar will be meeting with Eknath Shinde today. What will eventually come out of that meeting? We'll keep you updated for the moment. A short break. Your friend Mamta Banerjee, she says that you uh, don't consult, nahi karte. like in, on disinvestment, opposition should have been consulted. We don't have to think about it. In the world, Republic Bharat and Republic TV are both in the country. They all have to travel on the train. Now we want that the train will not be on the train of English, SUFF, ER, it will not be on the train of English. It will be on the train of English.
दशकों पुरानी समस्याओं का समाधान होते हुए आज देश अपनी आंखों के सामने देख रहा है और कभी कभी लोग कह भी रहे हैं कि हमने सोचा नहीं था कि हम जीते जी ये देख पाएंगे ऐसा कई लोग कहते हैं और इसके दो प्रमुख कारण हैं पहला भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों का आत्मविश्वास जो कहता है यस इट इज इंडिया मोमेंट और दूसरा भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों की सोच जो कहती है नेशन फर्स्ट जूनियर वर्ल्ड चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा Is our wealth, and we are giving it away. How do you view that Fall- argument? Fallacious, absolutely wrong. Fundamentally, I think that if you think about the world, I believe that the world will have to move from an aggregator model to a distributor model. If I give you a fixed deposit locker, and you put your money, which is your data, in my locker. it doesn't become mine that i can take that money gamble on the stock market if i have gains i'll take it i'll still say i have given you back your 100 rupees that doesn't work right fundamentally your data is yours i can if i use it or monetize it in any way i have to transparently share with you the gains of that A very warm welcome. You're watching live and breaking with me, Raksha Mishra, and let's get started with what's making the top stories at this point in time. Firing at Badinda military station. Crack of dawn. Firing claims four lives. Initial probe rules out terror angle. Seven hours on. Search and rescue operations continue. Security beefed up across Batinda. <laughs> Defence Minister Rajnath Singh chairs topmost level meeting with NSA and MHA officials on Batinda firing. Complete chaos in Vadra Congress. Pilot in National Capital to meet Khadge. Kehlo to brief media shortly. After showdown over candidate list, BJP in huddle mode now. Dissenting Jagdish Shetar and Ishwara Pas summoned to Delhi. and in a fresh attempt at opposition unity nitish kumar meets khadge and rahul gandhi in the national capital aati kar rahe the abhi bhi chal raha hai nahi hum wo apni khud ki karvi khud kar rahe hain jo kuch jo sir depression kar rahe hain hum jo hamare police ki kaam tha wo wo hamara kaam kar rahe hain क्या कोई अरेस्ट हुआ क्या कोई डिटेन हुआ कोई जी नहीं अभी जी नहीं अंदर अभी, अभी कोई आदमी डिटेन हुआ सर एक सवाल है इनफैक्ट एस एच ओ ऑफ इंडियन आर्मी पुलिस स्टेशन कैंट हैज रिवील्ड दैट नो सच अरेस्ट हैज बीन मेड एंड इनफैक्ट गॉर्डन एंड सर्च ऑपरेशन वो स्टिल अंडर वे एट फाइव थर्टी ए एम इन द मॉर्निंग इंडियन आर्मी हैज इन्फॉर्म द पुलिस रिगार्डिंग द इंसिडेंट विद वीडियो जर्नलिस्ट right uh, so uh, no person has been detained so far this is the latest we're learning what other details have you learned uh, from the officials amandeep well rakshita the coordinate search operation 
cordon and search operation is still underway. Senior police officials are still uh, inside uh, Bathinda military station and in fact the operation is still underway. No persons has been detained and even the rifle that was missing since two days had not been recovered so far. The police was earlier intimated yesterday evening regarding the missing rifle in SAS uh, and uh, live rounds, 28 live rounds in fact. And even the police have launched their investigation outside the military, st uh, military station of Bathinda regarding the missing in SAS and even the, uh, um, the QRT teams has launched the operation inside. So the entire operation is still underway. So far they have not concluded it. That is the reason no official statement has came out so far and even the police has still remained tight-lipped regarding the operation what all has happened. But the police has confirmed that the entire investigation will be launched by the uh, police itself and the bodies uh, of the of the fatal people be, will be brought to the civil hospital Bathinda where the post-mortem of, uh, uh, post of the deceased will be conducted just because four Jawans died in this entire incident. In entire incident and those Jawans were belonged to artillery unit and this entire incident happened at artillery mess itself at 4.30 a.m. today morning and even so far there is no confirmation there is no information that how many people are involved and in fact how many has been arrested and detained and either the uh, INSAS rifle has been recovered or not and even uh, the entire incident has been detailed uh, to uh, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh with all the facts by the chief of army staff after taking the stock of the situation from the commanding officer of military station in Bathinda. But yes, the cordon and search operation is still underway. The INSAS rifle is still missing with 28 rounds and the four who have been died into, the, into this entire incident are still inside the military station just because the military hospitals is also inside the military station and in fact they they have been died in the firing incident so these are the facts that is still prevailing on the ground and even the uncertainty right, uh, is still suspended your thoughts, Amandi, we are joined by uh, gurusimran also who is there on ground zero uh, gurusimran what is the latest that you're picking up in the story In the civil hospital of uh, the Bathinda, where in the mortuary, the mortal remains of the four uh, uh, Jawans of the Indian Army, they are being brought in by the ambulances of the Punjab. Uh, of the uh, uh, these are the ambulances of the Indian Army that are going inside the mortuary, where the medical legal process will be carried out. Uh, you will find that uh, uh, some of the senior officials of the Indian Army, they too have arrived here a couple of minutes before the arrival of uh, these ambulances here at the uh, the. Uh, mortuary of uh, uh, civil hospital here in the uh, Bathinda and senior officials of the Punjab police have been deployed here as uh, the medical legal uh, all formalities have to be carried out by the Indian Army. See the senior officials of the Punjab police, they, they, they are also here, the officials of the Punjab police uh, and the Indian Army and also some more ambulances are arriving along with the QRTs of uh, the Indian Army here at the Bathinda. The incident that has unfolded at around 4.30, uh, 5 in the morning and now the uh, mortal remains of uh, the four uh, Jawans of the Indian Army from the artillery unit. They uh, are being brought here, here the post-mortem and the rest medical legal facility, uh, formalities will be carried out. So an unfortunate incident has unfolded. The combing and the search operations are on here uh, inside the military station mm -hmm. in Bathinda and here the officials of the Punjab police, they too are here to help them out in the medical legal facilities that will be done, uh, the all formalities that will be performed here in a short while from now. But an unfortunate incident has unfolded and now the search is on to nab the shooter or the shooters that were involved. The entire uh, uh, the Bathinda military station area, that entire area has been sealed by the Indian Army with the help of the Punjab police so as to ensure that the shooter can be nabbed at an earliest and we are showing you the visuals from the civil hospital right. this is mortuary uh, where the mortal remains of right. four uh, jawans of the indian army have been brought in yes all right all right thank you so much gursimran and amandi for joining us with all those details on the story we're cutting across live to a bjp press conference that is uh, happening right now डॉक्टर राजा नंदिनी और जो थे पुत्र पुत्रना 
ರತ್ನಾಕರ ಜಟ್ಟಿ ಮೆಂಬರ್ ಎಂತವರು ಮತ್ತೊಬ್ರು ರಮೇಶ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಸೆಕ್ರೆಟರಿ ಬ್ಲಾಕ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಭೈರಪ್ಪ ಜಿ ಕೆ ಎಕ್ಸ್ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಇಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಪಕ್ಷವನ್ನ ಸೇರ್ಪಡೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಜಾಯ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಜೆಪಿ ನಾವು so this is a huge uh, setback uh, for the uh, for the congress uh, because of the fact that kagod timappa was a former uh, speaker he was also a former minister under sidramayya's uh, governor governor uh, under sidramayya chief minister uh, between 2016 to 2018 where uh, he had uh, in fact served as uh, the muzrai minister and uh, also as the revenue minister too so this is a huge setback and uh, they are actively lobbying uh, for uh, ticket from uh, the sagara assembly constituency as well and now we need to deal as to whether aprupada rajakarni adanta samajavadi inneyulla shri kagod timappora magaladanta dr ranjini raja nandini ivaru ಇಂದು ಕಾಂಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಪಕ್ಷದ ಹಿಂದುಳಿದ ವರ್ಗದಿಂದ ಬಂದಿರುವ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾಜ ನಂದಿನಿ ಅವರು ವೃತ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ವೈದ್ಯರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸಾಮಾಜಿಕ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಂಚೂಣಿಯಲ್ಲಿದ್ದವರು and uh, she is so, also carrying out uh, several developmental programs in the shimoga district as well bala bandide and uh, bjp by the joining of dr rajanandini has uh, received uh, quite a huge strength uh, mainly in the shimoga district avara serpade inda nama abhyarthigalu ellaru sa gelodukke dodda ondu shaktiyanna avaru tumkottantagide now dr rajanandini joined the bjp ashok the bjp bjp across all the assembly constituency in the shimoga district madideve adhe rite shrimati raja nandini avaru krike tirtha 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 avaru idralli tennis tennis nalli ಅಂತಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ಪ್ಲೇಯರ್ ಅಂತಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ರತ್ನಾಕರ ಮನಗೂಡು ಮಾಜಿ ಜಿಲ್ಲಾ ಪಂಚಾಯತಿ ಸದಸ್ಯರು ಇವರೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಸಹ ಭಾರತೀಯ ಜನತಾ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಸೇರ್ತಾ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಮಗೊಂದು ಶಿವಮೊಗ್ಗ ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯಲ್ಲೇ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಬಂದಂತಾಗಿದೆ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರು ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಸೇರಿ ಪಕ್ಷಕ್ಕೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಸೇರ್ಪಡೆ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ we welcome this move of uh, leaders from various political parties joining hands with the bjp and joining the party ahead of the elections all right we have some breaking news coming in this coming in from the national capital there has been a bomb threat received by a school in new delhi this is the indian school in delhi's sadik nagar the name of the school is the indian school in sadik nagar received a bomb threat via email and as a precautionary measure the school has been vacated
bomb detection and disposal squad have been informed about the latest development and uh, in fact uh, delhi police uh, and bomb bomb detection uh, squad ha is there um, on in in the school and uh, this is uh, a school located in uh, delhi's sadik nagar the indian school received a bomb threat via an email and uh, as a precautionary measure the school has been vacated that is the latest we are getting in at this point in time and uh, this is the latest we are getting in the bomb disposal squad the bomb detection and disposal squad has been uh, informed uh, bomb disposal dog squad are at the spot this is uh, uh, the latest we are getting in and our uh, reporter on ground sahil is joining us for more on this sahil ab uh, is bare mein aap kya bata sakte hain bomb detection aur disposal squad jo hai wo uh, mauke pe pahunch chuki hai aur kya jankari aap hamare sath saajha kar sakte hain देखिए फिलहाल मैं अभी मौजूद हूँ इंडियन स्कूल के सामने आप तस्वीरों के माध्यम से दिखाना चाहो तो अभी भी बॉम्ब डिस्पोजल और महिला स्वाट कमांडो और पुट स्वाट कॉन्डो का जो एक दस्ता है वो अंदर की तरफ मौजूद है क्योंकि डीसीपी साउथ जिला अंदर मौजूद है बारीकी से पूरी स्कूल की तलाशी ली जा रही क्योंकि सुबह दस बज के उनचास मिनट पर जानकारी मिलती है कि स्कूल के अंदर जो है बम प्लांट किया गया ऐसा जो मेल है वो स्कूल प्रशासन को दिया जाता है जिसके बाद से ही पूरा स्कूल के अंदर जो हर कम मच जाता है लेकिन फिलहाल अभी की तस्वीरें दिखाना चाहूँ तो अभी भी बॉम्ब स्कॉड डॉग स्कॉड और स्वाट टीम जो है अंदर मौजूद है पूरी तरह सर्चिंग ऑपरेशन जो है वो स्कूल के अंदर किया जा रहा है हालांकि इस हेलो ठीक वी सीम टू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम विद दैट ऑडियो विद साहिल साहिल आप में आपको मेरी आवाज आ रही है जी डन 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 साहिल अगर आप मुझे सुन पा रहे हैं आप क्या बता सकते हैं कि उस वक्त कितने आ, कितने बच्चे जो थे कितने स्टूडेंट्स थे वो कितने मौजूद थे उस वक्त स्कूल में All right, there seems to be a problem with that audio connection with the Sahil. But uh, viewers, this is the latest we have got that the SWAT team has been called in. That's the latest on this bomb scare uh, at Delhi school story. A bomb scare, a bomb threat was received via email to Indian school in Delhi, Sadik Nagar, and. Uh, uh the as a precautionary measure of course the school was vacated the bomb detection disposal squad has been informed and they are on the site that is the latest we are getting on that story All right we're getting in some more updates and more breaking news coming in from Maharashtra yet another political turmoil it seems from Maharashtra some political churning taking place as Ajit Pawar has hit out at uh, the Congress party Ajit Pawar has uh, said that uh, if Congress has issues they should raise it with us that is they should raise it with the NCP he further goes on to ask that why does the Congress make media statements before speaking with us and a clear divide we can see here between the congress and the ncp right now ajit pawar they hitting out at maharashtra congress chief remember uh, ajit pawar is also scheduled to uh, uh, meet eknath shinde the maharashtra chief minister today and uh, we also have ajit pawar's reaction on camera let's take a listen in ते खर तर का काँग्रेस प्रदेशाध्यक्ष नेहमी अशा प्रकारची वक्तव्य करतात नेहमी आम्ही अनेकदा आम्हाला पण काही माहिती मिळते आणि ती वक्तव्य केल्यानंतर कारण नसताना आघाडीमध्ये महाविकास आघाडीमध्ये अंतर पडू शकतं पण त्या गोष्टी ह्याच्यापर्यंत म्हणजे चॅनलपर्यंत किंवा मीडियापर्यंत जायच्या ऐवजी त्यांनी जयंत पाटलांशी बोलावं माझ्याशी बोलावं उद्धव ठाकरे साहेबांशी बोलावं आदित्य ठाकरेंशी बोलावं ह्याच्यातनं मार्ग निघू शकतो ना कुठं काय झालं त्या काय टाळी एका बाजूनीच वाढत नाही त्याच्या संदर्भात अशा पद्धतीचे बातम्या आल्या की महाराष्ट्रामध्ये काम करणारा जो कार्यकर्ता त्या त्या पक्षाचा आहे तो पण संभ्रमामध्ये पडतो 
त्याच्यामुळे हे गोष्टी बंद केल्या पाहिजे ज्यावेळेस आमची महाविकास आघाडीची सभा होईल त्यावेळेस मी जरूर या गोष्टी तिथं मांडणार आहे एक मिनिट मला काँग्रेसच्या संदर्भातला अंतर्गत अंतर्गत जो काही प्रश्न आहे त्याबद्दल मी काही बोलू इच्छित नाही कारण तो त्यांचा पक्षाचा प्रश्न आहे All right that was Ajit Pawar's reaction there and he clearly is miffed with the Congress party and my colleague Sandeep is joining us for more on this Sandeep we heard what Ajit Pawar had to say is clearly saying that the Congress should speak with the NCP before giving any statement out there this of course coming in right ahead when he meets uh, Eknath Shinde also today I think on Congress party and have uh, asked them not to speak uh, in media if they have any kind of uh, issues. Uh, they should in fact discuss within uh, the Vaha Vikas Agadi and in fact he said that uh, soon uh, there would be a meeting in upcoming days of Vaha Vikas Agadi and uh, they, he will in fact raise this issue. But apart from that, there are also, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, political things that are happening behind the curtains. Remember, uh, uh, Ajit Pawar, uh, there's a news that Ajit Pawar is in fact, uh, in fact, speculations are there that Ajit Pawar is in touch with uh, BJP and in fact, uh, following which uh, he had the set uh, of meeting out here at the Yadi uh, guest house. But NCP's official uh, message that what we've been told is that uh, he's going to meet uh, for unseasonal trains uh, to Maharashtra Chief Minister and uh, uh, Devendra Pandavis, the Deputy Chief Minister. But there are a lot of things, in fact, happening behind uh, doors. And in fact, if you see, if you see yesterday, Uddhav Thakre ultimately went on to Silver Oak to meet NCP Chief Sharad Pawar. And in fact, today, Sharad Pawar made it clear that he had some kind of differences and it is necessary mm. to clear all the doubts in uh, uh, any kind of a lie. So definitely there is something cooking out here, but at this point of time, it will be very much early to speak anything else. No one from NCP is coming out and in fact speaking over whether they will be going uh, uh, to uh, going back to uh, uh, BJP or switching uh, the alliance off from Mahavika Sajadi. Right, Sandeep, as you rightly pointed out, there, is, there have been reactions coming in from uh, uh, his uh, uncle and supremo of uh, the NCP, uh, Sharad Pawar, as well. And that has not, of course, been very uh, favourable. The comments that coming in uh, have been coming in, not very favourable for the Congress party. And now we have Ajit Pawar, who has uh, openly hit out at uh, the uh, Congress chief there in Maharashtra. This, of course, uh, hints and, uh, in fact, kind of, we see that it uh, indic indicates the uh, reports of uh, rift and a major political churn yet again in Maharashtra politics. As uh, you rightly mentioned, there could be... Uh, see, Sarat Pawar is someone who is very much unpredictable at this point of time and he has uh, a, a history of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 strategies he had made in the past. So definitely it is very much difficult to predict Sarat Pawar's move on one end speaks about the right to the position uh, and on another hand he has banned uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and in fact the BJP government on the issue of Adani. Remember and recently uh, if you go through over the statement that was made in the past over Veer Savarkar he said that Veer Savarkar's sacrifices cannot be uh, in fact uh, uh, cannot be unseen in fact. So definitely a such kind of statement at, the, at this point mm. of time when uh, just Lok Sabha election is just uh, a year away, uh, it cannot be ruled out that NCP is in fact not in touch with BJP. And in fact, uh, we had confirmation from BJP leaders that yes, there are several opposition leaders who are in touch with BJP. And in fact, uh, they will disclose the cards just before the Lok Sabha election. Right, Sandeep, of course, uh, the differences are out in the open and Ajit Pawar has openly hit out there and uh, admitted that there are differences within the Mahavikas Agari there and uh, Sharad Pawar, this NCP Supremo, has uh, time and again in the past few days uh, have uh, pointed out and made his uh, uh, you know, statements and his position clear which has not been really uh, in concurrence with uh, the uh, agenda or 
uh, the stand of the Congress party there and that's why we are seeing this uh, such statements coming in right ahead of Ajit Pawar's uh, uh, scheduled meeting with uh, Eknar Shinde, the Maharashtra chief minister. This of course becomes very interesting as far as Maharashtra politics is concerned. Uh, uh, key Ajit Pawar and Shinde meeting is uh, uh, coming up, uh, viewers. Uh, we will, of course, uh, uh, you know, keeping an eye out of keeping an eye on that. Also, Ajit. I see a meeting key or both cheese. हम चर्चे में लाए और एक हम सभी ने मिलके तय किया कि सभी पार्टियों को एक जुट करना और एक होकर आगे जो चुनाव आएंगे उस चुनाव में एक जुट दिखाकर लड़ना तो ये हमारा निर्णय हुआ है और हम सभी मिलके उसी रास्ते पे काम करेंगे और नीतीश जी राहुल साहब तेजस्वी जी और ललन सिंह जी सभी हमारे जो नेता गण यहाँ बैठे हैं उसी लाइन पे हम काम करेंगे और हम पूरा इसमें इस साधने की पूरी कोशिश कर रहे हैं थैंक यू अभी तो बात हम करके अभी काफी देर बहुत ही हम लोगों ने चर्चा कर ली और जो आपको बताया अभी तो इन्होंने जानकारी दे ही दी है कि अधिक से अधिक पार्टियों को पूरे देश में एक जुट करने का प्रयास कर और उसके लिए हम लोग अपना कोशिश करेंगे सब लोग एग्री करेंगे वो सब लोग बैठेंगे और एक साथ हम लोग आगे का काम करेंगे मिलकर के चलेंगे ये बात तय हो गई है और इन सब चीज़ों को लेकर के ये भी कई लोगों से बातचीत हुई है हम लोगों की बातचीत हम लोग फिर एक बार आज जो बात हो गई है अंतिम तौर पर बात हो गई है उसी के आधार पर फिर हम लोग कर लेंगे और जितने लोग एग्री करेंगे तो सब लोगों को फिर हम लोग बैठ करके आपस में आगे का निर्णय तय करेंगे अभी कितने तो एक साथ एक साथ आप आप जिस दिन बैठेंगे ना एक साथ उस दिन जानिएगा बहुत ज्यादा लोग इकट्ठा हो एक मिनट प्लीज जो अरे निकाल जो खारगे जी ने कहा नीतीश जी ने कहा कि ऑपोजिशन को एक करने में एक बहुत ऐतिहासिक कदम लिया गया है आपने सवाल पूछा कितने ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज को इकट्ठा करना है देखिए ये एक प्रोसेस है और ऑपोजिशन का जो देश के लिए विजन है उसको हम डेवलप करेंगे और जितनी भी पार्टियां हमारे साथ चलेंगी उनको हम सबको एक साथ लेकर जो देश में आइडियोलॉजिकल लड़ाई चल रही है विचारधारा की लड़ाई चल रही है उसको लड़ेंगे जो इंस्टीट्यूशंस पर आक्रमण हो रहा है जो देश पर आक्रमण हो रहा है उसके खिलाफ हम सब एक साथ मिलकर खड़े होंगे और एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण कदम उठा के All right.
that was uh, Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi and uh, Nitish Kumar right after their meeting and uh, Malikarjun Kharge, the Congress President said that uh, in this meeting they decided that they will unite and fight together in this election and Nitish Kumar on the other hand he said that this was the last stage of talks and they will work together from now on as they gear up for the 2024 national elections and also uh, Rahul Gandhi says that it is historic that the whole opposition is together that's what he says about it and says that they will develop opposition's vision for the country and will fight the ideological fight together. That's, that's what the three leaders who met today at Malikarjun Kharge's residence in New Delhi had to say. These are inside visuals of that meeting. Nitish Kumar, as you can see in this uh, video there, right uh, from inside Malikarjun Kharge's uh, residence where this meeting was under via Wildmark. Rahul Gandhi, Malikarjun Kharge, Nitish Kumar, Tejasvi Yadav, all present there and several other leaders from several other parties uh, uh, talking and uh, in a huddle there for the 2024 elections. Uh, this is, remember, yet another attempt by the opposition parties to weave a new opposition front right before the general elections. We have seen Nitish Kumar making statements uh, before in the past about uh, how he is ready to take on the BJP for the next elections and now we see that uh, a meeting was held with uh, Malik Arjun Kharge and, it, and um, my colleague uh, Shivangi is joining us for more in this. Shivangi, Nitish Kumar there is being seen who has uh, time and again projected himself as the prime ministerial candidate now seems to be posing or posturing as a bridge between the several uh, opposition parties and the Congress. Right, right. So, so visuals coming in right now, uh, Rakshita, of uh, the Nitish Karge meeting, which is taking place, which took place some time back, and the press conference also, we just saw that happen there uh, with Rahul Gandhi also present, uh, Nitish Kumar also present, uh, where they are making one more attempt at uh, opposition uh, unity. That's what they're trying to project, even though there have been so many reports coming in of uh, uh, divisions among the opposition. And as reports have been coming in of divisions uh, in the opposition, uh, we are seeing that uh, a kind of a meeting has taken place uh, where, where uh, we see Rahul Gandhi, Nitish Kumar, and Malik Kuchan Karge uh, holding a press conference talking about opposition unity and fighting together, fighting together. Once again, Rahul Gandhi speaking about uh, the central government using uh, agencies to target opposition leaders. So that is one more thing, one more point coming out from that press briefing viewers. So, so uh, this is a very big, significant uh, meeting as well because uh, 2024 Lok Sabha polls are not too far away. Let's go straight to Harsha who's joining us. Harsha, take our viewers through uh, what really happened. Uh, Nitish Kharge meeting just took place a short while back. Uh, and uh, Nitish saying the opposition united against the BJP, even though uh, this coming in, as many reports have also come in, that there, there is some kind of a division uh, in the opposition itself. But Rahul, Nitish uh, putting together a united front, that's what they seem to be projecting at this point of time. Exactly. Now, what we have to see is that the entire parliament session, we also saw that the opposition parties were united. Whatever demand, whatever demand they raised in the parliament, but all opposition parties getting in together, be it NCP, DMK, TMC, Samajwadi Party, uh, Nitish Kumar's party, all the parties coming together. But today, what we saw is that Nitish Kumar came to national capital. He had a meeting at the residence of Malikarjun Kharge, where Rahul Gandhi, Lallan Singh, uh, Manoj Jha, the uh, state president of JDU Nitish Kumar Malikarjun Kharge were present there and what Malikarjun Kharge has actually given a statement is that before 2024 we all opposition are united we will fight against the ideology of the ruling party but this is very worrisome for the opposition party right now because the Congress oldest ally NCP's Sharad Pawar has already given a statement that there are some differences in Maharashtra and Mahavikas Agadi Dal so that means that there is some 
ideology difference in the opposition party there are many parties which were not today in the meeting nitish kumar was was called and the entire meeting happened with the congress party because nitish kumar last year also uh, gave a statement where he said that all opposition should come united and he somewhere hinted at the pm candidate from the side of opposition opposition party being himself but this time the meeting which happened went on for more than one and a half hours where rahul gandhi also stated that we will try and uh, and hold talks with other opposition parties as well so that we can get aligned more opposition parties together and fight the uh, ideology of the ruling party bjp but this is a very difficult task for rahul gandhi for congress party because in the entire parliament session what we saw that there was some clash of thoughts between tmc and congress in certain issue there was clash of thoughts in on the veer savarkar issue between ncp and the congress party so somewhere their ideology don't align together right now there is divided opposition and before the divided opposition there is a huge infighting in the congress party in itself we see that the huge numbers of congress leaders leaving the party and joining bhartiya janata party right now the current situation in rajasthan resurgent pilot versus ashok gehlot so there's a already infighting in the congress party in itself and right now talking about the unity in the opposition congress needs to first of all work in its own party this is what the political gurus in national capital are stating about now this meeting went on for more than one and a half hour nitish kumar is on a three days visit to national capital he will be meeting other opposition party leader as well so we have to wait and watch exactly what comes up after this strategy meet which congress leaders had with nitish kumar and his party back to you right right and uh, harsha keep giving us all the details so we are seeing manikaj and kharge saying that we are united against the bjp uh, rahul gandhi also saying the same thing now remember elections are not too far away 2024 elections not too far away let's once again hear what uh, manikaj and kharge had to say in that press briefing yahan par rahul ji और हमारे बिहार के चीफ मिनिस्टर नीतीश जी तेजस्वी जी और सारे पार्टी के नेतागण और दोस्तों हम यहाँ पर एक ऐसी ऐतिहासिक मीटिंग की और All right uh, so Ajit Pawar has now hit out at a Maharashtra Congress chief saying if Congress has issues they should raise it with us further asking why does Congress make media statements before speaking with us so this is this is uh, the statement coming out and very soon very soon we know that Ajit Pawar uh, will be meeting the Maharashtra CM Ek Nath Shinde just before that we are seeing that Ajit Pawar had has hit out at the Vadra Congress Uh, in fact a lot of a lot of details and reports coming in about ajit pawar's meeting with ekna shinde uh, now this is a this is a story which i have been tracking very very closely from maharashtra because ajit pawar has hit out as a maharashtra congress chief saying if congress has issues they should raise it with us further asking what does congress why does the congress make media statements before speaking with us so uh, differences are coming out in the open within the mba government there and this also this statement of ajit pawar coming just before that uh, meeting that ajit pawar will have with eknath shinde let's go ahead and play out the reactions uh, and let's once again hear what ajit pawar had to say ते खर तर का काँग्रेसचे प्रदेशाध्यक्ष नेहमी अशा प्रकारची वक्तव्य करतात नेहमी आम्ही अनेकदा आम्हाला पण काही माहिती मिळते आणि ती वक्तव्य केल्यानंतर कारण नसताना आघाडीमध्ये महाविकास आघाडीमध्ये अंतर पडू शकतं पण त्या गोष्टी ह्याच्यापर्यंत म्हणजे चॅनलपर्यंत किंवा मीडियापर्यंत जायच्या ऐवजी त्यांनी जयंत पाटलांशी बोलावं माझ्याशी बोलावं उद्धव ठाकरे साहेबांशी बोलावं आदित्य ठाकरेंशी बोलावं ह्याच्यातनं मार्ग निघू शकतो ना 
कुठं काय झालं त्याच्या काय टाळी एका बाजूनीच वाढत नाही त्याच्या संदर्भात अशा पद्धतीचे बातम्या आल्या की महाराष्ट्रामध्ये काम करणारा जो कार्यकर्ता त्या त्या पक्षाचा आहे तो पण संभ्रमामध्ये पडतो त्याच्यामुळे हे गोष्टी बंद केल्या पाहिजे ज्यावेळेस आमची महाविकास आघाडीची सभा होईल त्यावेळेस मी जरूर या गोष्टी तिथं मांडणार एक मिनिट मला काँग्रेसच्या संदर्भातला अंतर्गत अंतर्गत जो काही प्रश्न आहे त्याबद्दल मी काही बोलू इच्छित नाही कारण तो त्यांचा पक्षाचा प्रश्न आहे All right uh, so very soon you'll be seeing that uh, the Maharashtra NCP leader Ajit Pawar will be meeting CM Ekna Shinde and Deputy CM Devendra Fadnavis uh, to discuss compensation to farmers who have suffered loss due to unseasonal rains in the state uh, so just before that meeting we're seeing Ajit Pawar hitting out hitting out at the Congress and uh, this is coming in at the back of uh, controversies remember that Ajit Pawar back Sharad Pawar's a statement and comments on the joint pilot parliamentary committee on the adani issue and uh, this has given to a lot of division and differences which are coming out in the mba government so in a way you can see that this statement also uh, gives gives out a hint that there are differences out in the open in the mba government viewers let's go to alisha who's joining us live alisha take a viewers through what we can expect next because this statement has come out just before that crucial meet that ajit pawar will have with the maharashtra cm ekna shinde well yes shivangi in some time from now where there will be a meeting between uh, uh, maharashtra chief minister ekna shinde deputy chief minister devendra fadnavis and uh, ajit pawar while uh, before this meeting there was a statement uh, from ajit pawar who mentioned that uh, this uh, meeting is supposed to uh, over the compensation to the farmers who have uh, uh, suffered a loss during the uh, due to unseasonal rain which is why been a uh, leader of opposition party so he has to be there uh, in the meeting and need to discuss uh, some of those issue farmers issues to the chief minister and deputy chief minister but yes uh, the back back to back statement whether it is coming from ajit pawar or whether it is sharad pawar because even sharad pawar has mentioned that uh, there will be there could be some differences is mahavikas agadi but uh, it will be about the three parties uh, uh, they will look into it and there was some of the meetings that is going to happen but uh, it is very important to see what will what will be the outcome that is going to come in the meeting that is going to happen in sayadri where uh, rather the fact they are going to discuss about uh, uh, the farmers issues and we, uh, as well but uh, the speculation over going because it uh, it started with the uh, 4th and 5th april we don't know the exact exact timing but uh, the meeting that happened uh, where ajit pawar and the senior ncp leaders were present in their meeting and there was some of the discussion as all of sudden where ajit pawar has cancelled all his uh, meeting that was scheduled for the next two days and then he had a meeting with someone uh, in an undisclosed location and uh, of course uh, there are some of the even speculation and the statement even that we have been seeing whether it is on adani or whether it is on evm they have been completely giving a support to the bj and saying that uh, it is up to the congress that uh, they have to uh, take a proper stand uh, and uh, also we even heard on adani as well but uh, uh, we'll see what will be the real outcome of the meeting that is because all eyes on the meeting that is going to be commenced as chief minister and deputy chief minister has already reached sayadri and uh, any time from now when ajit pawar will also reach right and right uh, you know the big question right now is is that what will happen next it's a very major and big statement from ajit pawar as well and the reason alisha if you could help our viewers understand uh, this meeting of course this meeting is on the farmer issue but pawar just before that meeting is admitted to differences which are out in the open with with the mba especially it all started with sharad pawar making that statement and uh, about the adani issue about the J jpc probe so after that we are seeing ajit pawar taking his side after that he is saying that he he is uh, he is uh, uh, not happy with with the way the congress is uh, doing things there and now the meeting next
Well, yes, sir, because here is the Sharad Pawar who already mentioned that yes, there are differences at Mahavika Sagadi and the same question one even asked to Ajit Pawar. But Ajit Pawar said that uh, the comment that has been given by the senior that is uh, Sharad Pawar, so he don't want to comment on that. But uh, moreover, Ajit Pawar has also hit out at the Congress because Nana Patole who has given a statement earlier where now the Ajit Pawar is clearly mentioning that I don't want to get into the internal matters, internal fight of the Congress, but uh, uh, the differences that has been emerge in the Mahavika Sagadi because there has also we know that right after all the speculation it was yesterday when Uddhav Thakre and Sanjay Raut who went to Silver Oak and they met Sharad Pawar the meeting that happened for around one and a half hours that meeting lasted for one and a half hours and no one is actually speaking about it well yes uh, uh, Sanjay Raut has mentioned that it is something a courtesy meet but in the late night we have been seeing that uh, uh, this uh, Uddhav Thakre and Sanjay South all of a sudden has uh, reached uh, Silver Oak where they met, uh, they met uh, uh, Sharad Pawar and the meeting that lasted uh, for uh, more than an hour. So it is very important. There is something been happening and some discussion been happening. But uh, the clear uh, hint that has been given by BJP because uh, while speaking to Republic where the BJP, whether it is MLC or whether it is uh, a cabinet minister who mentioned that there are some BJP activities that is ongoing in Maharashtra well it is very immature to name those leaders who, who they are touch with and uh, but uh, there could be changes some massive changes that is going to be come forward before the people uh, just before the Lok Sabha so there are some opposition leaders party uh, party leaders uh, who are in touch with BJP and they are likely to join BJP is what uh, BJP has claimed so we are been seeing many of the changes and all of a sudden uh, this meeting that has been closed door meeting uh, where uh, NCP has been happening with uh, where uh, NCP has been having this uh, closed door meeting and uh, even we heard the statement from uh, Congress Chief Anana Patole while he says that uh, they are ready with the plan B and all this information has also been given uh, to the high command uh, that uh, the message has been conveyed to high command in Delhi is uh, what uh, Nana Patole has said but uh, yes uh, all eyes on this uh, meeting as well uh, where uh, Ajit Pawar uh, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and uh, Deputy Chief Minister Devinda Fadnavis is going to have a meeting. Right, Alisha, thank you for getting us all the details. So, Alisha, getting us top details right now. So, just ahead of the Ajit Pawar Shinde meeting, we're seeing Ajit Pawar hit out at the Vadra Congress. Thank you, Alisha, and keep us updated on the story. Time for a very short break as we continue to be live and breaking on India's number one news network. Defense Minister Rajnath chairs top most level meeting with NSA and MHA officials on the Bhatinda firing. Complete chaos in Vadra Congress pilot in national capital to meet. Karge Gelot to brief media shortly. QS and THE, the world's foremost university rankings organizations, have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally, making it among the very few Indian universities to be included in both rankings. Yet another top ranking for Amity University. Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of COVID while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation, of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency. And nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based. Isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can make the transformation even quicker? So please join me and join all of us at Republic TV as we bring to you the Republic Summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation. See you there.
friend Mamta Banerji. She says that uh, आप consult नहीं करते. Like on disinvestment, opposition should have been consulted. हमने सोचना बंद नहीं किया. करोड़ों की संख्या में Republic Bharat और Republic TV दोनों को देश में लोग देख रहे हैं. ये सब कभी ना कभी train का सफर करते हैं. अब हम चाहते हैं कि वो train का सफर अंग्रेजी में S U F F E R सफर ना रहे. वो एक सुगम सफर हो. चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा Viewers, top updates right now, Bihar CA Nitish Kumar and his deputy Tejasvi Yadav met Congress President Malikrajan Kharge in New Delhi in the presence of Rahul Gandhi. The meeting at Kharge's residence comes amid talks of opposition unity ahead of the 2024 general elections. Congress is in charge of Rajasthan. Sukhjinder Singh Randhava, Randhava has met with the party chief Malikarjan Kharge in New Delhi. This comes a day after Sachin Pilot observed a fast in Jaipur demanding action in cases of alleged corruption under the previous Vasandura Rajeg led BJP government in Rajasthan. The day after BJP released its first list of candidates for uh, the upcoming Karnataka Assembly polls, Union Home Minister Amit Shah held a high-level meeting with the party stop brass in New Delhi. The meeting was underway at Shah's residence, where the BJP chief JP Nadda, Party General Secretary BL Santosh, National General Secretary and Karnataka in charge Arun Singh and Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan were present. Maharashtra leader of opposition and NCP leader Ajit Pawar has set out at Maharashtra Congress chief Nana Patole. He said in a quote here, I'm of a view that Congress state president should not go to media directly. If he has any differences of opinion, he should talk to us first. That might help us work unitedly. BJP workers stage protests against the Amadi party outside its office in New Delhi. B Delhi BJP President Virendra Sachdeva and Delhi Legislative Assembly LOP and BJP leader Ramveer Singh Bhiduri along with BJP workers were part of the protest against the Amadi party. UP police is taking Atik Ahmed to Prayagraj where he will be going under inquiry in connection with the Umesh Pal murder case. Meanwhile, Gangster politician Atik Ahmed claimed that he was being harassed in the central jail in Gujarat. Viewers, much more coming up on the other side. Firing at Bhatinda military station, crack of dawn, firing claims, four lives. Initial probe rules out terror angle. Supreme Court has given its verdict on the Rafael case. Why are you holding 70 press conferences on Rafael? Jab tak Supreme Court ka verdict nahi aaya, humne sanyam rakha hai. Hum nahi bolte. Aarop pe aarop lagate hue, prastachar ka aarop lagaya, Pradhan Mantri ji par aarop lagaya. Uski safai bhi nahi de sakte. Ab zarur janta ke samne jayenge, kyunki unhone jhoot bolkar janta ko gumra karne ka prayas kiya hai. Unhone sena aur desh ki maafi maangi thi. Sarkar jo Supreme Court ka judgment aaya, usko janta ke samne rakh rahe hain. Hamara adhikar hai. What do you see our country as in 2030 in diplomatic and political terms? I see more change between now and 2030 than I saw in the last 40 years. Did you 
हैव टू अंडर गो फेस सिमिलर सर्कमस्टांसिस एज बबीता डेट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम वेरी लकी टू हैव पेरेंट्स लाइक देम स्टार्टेड बैडमिंटन जस्ट एज फन नाउ पीपल आस मी वाई नॉट वॉलीबॉल यू नो यूर पेरेंट्स बींग वॉलीबॉल प्लेयर्स दिन दे एनकरेज यू इन वॉलीबॉल बट फॉर मी इट वॉज जस्ट दैट इन विच एवर स्पोर्ट आई वॉज इंटरेस्टेड इन दे ऑलवेज सपोर्टेड मी एंड आई थिंक देव डन अ लॉर ऑफ सेक्रीफाइजेस फॉर मी I'm I'm very thankful to them because I would just say that because of them I'm here today. They always taught me like when I used to lose my matches. They In less than 24 hours of BJP releasing its first list of candidates for Karnataka elections. Series of meetings have begun in BJP in Bengaluru as well as the national capital. This after few leaders started rebellion over the candidates list Jagdish Shetty has left from Bengaluru R Shankar has tendered resignation coming into action swiftly high command has taken note Amit Shah is being briefed about the situation and another meeting is scheduled with BJP president to fire fight the rising dissent over tickets Bureau report Republic TV जूनियर वर्ल्ड चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा टी ट्वेंटी में बेस्ट वाइल्ड पर्व जीत लिया है भारत के थ्रोअर नीरज चोपड़ा ने Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation for an India that is growing four times faster than the world average. It is a time of transformation for an India whose manufacturing exports grow 40% year on year on the back of COVID, while China witnesses a major loss. This is a time of transformation of opportunity for India that has let go of the dollar hangover and the rupee is closer to being accepted as international currency and nearly 60% of all digital payments are already UPI based isn't this the very moment to come together and think of how we can make the transformation even quicker So please join me and join all of us at Republic TV as we bring to you the Republic Summit this year on the theme of a time of transformation. See you there. has given its verdict on the Rafael case why are you holding 70 press conferences on Rafael jab tak supreme court ka verdict nahi aaya humne sanyam rakha hai hum nahi bole sakte aarop pe aarop lagate hue bhrashtachar ka aarop lagaya pradhan mantri ji par aarop lagaya uski safai bhi nahi de sakte ab zarur janta ke samne jayenge kyunki inhone jhoot bolkar janta ko gumrah karne ka prayas kiya hai unhone sena aur desh ki maafi maangi thi sarkar jo supreme court ka judgment aaya usko janta ke samne rakh rahe hain hamara adhikar hai wo You as a top global updates the Taiwan affairs uh, office of China's cabinet said that the visa military drills in Taiwan Strait are countermeasures and serious warnings against the increasing provocation from Taiwan's independence forces and their supporting external forces Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen has condemned the military drills Viewers, much more coming up on the other side in Karnataka. People gather out the BJP MLA from Belgavi, Kitur Mahantesh. Junior World Champion रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा. Why you 
to say that elections don't matter because you cannot win elections. There is one of the fundamental fallacies of humanity is to think that electoral victories validate everything. I certainly don't intend to compare governments and individuals. Errors are errors whether they are made by majority governments or not majority governments. दशकों पुरानी समस्याओं का समाधान होते हुए आज देश अपनी आंखों के सामने देख रहा है और कभी कभी लोग कह भी रहे हैं कि हमने सोचा नहीं था कि हम जीते जी ये देख पाएंगे ऐसा कई लोग कहते हैं और इसके दो प्रमुख कारण हैं पहला भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों का आत्मविश्वास जो कहता है यस इट इज इंडिया मोमेंट और दूसरा भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों की सोच जो कहती है नेशन फर्स्ट जूनियर वर्ल्ड चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा टी ट्वेंटी में बेस वन पर जीत लिया है भारत के थ्रोअर नीरज चोपड़ा ने Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit, and this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this is a time of transformation. watching superfast 50 i'm suvesha sound beginning with the first story a firing incident that was reported at bhatinda military station in the early hours of this morning now according to sources the incident was reported at 4:35 am inside the bhatinda military station at least four army jawans lost their lives in this firing After the firing took place at the Patenda military station sources uh, within the Punjab police have ruled out uh, a terror angle in which uh, four persons have lost their lives. Two days before the early morning firing incident in the Bhatinda military station, an INSAS rifle with 28 cartridges had gone missing. Punjab police sources hence now believe that some army personnel were behind this firing incident that led to the death of four people. Soon after the incident, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh called an emergency meeting of top officials at about 11:30 this morning. Senior officials of the Home Ministry and NSA are to be present during the briefing. Defence Minister briefed by Army Chief General Manoj Pandey. Search operation. is underway inside the military station where there is a thick plantation in some areas a search operation for the culprit is currently underway Punjab police in a statement said that no one has been detained after the incident the police has also said that the army is currently on the lookout for the culprit In another move towards semi high speed railway connectivity Prime Minister Modi inaugurated Rajasthan's first Vande Bharat Express train via video conferencing today the inaugural Vande Bharat Express in Rajasthan will ply between Jaipur and Delhi Kant railway stations the regular service of this Vande Bharat Express will start from 13th of April 
Prime Minister Modi took a jibe at RJD senior leader Lalu Prasad Yadav over an alleged land for jobs scam. Prime Minister Modi stated that there was a time when Indian Railways was made an arena of politics as people used to snatch the land of the poor in exchange for jobs in Indian Railways. PM Modi, while flagging off Rajasthan's first Vande Bharat Express train, virtually took an indirect swipe at Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot over the ongoing political crisis in the Congress party. Gehlot ji, I want to say to Gehlot ji, you have two hands in your hands. You have to say to your rail ministry in Rajasthan. और रेलवे बोर्ड के चेयरमैन भी राजस्थान के हैं तो आपको तो दो दो हाथ में लड्डू है दो दो हाथ में लड्डू a day after defying the Congress leadership with his hunger strike against Ashok Gehlot led Rajasthan government, senior party leader Sachin Pilot is set to meet Congress President Malik Arjun Kharge and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra in the national capital. Congress in charge of Rajasthan, Sukhchinder Singh Ranthawa, met with party chief Malikarjun Kharge in Delhi. This comes a day after. Sachin Pilot observed a fast in Jaipur demanding action in cases of alleged corruption under the previous Vasundra Raje led BJP government in Rajasthan. Pilot also reached Delhi earlier today. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and his deputy Tejashvi Yadav met Congress President Malikarjun Kharge in New Delhi in the presence of Rahul Gandhi. The meeting at Kharge's residence comes amid talks of opposition unity ahead of the 2024 elections. In a big lead in the Maharashtra political crisis, Sharad Pawar has now admitted that there are some differences. The NCP chief's differences come after his late-night meeting with Udhav Thakre and Sanjay Rao. I personally Maharashtra NCP leader Ajit Pawar met with CM Eknath Shinde and Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis in Sayadri to discuss compensation of farmers who have suffered losses due to unseasonal rains in the state. Congress stalwart uh, Kagodu Thimapa's daughter Dr. Raja Nandini is set to join the BJP in Bengaluru today. She is upset with Siddharamaya. D.K. Shiv Kumar and Kharge for ignoring her claims to Sagara Assembly seat earlier held by her father. Several BJP leaders from Rajaji Nagar Assembly constituency are set to cross over to the Congress. 400 BJP workers from Rajaji Nagar Assembly constituency, apart from their leaders, are joining the Congress. Many BJP leaders are miffed with Suresh Kumar against being given a ticket. BJP leaders Padmaraj, Mahesh Rao, Umesh, Ajit Prasad Prakash, Nagaraj, Anand Gorda joined the party. There is consensus and everybody is happy, said Karnataka Chief Minister and BJP leader Basavraj Bombay following the party's announcement of the first list of its 189 candidates of Karnataka in the polls. You next. Ahead of the Karnataka election, senior BJP leaders held a meeting at Union Minister Amit Shah's residence. BJP National President J.P. Nadda and Union Minister Dharmendra Pradhan were also present for the meeting. Hours after BJP released its first list of Karnataka elections, several miffed leaders and their supporters who did not make it to the list hit the streets and protests erupted from Bengaluru to Belagavi. Meanwhile, dissenting Jagdish Shatter, Savari and Ishwarappa have been summoned to Delhi. Second list of BJP candidates for the upcoming Karnataka Assembly elections uh, will be announced on the 20th of April. The party is yet to announce its candidates for 35 seats. Cracks seem to appear within the BJP after the party released its first list of candidates for the Karnataka Assembly elections. Lakshman Savari has said that he has decided to resign from the party's primary membership after being denied a ticket to contest uh, the Assembly polls. 
BJP workers staged protests against the Amadbi party outside its office in New Delhi. Delhi BJP President Virendra Sachdeva and Delhi Legislative Assembly LOP and BJP leader Ramveer Singh Viduri along with BJP workers were a part of these protests against the Amadbi party. Prime Minister Modi will launch uh, development projects including an AIMS and three medical colleges built at a cost of about 14,300 crore rupees during a visit to Assam on Friday. Among other projects, Modi will also lay the foundation stone of a bridge on the Brahmaputra River connecting Palashpari and Sual Kuchi and also launch the beautification exercise of Rangkhar in Sivasaga. Indian school in South Delhi, Sadiq Nagar was evacuated uh, after the school administration received a bomb threat via email. A bomb squad was uh, also dis uh, deployed at the spot when police officials confirmed that uh, the email was sent around 10.50 this morning, following which school authorities <coughs> informed the police. Shiv Sena of the Udhav Thakre faction Leader Aditya Thakre, who slammed the BJP and said that the party is inciting riots in Maharashtra, Aditya Thakre's response came while he was addressing a group of students at Kitam University in Hyderabad. Speaking at the event, Aditya Thakre said that for him, Hindutva is clearly defined. Gangster politician Atik Ahmed uh, claimed that he was being harassed in the Sabarmati Central Jail in Gujarat. He's also claimed that his family was ruined, but he is safe because of the media. ED raids uh, Atik's financer and close aide Khalid Zafar's house on Jalwa Triple IT Road. Now, according to sources, he's been accused of sheltering Shaista Parveen. Sources further added that ED during the raids have recovered assets worth more than 150 crore rupees. Currently, preparations are being made to confiscate them soon. <coughs> According to IMF, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will join her French and Japanese counterparts on Thursday to announce Sri Lanka's debt restructuring negotiations process. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky has written to Prime Minister Modi seeking additional humanitarian aid including medical equipment from India. The request came during the three-day visit of uh, Ukrainian Deputy Foreign Minister who handed over this letter to MOS MEA Minakshi Lekhi. Taiwan Affairs Office of China's cabinet said that the recent military drills in Taiwan Strait are countermeasures and serious warnings against the increasing provocation from the Taiwan Independence Forces. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen has condemned the military drills, saying that uh, China did not demonstrate responsible behavior of a major Asian nation. A delegation of Italian politicians, mostly from Georgia, Melanie's party, were ready to fly to TP, but the mission got postponed to an unspecified date amid growing international tensions. The delegation of Italian MPs was about to fly to TP for the first time since November 2019. Airstrikes by Myanmar's military on Tuesday killed as many as 100 people, including children who were attending a ceremony held by opponents of army rule, said a witness, uh, a member of uh, a local pro-democracy group and independent media. U.S. Department of State spokesperson Vedant Patel took to Twitter to raise concerns over the military airstrikes in Myanmar. The spokesperson said that the situation in Myanmar is deeply concerning. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that President has spoken with the parents of Wall Street Journal reporter uh, as the Moscow-based journalist was detained in Russia and charged with espionage. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin reinforced the strong relationship with Philippines at the State Department. In a sign of deepening defense cooperation, Blinken and Austin met with their Philippine foreign and defense secretaries to discuss American military presence and propose joint naval patrols. 
A top Cuban diplomat said her government expects a more realistic approach to the embargo against Cuba when officials met for the third biannual meeting since talks resumed in 2022. The appointments resumed last year after a six-year hiatus that coincided with the cooling of ties pushed by former President Donald Trump. Vice President Kamala Harris welcomed Polish Prime Minister to Washington for bilateral talks. The two sides are expected to discuss defence issues including Ukraine and NATO security. A severe sandstorm that hit Beijing forcing local residents to either stay at home or go outside at their own risk and to be sure of wearing a mask. This is the fourth sandstorm in the Chinese capital this month. The Russian Ministry of Defense has test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, its warhead hitting a target at a test site in Kazakhstan. The Russian Ministry of Defense has said that the purpose of the launch was to test advanced combat equipment for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Australian Delhi Capitals opener David Bonner completed 600 fours in IPL. He accomplished this milestone during DC's IPL match against Mumbai Indians at the home arena of Arunjitli Stadium in Delhi. England test skipper Ben Stokes aims to target arch rival Australia with express pace during the upcoming Ashes series as he expressed his desire to have flat, fast wickets when the sport's oldest rivalry kick starts from the 16th of June. South Africa and Delhi Capitals pacer Andrich Norche completed 100 matches in T20 cricket on Tuesday. The 29-year-old speedster reached this milestone during DC's IPL match against Mumbai Indians at the home arena of Aranjitli Stadium in Delhi. Former India coach Ravi Shastri predicted that Gujarat Titans opener Shubman Gill might surpass Virat Kohli's mark of 973 runs scored in a single IPL season. Ice Hockey Association of India has unveiled a new jersey for the women's team. The Indian women's ice hockey team will participate in the 2023 IIHF Ice Hockey Women's Asia and Oceania Championship from April 30 to May 7. The performance of the national men's and women's teams at the Tokyo Olympics and the fervent fanfare that they received after the same rekindled the spirit of hockey that lives in the hearts of uh, the country. To bring back the league, Hockey India announced Big Bang Media Ventures Private Limited as its exclusive commercial and marketing partner agency. With the aim to nurture a large spectrum of hockey talent from the state and provide early exposure to synthetic turfs, Odisha has set up 22 new hockey training centres for grassroots development. The HTCs have been set up by Sports and Youth Services Department in partnership with Odisha Naval Tata Hockey High Performance Centre. India's star sprinter Hima Das clinched the gold medal in the women's 200 metres, while Murari Shri Shankar topped the podium in the high jump at the Indian Grand Prix 2023 Athletics Meet in Bengaluru. The duo, however, fell agonishingly short of uh, breaching the qualifying standards for the Asian Games 2023. Indian women's tennis team began its campaign at the Billy Jean King Cup 2023 Asia Group 1 with a victory over Thailand in Tashkent, Uzbekistan on Tuesday. Alexander Zevrev of Germany made a winning start to his clay court season when he overcame Alexander Bublik in the ongoing Monte Carlo Masters on Tuesday. The German who was playing on the surface for the first time since retiring from his 2022 Roland Garros semi-final match against Rafael Nadal due to an injury to his right ankle overcame a sluggish start to beat Bublik in the match that lasted for 1 hour and 58 minutes. के क्या मायने हैं? वो मैं आपको शेयर करना चाहता हूँ। मैं चाहता हूँ कि आप भी उसे भागीदार बने, क्योंकि आप हम लोग सब लंबे अरसे से, चाहे वो मीडिया के लोगों, चाहे राजनीतिक कार्यकर्ता, 
ये एक ही होता है डेमोक्रेसी के अंदर पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट सामाजिक सरोकार मैंने देखा अपने अनुभव से मैं तीसरी बार मुख्यमंत्री हूँ कि पहली बार जब मैं सी था तब से लगा अभी तक भी मैं देखूँ तो मैंने पाया है कि अब बहुत बदलाव हो चुका है वो जमाना था कि हमारे बच्चे जाते थे पूना कर्नाटक महाराष्ट्र जब से मैंने प्राइवेट सेक्टर में अलाउ किया उस वक्त छः विश्वविद्यालय थे रास्ता में नाइन्टी एट के अंदर छः और नाइन्टी वन विश्वविद्यालय रास्ता के अंदर कंपनी वो है ही नहीं कहने का मतलब ये है शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में कोई जमाने में प्रीमियर इंस्टीट्यूट मान जाते थे आई 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 एम हम लोग कभी सुनते ही थे आज पूरे राजस्थान के अंदर आई आई टी आई आई एम उदयपुर ट्रिपल आई टी कोटा आयुर्वेद यूनिवर्सिटी जोधपुर एम्स जोधपुर निफ्ट एफ डी डी आई सारी विश्वविद्यालय जो प्रीमियम कहलाती है वो आज राजस्थान के अंदर ढाई सौ कॉलेज थी सितर साल पिछहत्तर साल के अंदर अभी मैंने पाँच साल में आपको शायद मालूम होगा पाँच साल में तीन सौ तीन कॉलेज होगी कहाँ तो ढाई सौ कॉलेज आपकी पूरे पिछहत्तर साल में कहाँ आपकी तीन सौ तीन कॉलेज उसमें एक सौ तीस कॉलेज गर्ल्स की है पाँच सौ गर्ल्स जहाँ होगी वहाँ कॉलेज खोल दिया जाएगा गर्ल्स की ये हमारी प्रायोरिटी मैं इसलिए बता रहा हूँ कि शिक्षा और स्वास्थ्य दो मेरी प्रायोरिटी है मुख्य रूप से अगर किसी प्रदेश के आएगा गर्ल्स की ये हमारी प्रायोरिटी मैं इसलिए बता रहा हूँ कि शिक्षा और स्वास्थ्य दो मेरी प्रायोरिटी है मुख्य रूप से अगर किसी प्रदेश के छात्र युवा शिक्षा और उनको आप स्वास्थ्य सेवा दे दीजिए वहाँ की पॉपुलेशन को तो बाकी काम सत्य हो जाएंगे मानव संसाधन बनता है हुमेश्वर बनता है उस राज्य का तो आराम से फिर आप चाहे वो बिजली हो पानी हो सड़कें हो सब कुछ हो सकता है हमने इस सेक्टर को चुना है सोशल सिक्योरिटी सेक्टर जिसको मैं बहुत महत्व दे रहा हूँ आपको मालूम है मैं कई बार बोल चुका हूँ क्योंकि आज दुनिया के मुल्कों के अंदर जिस रूप में सोशल सिक्योरिटी में हर परिवार सुरक्षित है जो निडी परिवार है मैं चाहूँगा इस देश के अंदर भी मैं प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी को भी रिक्वेस्ट की है आपको चाहिए जो मनमोहन सिंह जी सोनिया गांधी जी लेके आई थी राइट टू इंफॉर्मेशन राइट टू एजुकेशन नरेगा फूड सिक्योरिटी एक्ट उसी ढंग से एक्ट बना हुआ पूरे देश के लिए अभी राज्य सरकार अलग अलग पैसा बांटती है पेंशन के लिए कम को ज़्यादा हम कहते हैं पूरे कंट्री में कम से कम जो निडी लोग हैं ओल्ड एज में उनके परिवार की स्थिति नहीं होती है पालने पोलते हैं कई बूढ़े लोगों को भी मजदूरों को भी बुजुर्ग का आदमी कर सकता है उनको सबको सिक्योरिटी मिले पूरे कंट्री में एक ही पेंशन हो एक ही पेंशन हो हर परिवार का कम से कम कॉन्फिडेंस रहे हमें जिंदगी में बुढ़ापे में तकलीफ नहीं आएगी ये कॉन्फिडेंस हर नागरिक को होना चाहिए मैं क्यों करता हूँ बार बार ये ओ की बात क्यों करता हूँ पैंतीस साल की नौकरी में वो सोचे पता नहीं बुढ़ापे के अंदर शेयर मार्केट ऊपर जाके नीचे जाएगा उस चक्कर में वो आदमी क्या काम करेगा करप्शन भी करेगा तो हमने इतना बड़ा फैसला किया ओपीएस का मुझे बहुत आलोचना हो रही मुझे मालूम है सारे इकोनॉमी जो है अच्छे अच्छे वो आर्टिकल लिख रहे हैं मेरे खिलाफ में मेरा मतलब सरकार के खिलाफ में पर मैं कहना चाहूँगा आपको वक्त बदल गया है हमें हर नागरिक को प्रदेशवासियों को ये विश्वास दिलाना पड़ेगा हम आपके साथ खड़े हैं मिशन तीस का मतलब क्या यही मतलब है हम नंबर वन बने देश के अंदर के राजस्थान के अंदर जो मैं बातें बोल रहा हूँ चाहे सोशल सिक्योरिटी की हो चाहे वो एजुकेशन की हो चाहे हेल्थ की हो हेल्थ को लेकर के लिए आर्टिकल पढ़ा मैंने अमेरिका में एक इकोनॉमिस्ट है जो पहले नीति आयोग में उपाध्यक्ष थे राइट टू हेल्थ की उन्होंने खूब आलोचना जम के करी है यही फर्क होता है विचारधारा का ये लड़ाई विचारधारा की भी है ये लड़ाई राइट और लेफ्ट की भी है हमें उसको समझना पड़ेगा कि सोच क्या व्यक्ति की ये आज हमारी बीजेपी क्या दुश्मनी थोड़ी है कोई संघर्ष है विचारधारा का संघर्ष है इसलिए मैं कहना चाहूँगा कि हमने जो तय किया है 
उसी रूप में आज हमने तय किया है दो हजार तीस मिशन लेके चले नंबर वन रहे राजस्थान देश के अंदर बन सकता है अगर पूरे प्रदेशवासी खड़े हो जाए तो जीडीपी बढ़ते टाइम नहीं लगता है हर सेक्टर में किसान है मजदूर है सर्विस क्लास है सब सोच लेगा हमें हमारी प्रदेश कि मिशन ट्वेंटी थर्टी को कामयाब करना है तो आश्चर्य की बात नहीं है जब जीडीपी ग्रोथ बढ़ती है तो सतही विकास तेज गति से बढ़ता है ये जो मैं कह रहा हूं आपको ये सोच करके हमने तय किया क्यों नहीं हम मिशन बना के चले तीस तक का जिससे कि हम प्रदेशवासियों के दिलों में ये बात गर्व कर रहे कि सरकार ने अगर आह्वान किया हम लोगों को हम सबकी ड्यूटी बनती है अकेला कोई मिशन थर्टी एक आदमी नहीं कर सकता अगर प्रदेशवासी वहां के युवा वहां के छात्र वहां के सर्विस क्लास के लोग वहां के मजदूर सब तय कर ले तो कोई आश्चर्य की बात नहीं कि आप राजस्थान जम कर सकते आज हम बहुत पीछे हैं जो हमने हेल्थ सर्विसेज दी है आपको उसको लेके बहुत लोग खुश हैं हेल्थ सर्विसेज को पच्चीस लाख का बीमा हमने कर दिया सी टी स्कैन एम आर सब फ्री है ऑर्गन ट्रांसप्लांट फ्री है सब कुछ होने के बावजूद भी हम बहुत पीछे अभी हेल्थ सर्विसेज के आंकड़े देखो भारत सरकार के तुलना करो राज्यों के देश के अंदर तो हम बहुत पीछे हैं ये मुझे एहसास इस बात का है उसके बावजूद भी हम चाहते हैं कि जो शुरुआत मैंने करी कोरोना के बाद में या कोरोना के पहले उसका फायदा लोगों तक तो कैसे पहुंचे मैं आपको एक एग्जाम्पल देना चाहता हूं 98 के अंदर मैंने एक स्कीम बनाई थी पहली बार जब मैं सीएम था अरे पच्चीस साल पहले मुख्यमंत्री बीपीए जीवन रक्षा कोर्स आप मेरे कुछ लोगों को मालूम होगा इतना वो बहुत बड़ी स्कीम थी मुख्यमंत्री जीवन रक्षा कोर्स मुझे इस बात का दुख रहा कि मैंने हर मीटिंग में उसको कोट किया मीटिंग कि मैंने स्कीम बनाई है उस वक्त बीपीएल की संख्या बहुत बड़ी थी देश के अंदर राजस्थान के अंदर मैंने कहा उनके लिए कितना ही पैसा खर्च होगा एक लाख दो लाख उस जमाने का एक लाख दो लाख पांच लाख दस लाख सरकार देगी उसको आज जो पच्चीस लाख में बात कर रहा हूं मैं उस जमाने में मैंने बात करी सरकार देगी आपको उसके बावजूद आपको आश्चर्य हो गए जब चुनाव आए थे दो हजार दो तीन के अंदर तो मैं मीटिंग में जाता तो मैं हाथ खड़े करवाता तब तक कितने लोगों को मालूम है कि मैंने ए सी बने आप लोगों की फिर मैं हाथ को गिनता वहां देखता कहीं पच्चीस कहीं पचास कहीं साठ हाथ खड़े होते तो मैंने कहा तुम तीन हजार लोग बैठे हुए हो अगर ये स्कीम जो हम बार बार चार साल से बोल रहे हैं साढ़े चार साल से अगर आप सबको मालूम होती तो कितने गरीबों का भला हो जाता इतनी बड़ी संख्या में बी के लोग हैं इलाज में फ्री होता जो आज मैं इलाज फ्री कर रहा हूँ उस वक्त मैंने कहा था सबका इलाज फ्री होता उस वक्त और मैंने आठ दस लाख रुपये मंजूर किए उस जमाने के अंदर भी कहने का मतलब ये है आज ये कैंप क्यों लगा रहे हैं हम लोग कैंप इसीलिए लगा रहे हैं वो उदाहरण मेरे सामने हैं कि साढ़े चार साल पौने पाँच साल बाद में भी हाथ खड़े पचास पचास साठ सत्तर अस्सी हुए थे ये क्यों ये कैंप ऐसा होगा अभियान हर आदमी को मालूम पड़ेगा मुझे कौन कौन से फायदे मिल सकते हैं सब आई टी बेस कर रहे हैं हम लोग आदमी जाएगा अपने नंबर देगा आधार नंबर देगा जन आधार नंबर देगा बिजली के बिल का नंबर देगा उसको उसके अलावा और दस स्कीम में कौन कौन से फायदा लेने वो एलिजिबल है हो सकता अभी आज उसको मालूम ही नहीं है वो उसके कंप्यूटर में आ जाएगा कि तुम पांच स्कीम में छह स्कीम लेने के एलिजिबल हो और छह स्कीम में लाभ उसको मिल जाएगा और जो हमारे हम आवान बार बार मीडिया वालों कर रहे हैं जनता को कर रहे हैं आप लोगों को बात पहुंचाओ कि कैंप लग रहे हैं आप वो कैंप में जाना चाहिए वो आएंगे कैंप में उनको मालूम नहीं कि मुझे लाभ मैं लाभार्थी बन सकता हूं इसका तो मालूम नहीं वो ले ही नहीं पा रहा है वो लाभ मिलेगा हम तो ये भी कहेंगे जो लेना नहीं चाहे कुछ लोग होते हैं जो कि मान लो बी पी में आ गए हैं पैसे वाले हो गए वो चाहेंगे कि मैं मुझे लाभ नहीं चाहिए उसको जरूरत नहीं वहाँ आने की वो पैसा बचेगा तो हम कोई और स्कीम को एक्सटेंड कर देंगे गरीबों को भला हो जाएगा इस प्रकार से इस सोच समझ करके जो कैंप लगा रहे हैं हम लोग 
उसमें आप जानकर खुशी होगी कि पूरे रोड मैप बन चुका है और बजट और जो बात की जा रही है महंगाई की और राहत की इसके आधार पर ही हम चाहेंगे कि पहले सात सौ कैंप लग रहे हैं सात सौ शुरू होंगे कैंप और दो हजार सात सौ कैंप लगेंगे टोटल इस प्रकार से बढ़ते जाएंगे और पैसों गाँव के संग पैसों शहरों के संग के साथ साथ में ये कैंप महंगे इलाज के अलग लगेंगे वहीं पर और मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि इस अभियान से राजनीतिक पार्टी चाहे किसी कोई पार्टी हो कार्यकर्ता जुड़ेंगे लोगों को इतला करेंगे लोग आके वहां पर रात लेंगे महंगे रात तो महंगा इतनी भयंकर है जिसके लिए राहुल गांधी की यात्रा निकल गई साढ़े तीन हजार किलोमीटर की महंगाई बेरोजगारी नॉन वायलेंस और अमीर गरीबी खाई यही मेरी थीम रही बजट के अंदर भी उस थीम को लेके मैं आगे बढ़ा हूँ और बजट पेश मैंने किया है तमाम वो स्कीम आई है इसके अंदर जो कि मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ और ये कैंप लगातार चलेंगे बंद नहीं होने वाले हैं इस सत्ताईस जो कैंप मैंने कहा है आपको ये तो दो महीने चलेंगे कुछ कैंप ऐसे हैं वो परमानेंट चलेंगे और जब तक चलेंगे जब तक कि हर व्यक्ति जाके जुड़ नहीं जाए बड़ा मैंने देखा है कि कई लोग जुड़ जुड़ नहीं पाते हैं इसके अंदर इसलिए ये सारी इसकी में जो है वो एक से बढ़ के एक है और मैं समझता हूँ कि उसका लाभ ऐसे वक्त में हम देंगे पब्लिक को तो आने वाले वक्त के अंदर जो हमारी और योजनाएं मैं भी उसका जिक्र नहीं कर रहा हूँ पर मानव संसाधन राजस्थान का बेस्ट बने आज हमने विदेशों के अंदर पहले दो सौ छात्र थे हमने पाँच सौ कर दी इस बार पूरी फीस आने जाने का खर्चा ट्रैवलिंग का रहने का खर्चा वहाँ पर और फीस पूरी गवर्नमेंट दे रही है क्यों दे रही है राजस्थान का बच्चा अगर मानव संसाधन के रूप में ऊपर के आएगा उसकी पर्सनलिटी आने वाले वर्ष के अंदर तो वो बच्चा जो है राजस्थान के प्रदेश का और देश का भला करेगा तो राजस्थान का गौरव होना चाहिए हमारे जो छात्र है या युवा है वो कितने आगे बढ़े हैं ये सोच है इस प्रकार से हमारी हर योजना का एक अलग मर्म है जिसको समझ निकाल सकता है यही बात धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद माननीय मुख्यमंत्री महोदय और अब प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस आरंभ करते हैं मेरा अनुरोध है कि ये जो थीम है आज की प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस की वो है महंगाई राहत कैंप आप अपने प्रश्न पूछ सकते हैं मुख्यमंत्री जी इधर इधर मुख्यमंत्री जी मेरा सवाल ये है कि आप महंगाई से राहत दिलाने की बात कर रहे हैं कैंप लगाने की बात कर रहे हैं मुख्यमंत्री जी मेरा सवाल यह है कि आप महंगाई से राहत दिलाने की बात कर रहे हैं कैंप लगाने की बात कर रहे हैं लेकिन भाजपा के नए अध्यक्ष तो सांप्रदायिकता की बात करें तो इस लड़ाई को आप कैसे जीतोगे चुनाव में मैं कह चुका हूं आपको कहना चाहूंगा मेरा लक्ष्य टू जीरो थ्री जीरो है उसमें महंगाई रात पहला कदम है और कई कदम उठाए जाएंगे हमने रोड मैप बना रखा है समय समय आपको हम ब्रीफ करेंगे कौन क्या कर रहा है हमें उससे कोई मतलब नहीं हमें जनता का मैंडेट मिला था सेवा करने का हमने कसर नहीं छोड़ी है ये देश पूरा जानता है अभी एआईसीसी ने जो ट्वीट किया है पहली बार के एक राज्य ने जो उपलब्धि हासिल की है स्कीमों की वो राज्य स्कीमों का नेतृत्व प्रदान कर रहा है अन्य राज्यों को इससे बड़ा सौभाग्य हमारा क्या होगा कि हमारी हाईकमान ने ये कमेंट किया है ये हमारे लिए गौर की बात है और हमारा लक्ष्य वो ये सेवा करने का मुख्यमंत्री जी आपकी सभी योजनाएं अच्छी है देश भर में चर्चा भी हो रही है लेकिन आपके कुछ अपने हैं वो भी सवाल खड़े कर रहे हैं अच्छा माहौल बन रहा है नेरेटिव सरकार के प्रति बदल रहा है चाहे सचिन पायलट हो या अन्य नेता हो क्या उनकी बयानबाजी से लगता नहीं कि स्कीम्स से लोग गुमराह होते हैं या हम हमारा लक्ष्य है वही महंगाई राहत हम एक लक्ष्य को लेकर चल रहे हैं महंगाई राहत उसके अलावा हमारे कोई ध्यान जाते नहीं राइट लेफ्ट जाते नहीं ध्यान ना जाएगा 
सी एम साहब सी एम साहब इधर राइट में आपके सी एम साहब आपके राइट में आज आप सुबह वंदे भारत के कार्यक्रम में शामिल हुए प्रधानमंत्री ने कहा कि आपके दोनों हाथों में लड्डू हैं साथ में ये भी कहा कि पूर्ववर्ती रेल मंत्री किस तरीके के फैसले लेते थे ये भी कह दिया कि आप राजनीतिक झंझावातों से जूझने के बावजूद प्रदेश के विकास के लिए समर्पित हैं उन्होंने आपकी मित्रता के लिए भी आभार जताया क्या प्रतिक्रिया रहेगी आपकी इस मैंने ट्वीट कर दिया है उसको आप देख लीजिएगा धन्यवाद सीएम साहब सीएम साहब इधर सीएम साहब ये जो महंगाई राहत कैंप है ये पूर्व में बहुत से कैंप लग चुके हैं उनसे ये किसी प्रकार अलग होगा या उसी तरीके का होगा और इससे आपको कितनी उम्मीद है कि लोगों को राहत मिल पाएगी इस महंगाई से देखिए उनके जो कैंप लगे वो तो लगते ही हैं इस बार इनके लिए अलग से महंगाई राहत शिविर लग रहे हैं वहीं पर ऑन द स्पॉट उसके अलावा हर जगह जहाँ कलेक्टर तय करेगा कलेक्टेड है मान लीजिए बस स्टैंड है और कोई जगह है मान लो सब जगह कैंप लगेंगे और इतने ही छूट भी है कोई व्यक्ति राजस्थान का किसी जगह जाएगा वो जैसे मान लो बीकानेर का आदमी जैसल में जा रहा है रास्ते में कोई कैंप पड़ रहा है उसके रास्ते में रुके अपने नंबर दे वहीं पे उसका रजिस्टर हो जाएगा पूरा कंप्यूटर पूरा आई टी बेस है सर मेरा सवाल बीजेपी लगातार सर बम ब्लास्ट का आरोप लगा रही है इस पर आपका क्या कहना है कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट में कोई पीआईएल आई दायर करेंगे आप कुछ सुप्रीम कोर्ट में आगामी कोर्ट सर बम ब्लास्ट पे आपका क्या कह रही है क्या प्लान है बीजेपी लगातार आरोप लगा रही है उसके लिए और सर आपने अभी ट्वीट की बात की उसमें लालू प्रसाद यादव रेल मंत्री का नाम नहीं है इस ट्वीट में नहीं ट्वीट किया मैंने प्रधानमंत्री जी को लेके किया नहीं लालू प्रसाद यादव भी रेल मंत्री रहे हैं सर पूर्व उसमें आप पढ़ लीजिए उसमें सब बात आ जाएगी हाँ भाई कौन बोल रहा है राइट साइड मुख्यमंत्री महोदय दस राहत के बारे में आपने बताया कि रजिस्ट्रेशन करना अनिवार्य है और जो लाभ नहीं लेना चाहे वो रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं भी कर सकता है राजस्थान की ए, वन फोर्थ जनता ने साढ़े आठ सौ रूपये दे के और चिरंजीवी बीमा योजना में अपना रजिस्ट्रेशन कराया है अब बजट में आपने उसको दस लाख से पच्चीस लाख कर दिया उसके लिए आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद क्या उसके लिए भी उसको रजिस्ट्रेशन कराना पड़ेगा दस से पच्चीस करने के लिए वो, तो वो प्रति वर्ष होता है वो एक अलग बात है नहीं बीमा जिसके पास है प्रीमियम फ्री है सबके लिए जैसे गायों का हम बीमा कर रहे हैं दो गायों में दो दारो पशुओं का कोई प्रीमियम नहीं लगेगा उसका उसी ढंग से ये साढ़े आठ सौ रुपये जो है दो कैटेगरी बनाई हुई है अधिकांश लोग फ्री प्रीमियम सरकार दे रही है उनका कुछ कैटेगरी है जिनका जिनका जो है साढ़े आठ सौ रुपये उनसे ले रहे हैं हम लोग का साढ़े आठ सौ क्या होते हैं पच्चीस लाख का बीमा है वो अलग रहेगा सर ये जो सर ये सवाल ये है आपको क्या लगता है कि दो हजार तीस तक कौन से ऐसे काम है राजस्थान में इसके करना बहुत बाकी है मैं समझा नहीं आपकी बात दो हजार बीस तक आपने विजन पेश किया है तीस तक का विजन पेश किया है अभी तो मैंने आपको कहा मेरा विजन दो हजार तीस मैंने बनाया मिशन के रूप में बैठिए आप और उसके अंदर आज जो माहौल बन गया राजस्थान के अंदर जैसे मैंने कहा शिक्षा के अंदर हम बहुत आगे बढ़ गए हैं अगर आंकड़े देखेंगे हमारे मैंने असेंबली में प्रस्तुत किए थे पांतर हमारा और पांतर पिछली सरकार का तभी आपको समझ में आ जाएगी हम कितने जम कर चुके हैं नंबर एक नंबर दो राजस्थान अब पिछले बीस तीस चालीस साल में इतना आगे बढ़ गया है कि हमें गर्व होना चाहिए कि अब हम ऐसी स्थिति में हैं मिशन का रूप दे सकते राजस्थान को सिर्फ सवाल ये है उस पर सब भागीदारी निभाए हैं आम जनता भी मीडिया भी कार्यकर्ता भी धर्म गुरुओं भी जब मैंने कोरोना की लड़ाई लड़ी थी तो आप सबको मालूम है कि आप सबका सहयोग रहा था उसमें मुझे उसमें हमारे एक्टिविस्ट भी थे एनजीओ वाले भी थे धर्म गुरु भी थे पॉलिटिकल पार्टी के लोग भी थे मैंने कोई राजनीति नहीं की सब पार्टी को मैंने आह्वान किया मुझे घर है कि कोई भूखा नहीं सोएगा मैंने कहा था वास्तव में कोई भूखा नहीं सोया इतना आपस में एक दूसरे की इमदाद करी थी सरकारी गैर सरकारी सब लोगों ने तो कहने का मतलब आज हम ऐसी स्थिति में आ गए ये मुझे कॉन्फिडेंस हो गया है इसलिए मैंने दो हजार तीस की बात करी सर आप आपने जो बात कही है इस तरफ 
लेफ्ट सर 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 आपने जो महंगाई राहत कैंप की बात की है इसमें 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 कुछ अभी आपने कहा कि या तो आम जन के ऊपर ये कोई राइडर इसमें रहेंगे कि ढाई लाख से ऊपर जो की इनकम है वो उसमें शामिल नहीं हो पाएंगे या इसमें मन व्यक्तियों के खुद के ऊपर मंशा पर डिपेंड करेगा कि उसमें शामिल हो या नहीं हो कुछ राइडर्स इसमें लगेंगे नहीं इसमें तो इसकी मनी आठ लाख रुपये तक मेरे ख्याल से है आठ लाख तक की सीमा की हुई है ई डब्ल्यू एस भी आठ लाख ही की हम लोगों ने सीएम सर सीएम सर सीएम सर एक सवाल सर सीएम सर राहुल गांधी जी क्या अब क्या आप... आप क्वेश्चन पूछ रही है महंगे के अलावा क्वेश्चन पूछ रही है आप ऐसा नहीं होता चुपेट मुख्य क्वेश्चन क्या आपका थोड़ा माइक पास लीजिए राहुल गांधी जी की एक्सेप्टेंस उनकी एक्सेप्टेंस बढ़ गई है क्या स्वीकारता बढ़ गई है क्या सर ओ राहुल गांधी की स्वीकारता बढ़ी हुई है पहले से ही जो षडयंत्र किया गया था बीजेपी द्वारा सोशल मीडिया द्वारा वो षडयंत्र जो है उनका नाकाम हो गया बाढ़ जोड़ो यात्रा के अंदर इसीलिए आप देख लीजिए उस पर्सनैलिटी को आपने कहा कि आप लंदन में क्या बोल के आ गए माफ़ी मांगो और बोलने नहीं दिया अरे उनको बोलने देते आप कम से कम हाउस के अंदर उसके बाद में कहते हम आपने संतुष्ट नहीं माफ़ी मांगो षडयंत्र करके पूरे सत्ता पक्ष ने हाउस ने चलने दिया आखिर में षडयंत्र किया गया पहले से ही जब से वो बाढ़ जोड़ो यात्रा में कामयाब हुए तब से घबरा गई बीजेपी प्रधानमंत्री खुद ही घबरा गए और जिस प्रकार से उन्होंने माहौल बनाया कैसे इस आदमी को आउट करना है पार्लियामेंट से उस षडयंत्र तब तक का है चार साल पहले का केस था ये जिसे केस किया माना नहीं कहा वो हाईकोर्ट में क्यों गया कि रोक दो अभी इसकी सुनाई मत हो बाद में जब उनको शूट किया तब हाईकोर्ट में गया कब आप सुनवाई की छूट दे दीजिए ये पूरा षडयंत्र है मेरा मतलब ये राहुल गांधी की अलग पर्सनालिटी है वो देश देशवासियों के लिए समर्पित है वो अपनी आवाज उठाते रहेंगे सीएम सर सीएम सर सर एक सवाल था आपने महंगाई और राहत बड़ा अच्छा कैंप लगाने की बात आप कर रहे हैं सर लेकिन सचिन पायलट भ्रष्टाचार के मुद्दे को लेकर अनशन पर बैठे हैं तो भ्रष्टाचार को लेकर आपका क्या स्टैंड रहने वाला है All right. Uh, our senior executive editor Abhishek Kapoor also now joining us on the phone line. Abhishek, uh, all eyes really on uh, what uh, Ashok Gehlot would say in this news conference and whether he would address uh, the pilot issue. But uh, clearly, he dodged uh, every question on that and uh, he ignored it. Uh, what really is one to make out of this because we also understand that sachin pilot is in the national capital he is to meet malik arjun kharge and priyanka gandhi vadra but uh, gehlot side lining it as if uh, you know pilot uh, holding that dharna is not even an issue well so sort of uh, gehlot piloted away if you could uh, call it that way so he clearly dodged all the questions on pilot evaded them and uh, so topic which was about obviously some government issues uh, which a cabinet meeting has taken place and there's uh, some decisions he announced and he was explaining how uh, he has uh, uh, put a pedal on uh, making sure that Rajasthan meets the SDG goals or the sustainable development goals by 2030 and uh, he sort of admitted that in most of uh, the parameters Rajasthan traditionally has been a laggard but what is important is that this is happening in the back of uh, Uh, an intense political jousting that's taking place between Gehlot and Gehlot, and due to uh, due to this, uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, tense situation you are seeing on Rajasthan within the Congress Party. We have seen uh, such a pilot camping in Delhi. He's in fact in Delhi as of now, as we speak, uh, and uh, uh, the in charge of the state uh, from AICC, Sukhjinder Singh uh, Randhawa, 
is due to and fro between such a pilot and uh, party president Mallikarjun Kharge and uh, <clears throat> despite the fact that the Congress party sort of tried to openly uh, 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 side with Ashok Gehlot and take a tough position on uh, uh, such a pilot's uh, protest and uh, the 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 the, the fast um, it has had no impact. Uh, such a pilot nevertheless continued with his protest and against uh, his own government and. Uh, uh, he has uh, come to Delhi and is meeting the high command. So obviously, uh, it seemed that the high command would look at such a pilot in the eye, but then it seems it has blinked and uh, again engaging with pilot. Uh, uh, what comes? That would be interesting to watch out. That story died such a pilot addressing that press conference. Perhaps, uh, uh, despite ducking the question of uh, sort of giving an impression or trying to give an impression that he remains under. I think he has done a press conference. I don't know. Mm -hmm. after, even after a cabinet meeting, Ashok Gehlot went out and did press conference. Obviously, this is aimed at trying to send across a message to the high command that he's unruffled. Mm -hmm. Please take care of Sachin Pilot. He's in Delhi with you. Uh, the situation has not yet uh, come to any particular conclusion insofar as Rajasthan Congress is concerned. Sachin Pilot, by raising that uh, rebellion bugle, I think, uh, has just set the train rolling insofar as. Elections later in the state of And Abhishek, let's not forget uh, the kind of popularity that Sachin Pilot enjoys, especially that show of strength that was very, very visible in that dharna yesterday and even after when he was meeting with his supporters. Sachin Pilot clearly sending out that message that uh, he has uh, a lot of supporters by his side. I also want to take this to Piyush Shori, who's joining us on the broadcast. Uh, Piyush, you know, with the way Ashok Gehlot uh, uh, projected the whole pilot issue through this news conference, is he also trying to undermine his popularity in some way to say that uh, Gehlot is the bigger leader and uh, whatever pilot's popularity may be, but it doesn't really matter? Well, you know, what we must understand is that Ashok Gehlot, despite being the chief minister, is a very seasoned politician. And he understands about the popularity of Sachin Pilot and the crowd of supporters which he can gather, the example of which we saw yesterday. So yes, he also understands that taking into consideration of the impending assembly elections, there has to be an effort that has to be made by him per se to make sure that there is no rebellion that brews or that is visible to the uh, people at large. So yes, like a seasoned politician, he tried to duck the question which is related to Sachin Pilot, but it seems that he understands the threat and uh, the uh, problems which can be caused by the silent dissent which Sachin Pilot is uh, undertaking as far as the Rajasthan Congress unit is concerned. Now, all eyes are over here at the residence of Sachin Pilot from where I am reporting because it, even though right now there is no hectic activity which is being reported over here, everything can change in the evening where it is expected that first the Rajasthan Congress uh, Prabhari Chief uh, Sukhjinder Singh, Dhin, uh, Sukhjinder Singh Randhawa, he might come and uh, visit uh, uh, Sachin Pilot and have a talk with him about what his grievances are. There are also, uh, you know, speculations that Sachin Pilot might meet uh, Malik Arjun Kharge as well. But when will it happen? We are just waiting and watching about what exactly is the stand which is going to be taken by Sachin Pilot. So yes, uh, right now we are reporting from Sachin Pilot's residence over here at Delhi, where right now there is no hectic activity, but everything can change at any moment. Back to the studio. Yes, absolutely. And which is why we are keeping a very close eye on the developments in the national capital and what happens uh, at AICC. Piyush, I want to thank you for joining us on the broadcast and Abhishek, of course, uh, for putting that into perspective for us. For the moment, we are also getting some more breaking news coming in. Let's uh, quickly flash those details. And yes, after uh, the political crisis in the Mahavikas Aghadi is concerned, the latest uh, we are learning from our sources that uh, MBA leaders have communicated to Sharad Pawar that they are worried about Ajit Pawar. This is the inside political scoop that the public is getting to you at a time when uh, 
the alliance is certainly seeming in danger as the cracks are very very visible Sharad Pawar had uh, admitted to how there is a rift between the Uddhav faction and NCP also Nana Patoli making a statement for the Congress saying that they are ready with plan B but uh, who is the factor that uh, is really seeming to trouble leaders across the Mahavikas Aghadi as uh, MVA leaders and uh, it is uh, Congress and Uddhav faction to be specific uh, conveying to Sharad Pawar that uh, they are worried about Ajit Pawar. We are trying to get further details of uh, what exactly is uh, brewing in Maharashtra as far as the Mahavikas Aghadi is concerned. Alisha is joining us live on the broadcast. Alisha, uh, it is a very cryptic statement, but uh, this is coming from sources. Uh, if you could uh, throw a little more light on why they are worried about Ajit Pawar. Is it also the fact that they know that he will warm up to the BJP or uh, possible meetings uh, that could be happening? Uh, what more can you share with us at this point? So, Isha, we know that uh, Ajit Pawar, who had a meeting uh, with his uh, close uh, NCP leaders, where the senior NCP leaders uh, were present in that closed door meeting when uh, Ajit Pawar has left all his event behind and he just uh, left for that meeting. Right after that, there could be some NCP rift that has been uh, emerged after which uh, yesterday we saw where uh, Uddhav Thakre and uh, Sanjay Raut uh, reaches. Uh, uh, Sharad Pawar's resident and the same message has been conveyed to Sharad Pawar clearly mentioning that uh, uh, MVA leaders have been concerned about Ajit Pawar who is keeping his uh, NCP MLAs, uh, the Lolsik uh, NCP MLAs uh, with him and uh, there could be some uh, rift that has been coming outside and uh, uh, they, uh, they, they, this is what a concern of an MVA leader that has been con that has been conveyed to Sharad Pawar uh, uh, last night because that meeting something happened for around one and a half hours and if we talk about today because the meeting that happened between Ajit Pawar, Chief Minister Eknash Shinde, Deputy Chief Minister Devinder Fadnavis which happened for around 50 minutes but Ajit Pawar rather than going from the main gate he left from the back gate uh, he did not speak to the media uh, we know that in the morning he mentioned about the meeting that he is going to meet over the compensation to the farmers who has uh, who, who, who got lost uh, due to this unseasonal rain so he is going to speak about uh, uh, the same that there should be compensation that should be given to the farmers uh, uh, and the same request is going to meet uh, from the chief minister and deputy chief minister but that meeting which lasted for around uh, 50 minutes to one hour but Ajit Pawar did not make any media presence there inside where he left from the back gate so all this uh, uh, you know the speculation which has been going around and of course uh, the concern of the MBA leaders which has already been conveyed to Sharad Pawar last evening where Uddhav Thakre and Sanjay Raut has met Sharad Pawar and mentioned about it and this is an information that we are getting from a very reliable sources which says that now the MV leaders think that Ajit Pawar with his close uh, loyalistic uh, NCP MLAs is going to keep them with himself and uh, there could be some changes and same hint has been given by the Bharatiya Janata Party while speaking to Republic where they have clearly stated that there are some BJP activities which is ongoing in Maharashtra well, it is very immature to disclose the names of those leaders who are they are in touch with. But yes, the talks are on, and uh, even the Congress statement. If we if we heard uh, uh, Nana Patole, who clearly mentioned that uh, they are ready with the Plan B. Uh, but Alicia, continue talking to us because uh, of the way it is panning out within the Mahavikas Aghadi. Because we understand that the Congress is miffed with Sharad Pawar. Uh, for the statement that he made uh, on the Adani issue with the, the JPC probe. Then uh, also at one end, uh, there is uh, 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 Ajit Pawar who is a worrisome factor for uh, MBA leaders across. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, uh, Nana Patole has made a statement uh, saying that uh, they are ready with plan B. And uh, in the midst of all this, meetings that are underway, so, uh, where exactly is this headed? Because uh, Sharad Pawar has also admitted 
that when it comes to the Uddhav faction, there are clear differences. Well, yes, sir, because that is the statement of Sharad Pawar while speaking to media says that there are differences in Mahavika Sagadi, but yes, there could be a meeting that is going to happen very soon where uh, 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 the, the leaders from uh, the faction Congress and NCP are going to sit together. But uh, uh, as we have been talking about the statement uh, that has been given the changes and the uh, uh, you know the some of the hint that has been at uh, the speculation which has been going around since a week now because whether it is Ajit Pawar or whether it is Sharad Pawar the Sharad Pawar who has given a statement uh, over the Adani clearly mentioning that uh, there, there is no need of the JCP uh, and uh, why we have been uh, uh, on uh, uh, giving so much of uh, relevance to Hindenburg report so that is something a statement has given uh, uh, you know uh, the, the speculation over the NCP rift and that is something has been now come up as well because once the BJP has given a statement, they have been openly saying that there is something a big going to happen uh, before the Lok Sabha election. There are many of the leaders from the opposition party are in touch with. But here comes the concern. You can be said that it's a concern, something uh, that has been come up from the Uddha Thakre as well. Because right after such comments, whether from uh, BJP and the action that has been going and the statement, uh, whether from Sharad Pawar or Rajit Pawar, Uddha Thakre in the, in the mid of... Uh, uh, when in in the last evening, when he directly went uh, to uh, to uh, Silver Oak to meet uh, Sharad Pawar, but uh, what uh, important to even know that uh, Ajit Pawar, who had a meeting uh, today with uh, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and Deputy Chief Minister uh, Devendra Fadnavis, where. Uh, the meeting lasted for 15, 15 minutes, but there is no media presence. He came from the backside and he also left from the uh, back gate itself, uh, no, uh, no giving any idea about it and no uh, speech about what was the meeting was about, whether the fact he has mentioned that he wanted to meet Chief Minister over the farmer issue. But all eyes on the meeting that is going to happen because here is the MBA who claim that they suspect that that uh, there is a rift that has been ongoing within the Cong uh, within the NCP, and uh, moreover, they're also saying that uh, uh, Ajit Pawar is keeping all his NCP MLAs. Uh, 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 he is keeping a, a very close track, and also we have been uh, tracking on this uh, development on the Maharashtra political crisis that could be happen because uh, the meeting has also been called in uh, this evening as per the sources. While Ajit Pawar is also going to meet uh, some leaders, uh, continuously rolling on this big story. We'll be back after a short break. Stay tuned. QS and THE, the world's foremost university rankings organizations, have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally, making it among the very few Indian universities to be included in both rankings. Yet another top ranking for Amity University. Your friend Mamta Banerjee, she says that you uh, consult nahi karte. like in, on disinvestment, opposition should have been consulted. We have to think about it. In the world of crores, Republic Bharat and Republic TV are watching the country in the world. They all do the journey of the train. Now we want that the journey of the train of the train of Angrezi, S-U-F-F-E-R, is not a journey. It is a beautiful journey. दशकों पुरानी समस्याओं का समाधान होते हुए आज देश अपनी आंखों के सामने देख रहा है और कभी कभी लोग कह भी रहे हैं कि हमने सोचा नहीं था कि हम जीते जी ये देख पाएंगे ऐसा कई लोग कहते हैं और इसके दो प्रमुख कारण हैं पहला भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों का आत्मविश्वास जो कहता है यस इट इज इंडिया मोमेंट और दूसरा भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों की सोच जो कहती है नेशन फर्स्ट
जूनियर वर्ल्ड चैंपियन रहे हैं नीरज चोपड़ा पुरानी समस्याओं का समाधान होते हुए आज देश अपनी आंखों के सामने देख रहा है और कभी कभी लोग कह भी रहे हैं कि हमने सोचा नहीं था कि हम जीते जी ये देख पाएंगे ऐसा कई लोग कहते हैं और इसके दो प्रमुख कारण हैं पहला भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों का आत्मविश्वास जो कहता है यस इट इज इंडिया मोमेंट और दूसरा भारत के 130 करोड़ लोगों की सोच जो कहती है नेशन फर्स्ट Was there an email that was sent to you from Shashi Tharu asking for help on? Show me the mail. The mail that I, you are saying there was an email on no? Do you continue serving the army with the same zest that you have always? Oh yes. The whole Rihaichi area is going to search operation. This time, Chandra has. DGP has said that the ten people who have been killed have been killed. They have been killed. स्थिति तनावपूर्ण है ठीक लाल किले के सामने मैं इस वक्त मौजूद हूं कथित लोग हैं जो दरअसल यहां इन्होंने पूरा उत्पात मचाया हुआ सर आज राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री हैं इतने लोगों की डेथ हो गई है सर लेकिन कोई कोई जवाब नहीं है सर अब तक एक्शन को लेकर भी कुछ नहीं किया सर Did you have to undergo face similar circumstances as Babita did? First of all, I'm very lucky to have parents like them. Started badminton just as fun. Now people ask me why not volleyball? You know, your parents being volleyball players, didn't they encourage you in volleyball? But for me, it was just that in whichever sport I was interested in, they always supported me, and I think they've done a lot of sacrifices for me. I'm, I'm very thankful to them because I would just say that because of them, I'm here today. They always taught me like when I used to lose my matches, they all they were like you know. It's not just over, but this is only the starting for you, and there's more way to go on. And that's how they encouraged me, and you know, step by step, I've been improving, and I'm here. Shivangi Shukla will get you all the details uh, in this bulletin. Many updates coming in, especially from Battleground Karnataka. But viewers, first remember, India's biggest news event is back. The Republic Summit is back later this month. The biggest change makers will be there. The biggest names will be there. It's an event that you do not want to miss. It's going to be an event to remember with the biggest news makers, which will be here at the Republic Summit uh, uh, late this month. All right, viewers, time to see what else is making headlines right now. Day after pilots, Dharna against Gelord. Government Gelord goes all out to counter Sachin Pilot. Sachin Pilot continues to put pressure on high command, meets top brass in the national capital. Keeping up the speculation alive, NCP's Ajit Pawar meets Chief Minister Ekna Shinde and Deputy CM Fadnavis. Top sources tell Republic a panicked MVA has raised Ajit Pawar issue with NCP Chief Sharad Pawar. (laughs) 
Witness after witness turns hostile, more sensational revelations on Republic to bring out the Maligao probe truth. In less than 24 hours of announcing candidates, BJP firefights the growing dissent series of meetings in Karnataka and, and in Delhi. Viewers, getting some breaking updates coming in. Uh, this is a very big update coming in from Battleground Karnataka as Karnataka goes to post getting an update. Gedurappa has said that Jagdish Shatar will be given a ticket to contest elections. He said that the second list is expected today, viewers. This is a big update coming in right now here on Republic TV. And uh, what we're learning so far, what we're learning so far is that uh, this is an attempt to placate uh, Shatar. That's what it looks like. A ticket will be given to Shatar and uh, that means that Jagdish Shatar could be getting a ticket in the second list. So viewers, this is a big news coming in, big news coming here on Republic TV. Now, remember the first list is already out in the Karnataka elections. And now we are seeing that uh, according, according to information coming here on Republic TV, this is a big indication, a big indication coming in from the, the BJP. It looks like that Jagdish Shatar could be getting a ticket and this time he might be getting a ticket in the, in the second list which is expected to come out viewers getting these back-to-back -back details coming in right now uh, let's in fact go ahead and play out that sound bite of bs yedurappa out of 189 seats which has been announced yesterday out of that, 52 seats are new in that list. Overall, we are all happy about the uh, announcement in the given by the central leadership. Except one or two, there is some uh, grimling is going on. And 101% we are going to form the government in Karnataka. Out of the list announced, I, I think minimum we are going to get 25 to 130 seats. I think time. before evening, uh, yeah, tonight only, they are going to announce second list. All right, let's go straight to Prajwal is joining us live right now. Prajwal, I'm coming to you. Now, we know, we know that uh, Jagdi Shetar, he was extremely adamant on contesting the Karnataka polls. But right now, the BJP indicating, the BJP indicating that he might get a... Uh, a ticket now in the second list. What are we learning about this development coming in from Karnataka? You know, former Chief Minister B.S. Yadurappa, who addressed the media just uh, a few hours ago, had uh, clearly gone on and stated that uh, in regards to the Hubali Central Assembly constituency, which Jagdish Shattar represented, he has uh, gone on and stated that uh, they are quite hopeful that uh, Jagdish Shattar will be getting a ticket as well. Apart from which, uh, he's also gone on and mentioned that he's spoken to the High Command, especially with respects to Jagdish Shattar as well. And because uh, this is mainly in terms of the contribution that Jagdish Shattar has made towards the party, Party, the BJP party, especially in North Karnataka as well. And he stated that the supporters of Jagdi Shetter need not worry. The BJP is mainly trying to firefight uh, the dissidents within the party, mainly in the Hubli Dharwad unit and the Kittur Karnataka region as well. Because uh, no matter what the BJP high command feels, Jagdi Shetter is still one of the most prominent leaders hailing from the Lingayat community who's gone on to build the party from scratch, especially in North Karnataka and Kittur Karnataka region as well. And uh, no question asked is what BS Yadurappa stated and even as we are speaking there is already a meeting underway in New Delhi where uh, JP Nadda the national president is having a word with Jagdish Shetter too because uh, he was summoned uh, earlier uh, last night uh, stating that uh, the party wants to have a word with him but now Jagdish Shetter has also gone on to maintain that no matter what I still have around 10 to 15 years of politics left in me as well because there have been several senior leaders within the BJP who have already been given a ticket for example uh, GH Tipa Reddy from uh, you know from uh, Chitradurga 
who has already been given a ticket as well and he is also a bribe tainted MLA. And uh, why, why are these double standards being applied only to me when seniors in the party are being given ticket is something which was questioned by Jagdish Shetter as well and this has definitely not gone down well with the BJP high command and therefore now BS Yadurapa making it very clear categorically stating that Jagdish Shetter will be given a ticket from Hubali Central as well. But on the other two prospects, one of KS Ishwarappa deserting the party, no KS Ishwarappa will remain an integral part of the BJP but he is resigned from active politics as well, not only electoral but also active politics too. Apart from uh, which uh, there was also a lot of hopes hinging on Lakshman Savati who was the former Deputy Chief Minister as well but uh, seems now, uh, but right now he's already made up his mind to resign from the party and he will be submitting his uh, resignation to the Speaker as well tomorrow at uh, the Vidhan Sauda and to which uh, B.S. Yadurapa also stated that he is very disappointed with Lakshman Savadi because after all the uh, you know after all the work that the BJP party had done to elevate him to the post of the D uh, Deputy Chief Minister because why we say this is that uh, from the Athani Assembly constituency Lakshman Savadi had lost out to Mahesh Kumtali as well and uh, later uh, despite the fact that he had lost out on it the BJP party had made sure that he was kept within the party he was respected they elevated him to a post of an MLC and then made him the Deputy Chief Minister too despite doing all this uh, he is now uh, gone ahead and stated that uh, he would ditch the BJP party which has definitely angered BS Yadurapa who stated that it is Lakshman Savadi's uh, wish ultimately so therein uh, the BJP has definitely given up hopes on Lakshman Savadi but uh, still a large part of it uh, hinges on uh, what will be the decision regarding uh, Jagdish Shetta's name uh, Jagdish Shetta's name to be announced in the second list of uh, 35 candidates which are expected to and uh, we are expecting the second list tomorrow because uh, BS Yadurapa stated that it will be today evening but Chief Minister Basraj Bomai just addressing the media a few minutes ago has stated that uh, the second list will be out tomorrow as well. So what are the shocks and surprises we need to see and out of the 35 assembly constituencies there are 11 assembly constituency where uh, sitting MLAs are fearing that they might lose out on their uh, tickets as well. So this is something which we will have to watch out for and three important assembly constituencies in Bengaluru. Tickets have still not been announced but we will have to wait and watch for it as to what will be the BJP's next move especially the high commands uh, consider, uh, considering the fact that uh, there has been a lot of infighting within the BJP after the list has been released by the party high command. All right, thank you. Thank you, Prajit, for getting us all the details. So, the second list is expected tonight. And that's the big news coming in right now. Second list of the BJP candidates expected tonight. And a ticket very likely to Jagadish Shetar. In the first list, his name did not figure, but he's adamant when it comes to contesting the polls in Karnataka. We'll get you all the details coming in from Battlegone, Karnataka. Let's move ahead right now, getting some more details coming in, some breaking updates coming in on Republica TV. Now, what we are learning, and this is a Maligao case probe. It's back in focus as NIA court has dropped another witness of the case, calling it an irrelevant witness so far. 34 witnesses have turned hostile in the Maligao case. We are getting this back-to-back -back details coming in. So right now, what we're learning so far, what we're learning so far is that uh, this is the update that 34 witnesses have turned hostile in Maligaon case, and uh, the NIA court has dropped another witness in the case, calling it an irrelevant witness. Viewers, all right. So we're getting these back-to-back -back details coming in at this point of time, and uh, one more witness. This is a case, Maligao blast case of 2008. One more witness has been deemed irrelevant in the NIA special court viewers. And uh, let's go straight to Niranjan, our executive editor, who's getting us more details. Niranjan, over to you. You know, this uh, case is turning out to be extremely murky. And, uh, you know, as, as more and more uh, twists and turns are reported in the Maligao case, it's clear that the story that Republic TV reported uh, we've told you for the longest time that this was, uh, you know, there were many questions in the Malegao investigation and it appears with every passing day, every single development telling you that there is something amiss about this particular case and we've been reporting about it. Uh, nearly 35 witnesses have turned hostile, up to 35 witnesses and one witness has been dropped, has been termed irrelevant. Another witness who turned hostile recently said on record that he was uh, at gunpoint asked to name people otherwise he was told he would be framed in the Malega okay so this is extremely serious uh, you know what's going on and I have someone who's uh, you know played a very critical role in the Malega investigation uh, at least in 2006 and uh, the last time he was live with us 
Uh, he revealed a lot about what he had uh, found as an officer, then serving in Nasik. Uh, Mr. P.K. Jain is joining us live. Mr. Jain, there's been a lot of interest in this case and ever since you spoke to us the last time around, a lot of people asking uh, what exactly is going on in the Malegao case. Uh, P.K. Jain has served as uh, the IG of Nasik range and he was one of the officers uh, who was part of the investigation into the 2006 Malegao blast case and he found direct Pakistan links. Uh, Mr. Jain, first of all, uh, there have been, since we last spoke, more witnesses have turned hostile. Another witness has been dropped, has been termed irrelevant. Want to get your view on that first? Uh, Namaskar. I would like to start with uh, my stint with as IG Nasik, which supervised the investigation of 2006 blast. I had direct or indirect no role to play in the 2008 blast investigation. So I am aware of the happenings in 2006 blast in which we had conducted a fair investigation and certain individuals had been charged on the basis of uh, the evidence that we had collected. And this particular investigation was maintained not only by the Nasik police, it was also maintained by the uh, by the ATS and by CBI subsequently. And after the 2008 blast took place, subsequently I learned when I was in the headquarter at that time that all the accused in the 2006 blast had been discharged and a new set of accused, that is, the accused who were uh, supposed to be involved in the 2008 blast were also shown as accused in the 2006 blast. So this was basically killing that 2006 investigation completely because uh, there was no evidence whatsoever to link the 2008 blast accused to the 2006 blast accused. So that was rather unfortunate. Can I just can I just pause you at that question, point, Mr. Question. Jain? Can I just pause you at that point? At that point, can you just pause for a second? You're saying in 2006, your investigation found direct links to Pakistan and the blast in 2008 Later, those who were reportedly found guilty in 2008, there was an attempt to show them as guilty in 2006. Effectively, the Pakistan links were erased, right? See, what had happened was there were two individuals. During our investigation, we had found that there were two individuals who had come via Nepal to Malegaon to orchestrate these blasts in 2006. Now, subsequently, apparently, see, there was, there, it, it was only that the, it was mentioned in the statements of some of the accused, that they were people who had come from outside, and they left a day prior to the actual blast, when the blast took place. So, they were nowhere in, involved in the, nobody knew about their identity, one or two guys knew about them, or who they were, and, but they did assist in the, uh, in the blast uh, conspiracy. The blast was carried out by the individuals who were based in Malegao, they were charged. There was a charge sent up against them. But subsequently, when the 2008 blast took place, unfortunately, the same accused of 2008 were also framed in 2006 blast, which effectively means you use that the word you 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 you, you use the word framed. You use the word framed. Do you believe they were framed would, in the 2006 blast? I would certainly believe that they were framed because my investigation and the two subsequent different agencies who investigated the same case, found that the accused who had been arrested by us were the actual accused. So I had no reason to say and I had no reason to believe why these accused were discharged in the case and why a new set of accused were introduced against whom there was not even an iota of, investi uh, iota of evidence till the time the investigation was with these three agencies, that is the local police, the ATS and the CBI. So I have no reason to know and I have no reason to believe that anybody else other than the accused arrested by the investigating agency at that time were the actual accused. However, whatever the political dispensation, whatever the Bhagwa Tankwad uh, concept which came subsequently in 2007 and 8, because of that, the entire investigation was overturned, the actual accused were discharged, and this all these accused of 2008 were shown as accused in 2006, which effectively means that the case was killed because the actual accused were let off and were introduced against whom there was no evidence whatsoever and the case is bound to result in acquittal or it will be discharged. Mr. Jain, do you believe do you believe going by your investigation and you investigated a 2006 Malegao blast, you've gone into great detail. I, I, super, I supervised. You've gone into great, you supervised it. You've gone into great detail 
about what you found, what the investigation, what the men under you, the team under you found in 2006. I'm asking you again, do you believe that Sadhvi Pragya Thakur and Colonel Purohit were framed or made to fit into a narrative that they were also responsible for 2006 when there was no proof against them? Till the time we were in charge of the investigation and till the time the subsequent two agencies were looking into this case, there was no evidence. I am making my statement. I, it's a statement. I'm not even guessing it. I'm making a statement that Sadhvi Pragya and uh, Colonel Purohit had no role in 2006 blasts. Yes, officer, you're saying they had no role in the 2006 blast. Yes, and uh, have you said this in court? Have you been called? Have, have you made this statement formally before? You see, I, I was not the actual investigating officer. In the case, we are all supervisory officers. Nobody has called me either in the defense or in prosecution. So I am not a the witness anywhere. But we, since I was overseeing the entire investigation, we were, I camped in Malaga for almost a month and a half. So I was privy to everything that was going on, not only when the case was under investigation with Nasik police, but also when it was under investigation with the ATS and the CBI subsequently. This is massive. This is massive. Now, now whatever is happening today, uh, uh, Mr. Jain, whatever is happening today and you're looking at it and we spoke about how you've never seen perhaps uh, uh, anywhere in India a case where so many witnesses have turned hostile and they continue to turn hostile. Do you think this case was cooked up to frame the saffron terror narrative? See, I will not, as I said, I will not be able to comment on the investigation of 2008, what evidence was there before the investigating officer, I have no information about. One thing uh, is sure, that nobody can be made a witness at gunpoint. Now, the kind of threats, I mean, all these people who are turning hostile, witnesses turning hostile, they are saying that they were threatened that they'll be roped in or there'll be some other case against them. I am I'm for sure, I can make a statement again, that in my 30... 33 years, 34 years of my uh, police career, I have yet to see a witness standing in the court and sticking to his theory if he was under duress, if his statement was taken under duress. See, by the time the case goes to the court, the witness is absolutely free to say whatever he wants. So in this case, in these witnesses were forced to become witnesses uh, of this investigation, there's no way that they could be made to uh, stay on that path of making a false statement in the court come what may, under whatever duress they had made the original statement under. So I, I I think if they are turning hostile, it may be because, I don't know, whatever extraneous factors they are stating now, whether they are true or not, I will not be able to comment. But so many witnesses turning hostile in a case is absolutely unusual. It is not usual. It is not normal. Was there any political pressure on you when you investigated 2006? Was there any political pressure from any political party, any minister, were you allowed to do your job or were you stopped from, from doing any aspect of your investigation? See, there was no political pressure per se, but when we were about to announce the arrest of the actual accused, there was a pressure not to disclose their names or not to announce that at that point of time. You know, we, were, we had caught the accused, we had caught some of the accused and we were already interrogating them. Our investigation was progressing. The then Home Minister did tell us that you don't announce their names. This is going to, you know, create a different kind of impression. And uh, so, but eventually, after about 10 years of that pressure, we did hold a press conference and announce the actual names of the accused. So you're saying, one second, I'm just pulling that back, just pulling that back a little bit. You were asked not to hold a news conference when you had arrested and cracked the case of 2006, what were they fearing? They didn't want you to go public with the names of these Pakistani-linked terrorists. So, that time all the accused, as I mentioned earlier, were all local uh, youth and local people. So, Pakistanis had come, planned the whole thing, probably put the whole thing together and then left. So, uh, you know, we could not never get hold of their names. We got the description that one of them looked like a Nepali boy. Another one was, a, you know, somebody from... But they had... Yes.
that we should not declare their name at this stage unless we are extremely sure and absolutely sure was something which was told to us and which declared the which uh, which made us delay the declaration of these names because we were looking for getting uh, hints so unless you give out names unless you give out descriptions it was impossible for the people or any witnesses to come forward so we got the information at from where the cycle was purchased how this i and who had purchased the cycle all those things had been uh, obtained so unless you give out these details to the public it is difficult sometimes to get a lead so we wanted to hold a press conference to to number one to inform the public as to what exactly was happening on the investigation front and secondly to seek help in terms of identifying these persons who were involved in purchasing the cycle and you know loading a bomb on top on top of that so uh, but we were we we were certainly prevented from doing that for about 10 days after which we went public and we hold, held a press conference and uh, you know rolled out with the whatever safely we could come out with the on the investigation front to the public and to the press up to was it the home minister of maharashtra i'm asking you some specific questions you may choose not to answer but i'd like to ask you those questions anyway yeah unfortunately the gentleman is uh, no more it's, uh, the then home minister was uh, mr arar patel and uh, what you're saying again raises a lot of questions about the attempt perhaps to frame a saffron hindu terror narrative and uh, what you're saying now is breaking news here on republic tv uh, we look forward to speaking to you once again there are several breaking news updates on the story on the malega case tracking that very closely look forward to speaking to you once again in the evening thank you very much mr jet okay thanks so a uh, serving ips or uh, a former ips officer who while serving in the nasik range as someone who was part of the investigation team in the malegao found the role of pakistan linked terrorist terrorist directly linked to pakistan a plot that was hatched in pakistan executed with the help of uh, local boys when that link was found in 2008 he says there was an attempt to make the 2008 accused look like the accused in 2006 there was an attempt to fix the case perhaps uh, handing it back to you for now the story is getting much bigger the malega fraud as we called it is unraveling part by part thank you neeraj for getting us all the details uh, as we continue our live coverage here on republic uh, tv A day after pilots turn against Gelord government Gelord goes all out to counter such an pilot QSMTHE the world's foremost university rankings organizations have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally making it among the very few Indian universities to be included in both rankings Yet another top ranking for Amity University. Supreme Court has given its verdict on the Rafael case. Why are you holding 70 press conferences on Rafael? जब तक सुप्रीम कोर्ट का वर्डिक नहीं आया हमने संयम रखा है हम नहीं बोले कभी आरोप पे आरोप लगाते हुए भ्रष्टाचार का आरोप लगाया प्रधानमंत्री जी पर आरोप लगाया उसकी सफाई भी नहीं दे सकते अब जरूर जनता के सामने जाएंगे क्योंकि इन्होंने झूठ बोलकर जनता को गुमराह करने का प्रयास किया है उन्होंने सेना और देश की माफी मांग ली थी सरकार जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट का जजमेंट आया उसको जनता के सामने रख रहे हैं हमारा अधिकार है भाई What do you see our country as in 2030 in diplomatic and political terms? I see more change between now and 2030 than I saw in the last 40 years.
have to undergo face similar circumstances as Babita did. First of all, I'm very lucky to have parents like them. Started badminton just as fun. Now people ask me, why not volleyball? You know, your parents being volleyball players, didn't they encourage you in volleyball? But for me, it was just that in whichever sport I was interested in, they always supported me. And I think they've done a lot of sacrifices for me. I'm, I'm very thankful to them because I would just say that because of them, I'm here today. They always taught me, like when I used to lose my matches, they, always, they were like, you know, it's not just over, but this is only the starting for you and there's more way to go on. And that's how they encouraged me and, you know, step by step I've been improving and I'm here. Dear viewers, in a few days we are bringing to you once again the Republic Summit. And this year our theme is fittingly about how this is a time of transformation. Yes, this... Was there an email that was sent to you from Shashi Tharu asking for help on... Hey, show me the mail. No, no, fact the mail that I, you are saying there is an email on... Do you continue serving the army with the same zest that you have always? Oh, yes. पूरा रिहर्शी आलाका है इसको जो ये ना सर्च ऑपरेशन इस टाइम चल रहा है डीजीपी ने खुद कहा कि दस लोगों की पुष्टि हमने कर दी है जो दस लोग मारे गए स्थिति तनावपूर्ण है ठीक लाल किले के सामने मैं इस वक्त मौजूद हूँ कथित लोग हैं जो दरअसल यहाँ इन्होंने पूरा उत्पात मचाया हुआ है राज्य के मुख्यमंत्री हैं इतने लोगों की डेथ हो गई है सर लेकिन कोई कोई जवाब नहीं है सर अब तक एक्शन को लेकर भी कुछ नहीं किया सर शंकर आयो पुलिस जेटी को नोट शंकर आयो पुलिस जेटी को नोट ये सारी विजुअल्स ऑफ शंकर मिश्रा अक्यूज वाज बीइंग टेकन फॉर द मेडिकल एंड देंट वर्स Data is our wealth and we are giving it away. How do you view that Fall argument? Fallacious. Absolutely wrong. Fundamentally, I think that if you think about the world, I believe that the world will have to move from an aggregator model to a distributor model. If I give you a fixed deposit locker right, and you put your money, which is your data in my locker, it doesn't become mine that I can take that money, gamble on the stock market. If I have gains, I'll take it. I'll still say I've given you back your 100 rupees. That doesn't work, right? Fundamentally, your data is yours. I can, if I use it or monetize it in any way, I have to transparently share with you the gains of that. कौन क्या कर रहा है उससे कोई मतलब नहीं हम एक लक्ष्य को लेकर चल रहे हैं महंगाई राहत उसके अलावा हमारे कोई ध्यान जाते ही नहीं राइट लेफ्ट Day after pilots dharna against Gehlot government, Gehlot goes all out to counter Sachin pilot. Sachin pilot continues to put pressure on the high command, meets top brass in the national capital. Keeping the speculation alive, NCP's Ajit Pawar meets Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and Deputy Chief Minister Farnavis. Top sources tell Republic a panicked Mahavikas Aghari has raised Ajit Pawar issue with NCP Chief Sharad Pawar. Witness after witness turn hostile. More sensational re revel revelations on Republic to bring out the Maligao probe truth. In less than 24 hours of announcing candidates, BJP firefights the growing dissent series of meetings in Karnataka and Delhi. Very good afternoon, you are watching live and breaking at half past four. I am Suesha Samt and first up we are getting you these latest pictures of Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis 
who left after holding the key meeting with the Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and leader of opposition Ajit Pawar. This, of course, as uh, they met to discuss the situation in the state due to unseasonal rains and uh, the political tremors coming in as the Mahavikas Aghari leaders raising Ajit Pawar being a worrying factor. They've uh, spoken to Sharad Pawar about this. This has caused a lot of political tremors and uh, the rift between the Mahavikas Aghari at a time when it's coming out in the open. What exactly is brewing between the BJP and Ajit Pawar? Is there more than what meets the eye? But those are the latest pictures on your screens of Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Padnavis leaving from that key meeting. Cutting across to my colleague Alisha who's joining us uh, live on the broadcast. Alisha, while we get our viewers this internal scoop of uh, how uh, Ajit Pawar is a worrying factor for the Mahavikas Aghari leaders and uh, they've raised him with Sharad Pawar. Point is, uh, what exactly are they worried about? Well, uh, this is a rift uh, within the NCP and that is something uh, uh, very much uh, uh, worried for the Mahavikas Agadi leaders because uh, yesterday the meeting that lasted uh, for around one and a half hours uh, between uh, Sharad Pawar, uh, Uddhav Chakre and Sanjay Raut where Uddhav Chakre has informed uh, uh, Sharad Pawar about uh, uh, Ajit Pawar who is uh, keeping uh, all his uh, NCP MLA, some uh, loyalty uh, MLAs uh, with himself uh, is something uh, worry for uh, uh, the Mahavika Sagadi leaders and that is uh, the message has been conveyed to Sharad Pawar. But uh, what we even know well coming the statement on this because BJP has clearly given an indication that there is some BJP activities which is happening, which is underway in Maharashtra and they cannot reveal at this point of time the names of those leaders who are they are in touch with but uh, of course there will be a massive changes uh, before the Lok Sabha election there are many of the leaders uh, from the opposition party are going to join a BJP is what the statement that is coming in whether from the BJP MLC or whether from the cabinet minister who spoke to Republican clearly mentioned and clearly stated uh, that uh, yes uh, there are uh, uh, many of the leaders who are in touch with and it is very immature at this point of time to reveal the name of these leaders but uh, in the coming days uh, the picture will be more clear but uh, here also the congress who are uh, saying that they are ready with the plan b and uh, they have been monitoring the situation which has been happening right now in maharashtra whether the fact that sajid pawar who is having a closed door meeting uh, with his uh, ncp leaders very senior leaders and mlas and uh, the, the people don't even know about it and uh, but what has also emerged that uh, there are some rift within uh, uh, the NCP, specifically some differences between Ajit Pawar and Sharad Pawar. Rather the fact we have been hearing this statement, uh, whether from Sharad Pawar that has come in uh, starting from uh, Adani statement uh, where he has given and later on the EVM as well. And also we have yes. been seeing Ajit Pawar who has hinted out at yes. uh, Uddhav Thakre's statement, uh, the statement that was given uh, for uh, Devendra Padnavis. So there are... But you know, Alicia, it is certainly very ambiguous uh, as to what options is Ajit Pawar really exploring. Uh, we leave it at that because we have more breaking inputs coming in as we are hearing that India has raised UK-based Khalistani activism with UK Home Office and asked United Kingdom to restrain Khalistani elements on their soil. A move that was much awaited as all eyes were on the Indian government as to how they would... Uh, raise Khalistani activism with the United Kingdom in the very latest way hearing that uh, this has now been brought up with the UK Home Office where uh, UK has been asked to restrain Khalistani elements on their soil. India has raised the Khalistan issue with United Kingdom, an extremely important move uh, over concerns on misuse of, misuse of UK's asylum status. This, as we understand, there have been several instances of uh, 
Khalistani attacks in uh, the United Kingdom itself. Most importantly, that uh, picture of when the Indian flag was targeted and desecrated by Khalistani extremists, that too outside the Indian High Commission in London. And uh, ever since, the Indian government has taken a very strong position. In the latest move, uh, they've raised this matter with the UK Home Office and asked the United Kingdom to restrain Khalistani elements on their soil. This as we see in increasing attacks uh, across the globe. Uh, I want to bring in Senior Executive Editor Abhishek Kapoor who is with us on the broadcast. Abhishek, India having raised this with the UK Home Office, uh, take us through the details of it and uh, really to understand how this will translate into action and how strongly is the more important question. Well, uh, Suesha, so this is uh, part of uh, the UK-India Home Office consultations that took place in New Delhi. Today, the Indian side was represented by Home Secretary, Union Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla. On the UK side, his counterpart uh, Matthew, Matthew Recraft uh, was there and uh, he, he's, uh, uh, he's the British counterpart in so, uh, counterpart in 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 so far as uh, the Home Office is concerned, and uh, India clearly raised the issue of Khalistani activism from the UK soil. Uh, in fact, Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla told Recraft that uh, the manner in which uh, the UK soil is being used by these Khalistani elements, inimical to India's territorial integrity and sovereignty, and uh, the conduct of the UK authorities has been found wanting and uh, these elements should be restrained, they should be closely monitored and that uh, this political asylum policy of the UK has been misused by many of these elements uh, who have got citizenship in the United Kingdom uh, based on their Khalistani credentials, clearly indicating that there is an element of protection that these elements get from the UK establishment. Uh, so I think uh, that plain speaking happened today in the India-UK Home Office consultations uh, that took place in New Delhi with the Home Secretary, with his counterpart, telling uh, the, the, the UK side uh, that uh, the Khalistani activism that's happening from uh, uh, UK soil and in London particularly should be stopped and restrained and that the UK establishment, particularly the Home Office, should be doing something about it. Remember, we saw those pictures coming out of vandalism taking place uh, uh, at and outside uh, India's High Commission in London and not just once but twice and before that we have seen some Khalistani elements uh, carrying out uh, uh, anti-social activities uh, targeting uh, Indian citizens and Indian diplomatic community uh, in, in, in the United Kingdom. So I think uh, uh, that plain speaking was uh, needed, much needed and uh, happening on the occasion of uh, the joint uh, India-UK home consultation, home office consultations that took place in New Delhi. And uh, we have come to know of this information just a while back. Suesha. Uh, Abhishek, uh, like we are saying that uh, we continue to track uh, statements of the MEA and how exactly is this matter being raised, uh, especially with United Kingdom, uh, considering we understand how uh, it has been over decades of uh, a, a shelter uh, that has been provided to these Khalistani extremists, which they have thoroughly misused. And in the light of the recent events, uh, uh, it was really upon the Indian government uh, to how strictly and seriously they take this up with the United Kingdom uh, uh, to put an end to such activities. But uh, like I said, how fruitful do you think uh, this is going to be and when will one really be able to see the result of it uh, given how this matter has been raised and the UK government is also now more aware of uh, the activities of such Khalistani extremists? Well, it's not that the British side does not know about this and uh, the fact that uh, the Home Secretary did some plain speaking, Suesha, and said that uh, the policy of uh, political asylum, for example, is perhaps being misused. Uh, if I could give the exact words uh, uh, the, the, that were used by our uh, Home Secretary, it said that uh, UK's asylum status, the misuse of the UK's asylum status by the pro-Khalistani elements to aid and abet terrorist activities in India. And uh, hence, we request that better cooperation be coming from the UK side and increased monitoring of UK-based uh, pro-Khalistan ext extremists 
happens, sir, and that the UK side takes appropriate proactive action. So obviously, this is uh, some really tough talk happening uh, insofar as uh, India is concerned and uh, insofar as the Khalistani activism taking place from the United Kingdom soil is concerned. Uh, this is obviously coming in the backdrop of uh, the development that took place over the last fortnight or so. And uh, if I can go further, it says India's concerns over the breach of security of Indian High Commission were also emphasized. So the vandalism that took place uh, outside Indian High Commission, that episode also raised with uh, Matthew Recraft, uh, whose, uh, whose exact designation is Permanent Secretary Home Office. Uh, and uh, this was part of the fifth India-UK Home Office consultation. It's a mechanism that's in place uh, to uh, let the uh, interior ministries, the home ministries of respective jurisdictions to coordinate and, uh, uh, you know, uh, understand each other's concerns. Uh, but it seems that uh, some plain speaking and some tough talk has been done uh, with the British side, uh, given the kind of uh, a vandalism, the kind of targeting of Indian establishment we saw in London. Subsequently, of course, India reacted by downgrading the security around the British establishments in New Delhi, including the UK High Commission and the residence of the UK High Commissioner uh, in the Chanakpuri enclave, diplomatic enclave, uh, uh, essentially sending across a message that uh, this is not uh, how uh, the, the, the Vienna Convention and the provisions uh, should be flouted. The principle of reciprocity, which is integral to uh, diplomatic conduct, uh, is flouted. There was a demarch issued also uh, to the highest uh, diplomat of the UK High Commission when we saw uh, the Deputy High Commissioner, I believe, of uh, the United Kingdom being yes, summoned to the absolutely. Ministry of External Affairs and, issue, uh, and being issued a demarch. Uh, so important development there coming in, insofar as uh, Khalistani activism from UK soil is concerned. Abhishek, in fact, I request you to stay on with us because we are getting more breaking news from China this time. Uh, we are learning that uh, sources have suggested that China is all set to close uh, airspace uh, north of Taiwan between the 16th to the 18th of April. What more can you share with us on this, Abhishek? What I've seen is that uh, over the last uh, couple of days, uh, we have seen the Chinese, uh, as they do often, carrying out military exercises across the Taiwan Straits. In fact, uh, crossing uh, crossing the Taiwan uh, median line, as it is called, and uh, in between, uh, we have seen statements coming in from the Chinese side. Uh, where they say that they are ready for military action also. Obviously, this is uh, retaliation to Chinese, uh, Taiwanese President Tsai Ing Wen, who visited the United States just last week and uh, perhaps the Chinese see in this a provocation and want to send across a message. Not the first time. Uh, they have been doing it very often now over the last six months. Uh, we have seen the Chinese uh, uh, military aircraft, Chinese uh, People's Liberation Army Air Force aircraft uh, 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 in formations flying into Taiwanese uh, air defense identification zone, ADIZ as it is called, and uh, uh, threatening uh, Taiwanese establishment there with military action. And now, after the military excise, it's not ended there. The Chinese have said that they are ready for military action. So it seems uh, they are really uh, playing a grave game of brinkmanship insofar as uh, their uh, ultimate objective of uh, physically and militarily taking over uh, Taiwan is concerned. Uh, it, it's something which they have written in their recent uh, uh, policy statements. Uh, it's something about which Xi Jinping has open, uh, spoken publicly, Chinese president for the third time. And uh, it's likely that something is 